Hi students. Hello, hello. How are you guys? Um, welcome again to today's live lesson. Um, thank you for joining me. So um, in today's lesson, we're going to be learning um, one interesting verb in English. But uh, before we get into the lesson, if you guys haven't yet, and you would like to know when I post new lessons, when I go live, you can subscribe to me on YouTube. That is super helpful. You can like the Facebook page, of course, like this lesson and share it with somebody you know. Um, those are all really good things um, to help grow our community. So if you haven't done that yet, please do so. Thank you so much. Okay, hello everyone, welcome. How is it going? Hello, Adriana. Joshua, Cite, Navu, Davis, Nathaniel, uh, Sue Miat. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Kosai from Myanmar. Hello from Nepal. Um, how are you? Hello from Syria, Myanmar. Okay. Hello, everyone. So um, today we're going to be learning one interesting um, verb in English. Oops, let me just move my microphone. Okay, so we're gonna be learning one interesting verb in English. I'm gonna show you a sentence. I'm curious if you know what it means. Okay, so da da da, -da. here we are. So it says, wow. I was floored. I was floored. Does anyone know the meaning of this sentence? I was floored. Okay. Oh, hello from India. Hello, hello. Okay. I was floored. So we're going to learn what this means and how to use it. I hope you're ready. Hello, Ali. Welcome. Okay. Hello from Vietnam, Bangladesh, Chicago. Okay, I was floored. So this is what we're gonna be learning today. So what does it mean to floor someone? So believe it or not, floor can be a verb and it can have a few different meanings, right? So um, floor of course is, uh, can you see my hand down there? <laughs> the floor. So when you are floored, that means you are either so surprised, so shocked, or so confused that you, you don't really know what to do next. You can't really talk. So, oh, you're floored. What? So you hit the floor because you are shocked. I'm floored. Okay, so that is the meaning to to floor someone or to be floored. Okay, so I have some example sentences for you. All right, so to floor means uh, to surprise or confuse. Now this is informal. Excuse my microphone. I'm probably touching it so much. Okay. So to surprise or confuse, to shock, to be shocked, um, it is informal. But you'll often hear people use it when they are really surprised. Okay, so number one, can you see this? Hmm. The audience was floored when they heard her sing for the first time. The audience was floored when they heard her sing for the first time. So that means maybe they didn't expect her to sing so well, but she surprised everyone and sang extremely well. So everyone was floored. The audience was floored. Wow, she's so good. She's so amazing. I'm so surprised. Okay. How about number two? I was completely floored when they announced their divorce. Can you see this? I'll put it, oof. I'm sorry for my microphone. Okay. 
I was completely floored when they announced their divorce. Wow, I'm so shocked. I'm so surprised. I can't believe it. So um, maybe uh, many people, when they heard uh, the recent recentish news about um, Bill Gates and his wife, they are getting divorced. I was completely floored when they announced their divorce. Very shocking, very sad, okay? Uh, number three, you're going to floor your parents when they see your tattoo. <gasps> you're gonna floor your parents when they see your tattoo. So you're gonna shock your parents. Your parents are like, oh, my daughter, my son has a tattoo. Oh my gosh. So you're going to floor them. So it could either be a good thing or a bad thing, right? So like number one, the audience was floored when they heard her sing for the first time. This is uh, probably a good thing. So they were really surprised. Wow, she's so good. She floored the audience. Maybe number two, um, I was completely floored when they announced their divorce. That is more like shocking, confused. Oh my gosh, what's happening? Oh my gosh, okay? So uh, number four says, I was floored when blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's think of some sentences together, okay? So I was floored when da, da, da. Okay, I was floored when something happened. Okay, so remember it means surprised, could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, it could mean confused, shocked, amazed. Okay, so positive things and negative things. Okay, so let's see your examples. Please write them in the comments. Uh, I will put them on the screen. Okay, so, uh, I was floored when the government implemented lockdowns for the first time amid COVID-19 first wave. Yes, very good. Uh, I would just correct this sentence. I was floored when the government implemented, um, you could say a lockdown or lockdowns, depending on what you're talking about, um, for the first time amid Maybe amid the first wave of COVID-19. Amid the first wave of COVID-19. Yes, I was also floored. I remember when um, the schools were shut down. Oh, we have another one. Uh, I was floored when Brie came up with the Pomodoro Technique session on YouTube for the first time. Oh, we're, is that a good thing? <laughs> I hope that's a good thing. So that's when we study together on YouTube. I, I hope it gives you motivation. Okay. Oh my gosh, I was floored when I had my car stolen. <gasps> I hope that's not true. Oh my gosh, I was floored when I had my car stolen. Yeah, my sister's car was stolen. That reminds me, I was floored when I heard that my sister's car was stolen. Um, uh, a thief took it from her work. That is so crazy. I was floored. Uh, let's see. Oh, I was floored when he cheated on me. Yes. So this is a negative thing. You're very shocked. You're very surprised. How could he do that? What do I do now? I'm speechless. I was floored. Yes. So you, you didn't see it coming. You were floored. Very good. Uh, let's see. Oh, hello from Bangladesh. Very good. Oh, hello from Kurdistan. Okay, let's see. <gasps> I was completely floored when my wife sent me a divorce letter. <gasps> oh my gosh, that is crazy. Oh, uh, that would that would floor anyone, right? Uh, let's see. I was floored. So remember, if you're going to use it as to be floored, um, you're going to have an ED at the end. I was floored 
when my friends sent me a present. Oh, this is very good. Yes. So if you weren't expecting anything, if you weren't expecting a present, you might be floored. Excellent. Very good. Okay. Uh, we'll do just a few more. Uh, oh. I was floored when the elevator stopped inside. So does that mean that you were inside the elevator and it stopped? <gasps> that would floor me too. So you could say, um, I was floored when the elevator stopped while I was inside. While I was inside. <gasps> I was still inside, you could say. Very good. Okay, maybe one or two more. Oh, will there be a Pomodoro session on YouTube today? I will do my best. Um, I I have some uh, quite a few private lessons today. So if I can, it will be a little bit later today. I will try. I'm glad, to, I'm glad that you like them. Um, I really hope you guys enjoy those lessons. Well, not lessons, those um, study sessions. Okay. Uh, could you please a sentence on the future? So using a floor for the future, um, here's a good one on here. Uh, you're going to floor your parents when they see your tattoo. So it hasn't happened yet, but you you have a tattoo and when when your parents see it, they will be surprised. So you're going to floor your parents, okay? Very good. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, I'm glad it was a positive one. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ali. Okay. Very good. Um, okay. So I think we're going to call it a day for uh, today's lesson. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that um, the next time you are surprised or confused or shocked, you will use floored. I was floored. I am floored. Okay, very good. So you can continue to make some example uh, lessons in the comments and I will check them for you. And yes. I will see you very, very soon. We'll have another lesson on YouTube later and um, the next uh, Facebook live stream will be on Monday, okay? So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, all that stuff. And I will see you guys tomorrow or later today, actually, later today. Okay, thank you guys. Bye everyone. Hello everyone, welcome back to Bree's Practical English. My name is Bree and I'm your English teacher. Today we are going to go over 50 advanced adjectives. That's right, 50 adjectives. So I hope you stick around for the whole video. Also, if you sign up for my website, you can sign up for free with the link down below. You can get a free PDF sent directly to your email. So I really hope you sign up. There's lots of other cool things you can see on the website. So don't forget, you can sign up at breezeenglishstudio.com. Again, the link will be down in the description box. All right, let's get into today's lesson. 50 advanced English adjectives. Number one, abject. Abject means extreme and without hope. Some synonyms include hopeless, wretch, and dismal. They live in abject poverty. Number two, absolute. Absolute means total and complete or certain. Some synonyms include complete, perfect, and certain. I have absolute faith in your ability to get the job done. Number three, absurd. Absurd means ridiculously unreasonable or inappropriate. Some synonyms include ridiculous, silly, and illogical. Spending that much money is absurd. Number four, abundant. 
Abundant means available in large quantities. Synonyms include plentiful, copious, and ample. We have abundant evidence to support our theory. Number five, acute. Acute means very sharp or intense. Synonyms include severe, sharp, and intense. He had acute abdominal pain. Number six, adamant. Adamant means to refuse to be persuaded or to change one's mind. Synonyms for adamant are hard, inflexible, and unwavering. She was adamant that she was right. Number seven, adjacent. Adjacent means very near or next to. Synonyms are next to, adjoining, and alongside. The new library will be adjacent to the museum. Number eight, analytical. Analytical means using analysis or logical reasoning. Synonyms for analytical are logical, diagnostic, and systematic. She has a very analytical mind. Number nine, arbitrary. Arbitrary means not planned or chosen for any particular reason. Some synonyms of arbitrary are capricious, random. It was a completely arbitrary decision. Number 10, archaic. Archaic means very old and no longer used. Synonyms for archaic are old, antiquated, and obsolete. The is an archaic word for you. This means the word the is old and we used to use it for the word you, but we don't use it anymore. It's archaic. Number 11, arduous. Arduous means difficult and tiring, requiring a lot of effort. Some synonyms are difficult, strenuous, and taxing. It was a long and arduous journey. Number 12, atypical. Atypical means not typical, usual, or normal. Synonyms include unusual, uncharacteristic, and unconventional. He displayed atypical behavior for someone his age. Number 13, blatant. Blatant means obvious or intentional. Done without worry about what others think. Synonyms include flagrant, egregious, and obvious. It was a blatant lie. Number 14, bogus. Bogus means not genuine, true, or real. Synonyms for bogus are counterfeit, false, and fake. The police received several bogus tips. Number 15, boisterous. Boisterous means noisy and energetic. Synonyms include lively, active, and animated. They complained about the boisterous party next door. Number 16, bombastic. Bombastic means using difficult words to impress people, but actually having little meaning. Some synonyms for bombastic are pompous, verbose, and wordy. The politician gave a bombastic speech. This means the politician used a lot of big words, but actually said very little. Number 17, brittle. Brittle means hard, but easily broken. Some synonyms for brittle are breakable, fragile, and delicate. The older you get, the more brittle your bones become. Number 18, chronological. Chronological means events in the order of which they occurred. Some synonyms for chronological include sequential, consecutive, and in order. Please organize these news events in chronological order. Number 19, clandestine. I really like this word, clandestine. Clandestine means done in secret. Some synonyms for clandestine are covert, stealthy, and private. Their clandestine meetings continued for years. Number 20, coherent. Coherent means logical and consistent. Some synonyms include reasonable, rational, and sound. 
He couldn't come up with a coherent strategy. Number 21. Commendable. Commendable means deserving praise. Synonyms for commendable are admirable, praiseworthy, and respectable. Her quick thinking under pressure was commendable. Number 22. Commonplace. Commonplace simply means usual. So some synonyms we could use are ordinary, run-of-the-mill, and mainstream. Mandatory overtime is commonplace in this industry. Number 23. Compatible. Compatible means to be together without problems or conflict. Synonyms that we can use for compatible are agreeable, harmonious, and well-matched. They broke up because they weren't compatible. Number 24. Concise. Concise means short and clear. Synonyms include brief, succinct, and to the point. He wrote up a concise summary of the meeting. Number 25. Conducive. Conducive means providing the right conditions for something good to happen. So we could use these synonyms, helpful, advantageous, and encouraging. A quiet room is conducive for studying. Number 26. Dilapidated. Dilapidated means old and in a state of disrepair. We can also use rundown, neglected, and shabby. We found a dilapidated house in the woods. So we found a broken down house that could not be repaired. Number 27. Dire. Dire means very serious or urgent. Synonyms include terrible, dreadful, and awful. Drinking and driving can have dire consequences. Number 28. Disheveled. Disheveled means an untidy appearance. We can also use the words untidy, unkempt, and messy. Don't go to an interview looking disheveled. So if you go to an interview, you probably want to take a shower, comb your hair, wear clean clothes. So neat and tidy is the opposite of disheveled. Number 29, dismayed. Dismayed means feeling unhappy or disappointed. Some synonyms are discouraged, upset, distressed. I was dismayed to learn that he'd cheated. Number 30, divisive. Divisive means causing disagreement or hostility. Some synonyms that we can use are alienating, isolating, and estranging. Raising taxes is a divisive issue. That means people have strong opinions and they're easily divided over this issue. Number 31, docile. Docile means quiet and easy to influence or control. Synonyms include compliant, obedient, and passive. Being docile at work doesn't pay. In other words, it's not good to be docile at work. You should be more assertive. Number 32, dormant. Dormant means not active, but could become active at a later time. Synonyms include inactive, asleep, and latent. Mount Fuji is a dormant volcano. That means it's not actively erupting, but in the future, it could possibly erupt again. Number 33, durable. Durable means able to withstand damage. So something that is very strong. Synonyms include lasting, enduring, and tough. This table is very durable. Number 34, eclectic. Eclectic means made up of various sources or styles. Synonyms include assorted, diverse, and wide-ranging. She has an eclectic style. Number 35, egregious. Egregious means outstandingly bad and noticeable. Synonyms of egregious are blatant, flagrant, and horrible. It's hard to recover from an egregious error. Number 36, elated. Elated means extremely happy. Some synonyms of elated are thrilled, excited, and ecstatic. I felt elated after passing my English test. Number 37, eloquent. 
Eloquent means persuasive in writing and speaking. So usually someone who is very good with words is eloquent. Synonyms include expressive, articulate, and fluent. She made an eloquent speech at the rally. Number 38, elusive. I like this word also, elusive. Elusive means difficult to catch, find, achieve, or remember. Synonyms are evasive, shifty, and slippery. The answers to these questions remain elusive. Number 39, excruciating. Excruciating means extremely painful. Synonyms are agonizing, unbearable, and severe. I have excruciating back pain. Number 40, exhilarating. Exhilarating means feeling very excited and happy. We could also say exciting, thrilling, or intoxicating. We went on an exhilarating roller coaster ride. Number 41, extravagant. Extravagant means lacking restraint when spending money or more expensive than is reasonable. So it has a lot to do with spending a lot of money. We can also say indulgent, wasteful, and excessive. He leads an extravagant lifestyle. So he's probably going out to really expensive restaurants, buying brand name clothing, spending a lot of money. Number 42, feasible. Feasible means possible to do easily or likely. We could also say practical, attainable, and probable. Thanks to your generous donation, our project is now feasible. Number 43, figurative. Figurative means words or phrases departing from their original meaning. We use figurative language a lot in the English language. Synonyms for figurative are metaphorical, symbolic, and non-literal. So we don't take these words in the literal meaning. I used the word kill in the figurative sense. So for example, if you say, go kill them out there to someone who's going to go on stage, doesn't actually mean kill them. It means to do a good job. So the word kill in that sentence is used in the figurative sense. Number 44, finicky. I like this word also, finicky. It's just a fun word to say. Finicky means difficult to please. Synonyms include fussy, fastidious, and picky. He was always a finicky eater. So this means he doesn't eat everything on his plate. He has certain things that he likes and many things he doesn't like. If you got this far in the video, let me know down in the comments if you are a finicky eater. Number 45, forlorn. Forlorn means sad and left alone. You could also say lonely, sad, and pitiful. His face looked forlorn as he waved goodbye. Number 46, frivolous. Frivolous means not serious or important. Synonyms include trivial, superficial, and shallow. You shouldn't spend a lot of money on a frivolous party. Number 47, gaudy. Gaudy means bright, showy, and tasteless. We could also say flashy, lurid, and loud. My aunt loves gaudy jewelry. Number 48, generic. Generic simply means not specific. We can also say common, general, or non-specific. The generic kind of cereal is cheaper than the name brand ones. Number 49, gratuitous. Gratuitous means done without good reason. Synonyms are unwarranted, unjustified, and needless. This movie is filled with gratuitous violence. So the violence in the movie is not necessary. It's done without good reason. Maybe it doesn't even have anything to do with the storyline. 
They just wanted to put it in the movie. So for no good reason. Gratuitous. And number 50, our last one for today, we have the word hapless. Hapless. Okay, so hapless means unfortunate. We could also say unlucky, ill-fated, or doomed. So quite a negative word. They were the hapless victims of war. All right, that's it for today's video. Again, if you would like the free PDF, you can sign up for it on my website. Just enter your email and your name and I will send you the PDF to your email. So again, my website is breezeenglishstudio.com and I will be sending you your PDF, so please look out for it. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I can't wait to see you for our next lesson. Bye everyone. Are we live? I think so. Hi everyone. Hi guys. So um, I hope you're ready for the lesson today. Um, if you haven't yet, please go subscribe to the YouTube channel because I'll be, uh, I'll be having another video over there uh, a little bit later today. Um, so if you want to see both lessons, you can go and subscribe to the YouTube channel, um, like the Facebook page, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, and uh, if you could share this video with anyone you know who wants to learn English, that is also really, really helpful. Um, I'll just share the link with you guys. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you. Thank you always for joining my lessons. Hello, Ali Awan. You were the first one to comment. Hello. Okay, so we're going to do um, a vocabulary lesson today. And on YouTube today, too, we'll be doing a vocabulary lesson. Um, so uh, I heard that a lot of students are taking exams like IELTS, um, TOEIC, ECPE, the, those tests. So uh, today we're going to focus on some vocabulary that you might see on those tests, but are also, um, you know, very relevant to daily life when you speak English, okay? Hello from Iraq, hello from Somalia. Wow, Myanmar, hello. Hi everyone, so glad you are here. Okay, so I'm going to show you the two words. We're gonna learn two words and they are opposite of each other. So these two words today are, mm, can you see them all right? We have a uh, two surge. Let me use my other hand because this is kind of confusing. We have to surge and to plummet, plummet. Okay, so these are um, actually opposites. Oh, it's your first time here. Welcome. Hello, thank you for joining us. Okay. So um, we have to surge and to plummet. So these are actually um, opposites. They are opposites of each other, okay? So if you know one, then you'll know the opposite, right? So um, to surge means that something um, suddenly increases, something suddenly goes up very powerfully, okay? So um, we can use surge for a few different things. So for example, um, uh, for example, the stock market, um, stock shares can surge. That means they go up. Stocks, are, stocks can also plummet. That means they go down. Um, we can also use surge um, to talk about electricity. Like if you're, you're using a lot of um, different uh, electronics at the same time, it might create an electric surge and you might uh, blow your uh, fuse, right? Okay, um, we can also use this for um, energy. I had an energy surge or something goes up powerfully, okay, increases, all right? Then um, we have to plummet. To plummet means um, to go down very quickly, to go down or to drop. 
um, or decrease in value. So if a uh, if a stock if a stock plummets, that means its value is going down very drastically. Um, you can also, uh, like for example, um, you might hear this on the news when they talk about accidents. So um, if you if you are on a very high mountain, if you are hiking on a very high mountain and you fall off, we could say uh, the hiker, the hiker plummeted off the mountain all the way down. Oh my gosh, very scary. Okay. Can we use surge for an increase in speed pace? Uh, like, you mean like uh, I driving or walking or something? Um, usually I don't think we say it because it means already like very quick. So um, usually we get a surge of something like a surge of energy or um, like a surge of anger. We can say it like that, but probably the ones that are most used um, for like the tests and things like that is going to be like an increase in um, something of value to surge, go up in value. Good question. Okay. Ah, uh, to plummet is used for something or someone. So it can be both. So for example, the stock, the stock market plummeted. It means it went down in value. Um, or a person can plummet off of something. So like uh, he plummeted from the top of the building. Maybe he jumped. So very scary. If a person plummets, um, uh, it means that they're kind of uh, maybe they jumped or fell from a very high place and went very quickly down. So very scary if a person plummets. OK. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good example. There was a surge in Corona patients. Yes. So a big increase in the number. Very good. OK. All right. Let's look at uh, let's look at the bigger whiteboard. OK. Let's see. All right, let me just move a little bit. All right, okay. So um, we have a few different examples here and um, I wrote it out. Surge means an increase suddenly and powerfully. Um, so we, we use surge when we talk about electricity or um, the value of something or an increase in the number of something. These are usually when we use surge, okay? Oh, Tet Tet Win, you're late. It's okay. We just started. We're learning um, surge and plummet, and these are opposite words. So surge means to to increase suddenly and powerfully. Okay, and plummet is the opposite, fall or drop at a high speed, or a rapid decrease in value. Okay. So um, probably if you're taking an English test, they might use surge and plummet to talk about the value of things, okay? Very good. Oh, <laughs> he plummeted in the sea. Yes, he plummeted into the sea. <sighs> yeah, maybe from like a high building or something, plummet. <sighs> oh my goodness, okay? Ah, there was a surge of heat. Yeah, a heat, like a um, maybe there was a, a surge of um, heat waves. Yeah, very good. Okay, so surge means increase suddenly, powerfully. Plummet means a fall or drop straight down at a high speed or rapid decrease in value. Okay, so opposites, right? Easy to remember. Um, let's look at number one together, okay? Oh, this is a good question. Could we say the salary has plummeted? Yeah, we could say, oh, my salary, my salary plummeted. Mm. I think, uh, I don't know if we would say that, but you could say that. Like, uh, uh, my salary has been plummeting since uh, the start of coronavirus. My salary has been plummeting. It's been going down steadily. You could say that. 
hopefully, hopefully you, you don't need to say that though. Okay. So let's take a look at number one and try and put them in the correct tenses. Okay. Hello from Malaysia. It's okay if you're late. Hello from Pakistan. Okay. Um, number one, fax machine sales. So here we're going to be talking about the value of something. Fax machine sales something as newer technology became, this is became available. So we have became, I don't know if you can see that very well in the past tense, fax machine sales as newer technology became available. Okay, very good. Excellent. Oh, let me just, oh, my phone is making noises. <laughs> Hold on one second. Please write your answer in the comments. Okay. Oh, I see, I see a lot of different answers. I see some people saying plummeted, some people saying surge. Okay. So, all right, finally, my phone is on silent now. Okay. So I see a lot of different answers. Hello from Mexico. Okay. Fax machine sales plummeted. Plummeted. Okay. Fax machine sales plummeted as newer technology became available. So um, I don't know if you use fax machines still in your country where you live. Um, in Japan, sometimes people still use fax machines, but I think fax machines are not so common these days. So fax machine sales ooh, decreased in value. They went down. Fax machine sales plummeted as newer technology became available, okay? So newer technology um, is maybe easier to use. So people are, are using it more. So less people are buying fax machines. So fax machine sales plummeted. Okay, very good, very good. Oh, my phone battery is plummeting. Oh no. So it sounds like um, when you say my phone battery is plummeting, it sounds like uh, your battery is going down very, very quickly. Okay. All right. Let's try number two, tech stocks. So this tech means technology. Tech stocks mm, to record highs. Mm, tech stocks to record highs. Okay. Oh, if you're just joining, sure. I'll explain a little bit after we do number two. Okay. I see Aliawan answered. Very good. Manny, very good. Tetetwin, good job. Ricardo, okay. So tech stocks, um, we could say uh, that the correct answer is surge. We're going to use the word surge. Tech stocks surge to record highs, or we could put it in the past tense, tech stocks surged to record highs. Um, let's just use surge. That sounds kind of like a news article headline. Tech stocks surge to record highs, wow. Okay, so it could be surge or surged. Both are grammatically correct. Depends on the meaning. All right, very good. Okay, good job. So tech stocks surged to record highs. Wow, it's the highest they've ever been. Okay, how about number three? The car mm, off the cliff. Ooh, oh, the car mm -hmm, off the cliff. <gasps> what could number three be? Ah, this is a good one. My car's uh, value, my car's value plummeted from 50K USD to 5K USD after two years. Oh no, yeah. Prices of cars, after you buy a car, they will plummet, the value plummets, okay? 
Ah, this is a good question. Um, so uh, Ali Awan, he's answering plummeted for number three. And why didn't you write high records instead of record highs? So um, usually we, we say like a record high or record highs. So um, highs, highs just means that it's very high, higher than normal. But when we say we use record as an adjective, record highs, record highs means that it's like the the highest ever it's ever been. Okay, high records, you're describing a record. Record high means that the high is a new record. Does that make sense? So record would describe the high, okay? It's a little bit confusing, I know, because usually um, like high, we don't use it in that way. But here we say we usually say record highs or it's a record high. OK, very good. So uh, here we could say the car off the cliff. Oh, no. So you, you might see this in the news sometimes. The car, we could say plummeted off the cliff or plummets off the cliff. Both are correct grammatically. But if we're talking about an accident that happened the day before or this morning, the car plummeted off the cliff. Oh no, plummeted. Very, very scary. I hope uh, I hope we, we don't have that kind of news anytime soon, right? The car plummeted off the cliff, uh-oh. Okay, very good. Then the last one, number four, although I was tired, although I was tired, I got a of energy when I saw the finish line, finish line. So if you are in a race or if you're doing a marathon, you're running, running, the finish line, oh, I'm so tired, but I got, I got some more energy when I saw the finish line. Oh, very good. Okay, I see Serge. Okay. Very good. Yes, good job. Although I was tired, I got a... So here's a big hint. Although, although I was tired, so then the next sentence should be the opposite, right? Although I was tired, I got a surge. Surge of energy when I saw the finish line. My adrenaline went up. I got a surge of energy. Okay. Oh, very good, everybody. Good job. So if you're just joining us, I'll just quickly review. Um, surge is an increase, sudden increase and very powerful. Okay. Usually we use it about money, or value, um, electricity, or um, an increase in the number of something. Plummet means fall or drop at a high speed um, or rapid decrease in value, okay? So these are opposites. Number one, fax machine sales plummeted as newer technology became available. Number two, tech stocks surge to record highs record highs. So it's the highest the tech stocks have ever been. Okay, number three, the car plummeted off the cliff. Oh no, it fell. Okay, then number four, although I was tired, so this is a big hint, although I was tired, so it should be opposite the next sentence, the next part of the sentence. I got a surge of energy when I saw the finish line. Okay, very, very good. Ah, let's see. Oh, this is a good one. Um, yeah, if you want to make your own sentences, um, I'll, I can quickly correct them. Due to surge in COVID-19 patients, Yes, due to the surge in COVID-19 patients, the availability of the vaccine plummeted in Pakistan. Yeah, um, I think in many countries, right? Or we could just say, um, uh, you know, 
um, the surge of Corona patients uh, and the, the, oh, what was I gonna say? Oh, I forgot my sentence. Oh no, but it was a very good, good example. My friend exaggerates that her stock share is surging more and more. Oh, very good, very good. My friend exaggerates. So it's not really the truth. She's kind of saying it's a little bit bigger than it actually is. My friend exaggerates that her stock share is surging more and more. Wow, going up, 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 up. Very good, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Oh, yes, this is a good one. Can I use plummet for blood pressure? Yes, uh, I forgot to mention that. Um, we, uh, you'll often hear like in a medical drama or if you go to the doctor in an English speaking country, um, if somebody's blood pressure is going down very quickly, um, a lot of doctors will say um, his blood pressure is plummeting or sometimes they say uh, BP for blood pressure. His BP is plummeting, okay? Plummeting, yes, blood pressure going down very, very quickly, okay? Uh, let's see. Oh, my listening skill is poor, so I can't really understand some of what you are saying. Sorry, oh, please don't be sorry. Um, if I'm talking too quickly for you, um, I know that everybody is at a different uh, level. So if I'm talking too quickly, you can please ask me in the chat to slow down. Today is a little bit of an advanced lesson, but maybe you can watch some other lessons and uh, you can catch up a little bit, okay? Surge and rise are the same. Yes, surge and rise can be synonyms. Yes. Not in every instance, but in, in when we're talking about an increase, it's the same as rise. Okay. Ah, the number of international students plummet due to the high tuition. Yes, the number of international students plummet plummet or plummeted due to high tuition. Very good. Okay. Excellent, excellent. Ah, may you stay safe and healthy amid, we would say amid the surge of the second wave of the pandemic. Oh, thank you very much. Actually, here in Japan, we are uh, we are riding the surge of the third wave now, actually. Oh, we are under another state of emergency in Japan. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next week, are we having vocabulary or grammar lessons? Which one, uh, which one do you prefer? Because I'm, I'm open to anything. Okay. Very, very good. Oh, let's see. Uh, during COVID-19, economic development is plummeting all over the world. Yes, economic development is plummeting. Yeah, it's very, very sad, okay? Oh, this is very good. I experience a sudden surge of emotion when I'm watching a sad movie. Very good, so we can also use surge when we're talking about something that goes through us like um, emotions. So a surge of emotion, a surge of anger, a surge of something. Um, it's a little bit different than uh, the way we use it for like value, increase of value, but you can say like a surge of something. I think this one comes from um, electricity surge. So Electricity is always running through um, all of our cables and everything. So our emotions are running through us as well. Very good, okay. Oh, very good, okay. Uh, when it comes to past examination, I got a surge of energy. Yeah, maybe you can say when I, uh, when it came to my examination, I got a surge of energy, so ooh, I can pass, I can pass. Okay, very good. 
Yeah, in Japan, it's pretty crazy right now. <laughs> oh, I'm a new follower. I want to become like native speakers in English. You're in the right place. We're all here to help you.、Um, we have a great community、um, and、uh, we try to help each other. I have some questions. How can I improve my, I think you mean speaking. How can I improve my speaking?、Um, uh, it's really good. If you can talk to a native speaker, although I know a lot of you are not in areas with native speakers. So,、um, talking out loud to the wall is a very good way to practice. Just get used to saying、um, things that you want to say that you will say. That really helps you. Okay. Very good. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I see some, some nice comments. Thank you so much. Okay, so I see some people wanting to learn grammar next week. Okay, do you guys prefer grammar?、Um, we can definitely do some grammar next week. Okay. All right. So,、uh, what's today's lesson? Okay, so today, if you're just coming in, we learned surge and plummet. Surge and plummet. So, just to review, surge means an increase, sudden increase, and powerful increase. Plummet means down,、um, to drop or to go down quickly, decrease in value. Okay? Very, very good. So,、um, I'm going to end today's lesson here.、Um, there will be a new lesson over on the YouTube channel.、Um, we're also learning some vocabulary, new vocabulary over on YouTube today.、Um, next week, maybe we can do some grammar. Okay. Very, very good. All right. Thank you, everyone. Please like this video, share it with someone who's learning English. Um, like the Facebook page, subscribe to the YouTube channel, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys、uh, tomorrow on YouTube, next week on Facebook. Okay? Thank you so much, and I will see you guys later. Bye. Hello, students. I think my mic is on. Okay, so I'm ready. Are you guys ready? We're going to do、um, our last lesson on confusing verbs today. And remember that tomorrow is going to be our review. Okay. We're going to review tomorrow. So I hope you are ready for that. Hello. How are you guys? Oh, yeah. And、um, if you can share this live stream with your friends or anyone you know who is. Learning English that helps us grow our community.、Um, and then we can learn all together. Hello, Pablo. Hello, Anna. I hope everyone is doing well. I hope everybody's healthy and safe. Hello from El Salvador. Hello, Gerar Gerardo. Hello, Mom. Hello, Sharon. Hello, Eileen. Hello, Linda. Hello. Hello, Devaska. I hope you guys are all doing well. Hello, Noor from Libya. I am doing well. I'm good today. Hello from Bangladesh. Hello from Pakistan. Hi. So, okay, we're going to get into the lesson because I know that's why you are here, right?、Um, okay, so let's see. I have our two tricky verbs for today. So remember,、um, this week we're doing the, the difficult or confusing verbs. So、um, tomorrow is going to be our review lesson. So please come for tomorrow's lesson. And I hope that you go back and study the previous lessons. Okay. Hello from Australia. Wow. Hello, hello. Okay. And I'm also going to、um, publish a,、um, a YouTube video, a YouTube lesson today, but it will be later. So、um, you can always watch it later. It's not, it's not a live lesson today, but it will be up for you guys. It'll be a lesson on pronunciation. 
Okay, so that will be up later today. Hello from El Salvador. Hello from India. Hello from Pakistan. Hello from Philippines. Wow. Okay. So um, let's see. Da, 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 da. We have come versus go. These are very, very simple, right? You know these verbs. We use these all the time, like a hundred times a day come versus go. However, they do get tricky and a lot of my students, no matter if they're beginner students, intermediate students, or advanced students, sometimes people make mistakes, right? So today we're going to try and figure out when we are supposed to use come and when we're supposed to use go, okay? So I know they, this lesson looks easy, but um, trust me, it's good to brush up a little bit, okay? So come versus go. So the very, very basics, right? The basics, come, come. When you come or when somebody comes, they are going towards the speaker, okay? They're going towards the speaker. My friend came to see me. We wouldn't say my friend went to see me, right? Um, if we are taking the perspective of the person that somebody is coming towards, we would say they came to see me, right? They came to see me. Okay. He came to my house, right? So when you use go, you want to use go when somebody is going or moving away from the speaker. Yeah, so maybe some people think come and go are easy. However, um, I know a lot of students, almost every student makes a mistake at some point. So we're just gonna try and go over it. Hello, hello. Okay, so that is the basics, right? When you come, you're going towards someone. When you go, you're moving away from someone, okay? So when you're speaking, you have to think of whose perspective you are talking from, okay? Yes, 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 they came, maybe I would say they came to see me, oops. I clicked the wrong comment. Hello. <laughs> okay. They came and see me. Is this correct? Um, I would say they came to see me or they came and saw me. Okay. Hello from Sudan. Hello, hello. Hello from India. Okay. Come versus go. So let's look at some of our exercises, right? And let's see if it really is easy for you, okay? Let's see. So, we have our exercises here, okay? So, come, remember, come, you are moving towards the speaker, usually. Go, you are moving away from the speaker, usually, okay? So, uh, let's see. Very good, okay, so let's do these together, all right? Let's see how easy, if it's super easy, um, maybe we'll do some harder ones tomorrow, okay? Okay, so number one, I'm at Tom's house. Are you, mm -hmm. are you, and we're gonna put these in the correct, the correct tense, okay? I'm at Tom's house, are you, hmm, okay. Oh, very good, uh, Safin was the first one I saw, very good. Anna, very good, Bilal, okay, very, very good. I'm at Tom's house, are you, the correct answer is coming, are you coming, because the speaker, I'm at Tom's house, and I want to know if you are coming here, coming towards me. Are you coming towards me? Are you coming? Okay, very, very good. 
How about number two? Why don't you mm to my house for dinner? Why don't you mm to my house for dinner? What about number two? Who can get number two? Oh, very good. I see Arun, uh, Madhu, Anna. Hello, hello. Bilal, Himan, Hitat, Sharin, Devaska. Very good. Why don't you come to my house for dinner? Very, very good. Why don't you come to my house for dinner? Okay, so we're talking about my house. If we said, why don't you go to my house for dinner? It sounds like you are not at your house. Just your friend will go there, but you are not there. So usually when we talk about my house, we would say, come, why don't you come over to my house? Why don't you come to my house? Okay, very, very good. Number three, the new movie was so good, you should mm, see it. The new movie was so good, you should mm, see it. Oh, very, very good. I see uh, Kihin, Min Minej, very good. Ah, Mahmoud, thank you. Yeah, if you want to share the live with your friends, that's awesome. Wow, very good, everybody. Nice. Okay, the new movie was so good. You should go see it. You should go see it. So, I saw the movie already. I'm not there anymore, right? The new movie was so good. You should go and see it. So I am not there. The speaker is not there. So you want to move away from the speaker. You're going to go somewhere else. Okay. Number four. Hmm. My father will mm, help my brother. So my father will come help my brother. My father will go help my brother. You think. Oh, thank you, Mahmoud. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, if you want to go subscribe to the YouTube channel, you can do that also because um, uh, I will be uploading a new lesson later today. Okay, so number four. This one, this one is tricky so i think i've tricked you with this one my father will go help my brother or we can also say my father will come help my brother so in number four it depends which perspective you are thinking from okay so if you're thinking from the father's perspective my father will go help my brother. If you're thinking from your brother's perspective or if you are with your brother, my father will come help my brother, okay? So for example, um, let's see. I, uh, maybe, I was gonna give an example, but my brother, for example, my brother also lives in Japan. My brother also lives in Japan. So I could say, my father will come help my brother. So if I think I am in the same position of my brother, we are both in Japan, um, I could say my father will come help my brother. But if I think from my father's perspective, he will go help my brother, right? So sometimes both are acceptable. It just depends um, whose perspective you're thinking from, okay? Watching from the Philippines, hello. Okay, so my father will go help my brother. My father will come help my brother. Both are grammatically correct, no problem, okay? Oh, so Bilal said, wouldn't we use two? along with go in sentence number three. Uh, the new movie was so good. You should go see it. You should go to see it. Um, I would not put two here, actually. You should go do something. Go do something. Come do something. So come help. Go see. 
So we don't need to put two actually, but good, good question, good observation. Okay, number five. I will mm, to London next spring. Oh, I see Anna's already got it. Very good, Zinko's got it. Awesome, Linda, very good. I will go to London next spring. This is uh, just an example, not a true statement. I will go to London next spring. Very, very good. I will go to London next spring. I am not in London, so I am moving away from where I am. I will go to London. Okay, how about number six? My parents are going to, we have going to, it means in the future. My parents are going to mm, visit me in Japan. Ooh, number six, number six. My parents are going to mm, visit me in Japan. Okay, I see go, come, go, come, 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 come. And has come, Alberto, come. Uh, some people have go. Okay, very good. So this one is a little bit tricky. So my parents are going to come visit me very good come come visit me in japan my parents are going to come visit me in japan so i am the speaker i am in japan my parents are going to come to me they're going to move towards me if the parents are talking they would say uh we are going to go visit her in Japan, right? But since um, I am the speaker, they are coming towards me. Okay, very, very good. Very nice. Okay, so uh, I'll read them one more time. Okay, number one, I'm at Tom's house. Are you coming? So I'm at Tom's house. Are you coming? Why don't you come to my house for dinner? Why don't you come to my house for dinner? Okay, you're inviting someone to come to your house. If you say, why don't you go to my house for dinner? Oh, are you are you not going to be home? Why, why should I go to your house if you're not gonna be there, right? Okay, number three. The new movie was so good, you should go see it. So here, the new movie was so good. I've already seen it. So you should go see it. You should go see it. Number four, my father will go help my brother. I'm thinking from my father's perspective, he will go. My father will come help my brother. I'm thinking from my brother's perspective, okay? Number five, I will go to London next spring. So I'm leaving, I'm going somewhere. My parents are going to come visit me in Japan. I am in Japan and I am the speaker. They are moving towards me. Okay, very good. So I saw some questions, so I will, um, I will answer them as much as possible. Okay, so, so this question, I saw this one popping up. Why don't we use to? So uh, when we use go or come, we don't need the word to. So if you're going to do something, right? So uh, come watch this movie with me. Come and watch this movie with me is kind of what we're saying. So why don't you go and see that movie? Okay, so we're kind of taking out the word and. You could put the word and also, but you don't always need to. So you can just say, um, come, come help me. Come and help me, okay? So it's kind of consecutive um, actions, okay? Go and do your homework. Go do your homework, okay? Let's see, I saw another question. Uh, okay, this one. Can we say I come to home? So 
Actually, no, we don't say um, come to home or go to home. So um, I actually made a lesson on this. Um, it's not available yet. It's going to be on the YouTube channel, uh, maybe um, in a few days or something. But we don't use to um, for home. And the reason is that home is an adverb of place. So we don't say, I come to home, I go to home. It's the same that we don't say, I go to abroad. We don't say that, I go abroad, okay? So please remember that. The, the whole lesson will be out in a few days. Okay. Oh, yes. Can we place and between come and visit? Yes. Um, my parents are going to come and visit me. Yes. So we can put and or we can take it out. Very, very good. Okay. Let's see. Uh, what's home? Go, ho go homework. So we wouldn't say go homework. Um, go do your homework. Go and do your homework. Okay? Go and do your homework. Yes, you can say go home. I go home. Very, very good. Okay? Oh, you're welcome, Maru. I hope it was helpful. No problem. Okay? Uh... Yes, I will go to Japan next week. Very good. I will go to, in a direction, I will go to Japan. Very, very good. If you're going to put a place, go to something, okay? But we wouldn't use, like, um, for example, this to in this sentence, I will go to Japan, is directional. We are going to a place. But we wouldn't say, I am going to homework. That sounds like you are walking to your homework, right? Okay. Uh, what if one argues that home is not an adverb, but a noun? It is both, actually. So it can be a noun, but when we say go home, we are using it as an adverb of location or an adverb of place. Yes. So um, you could say, I bought a home. I bought a home. Then it is a noun. I bought a home. However, when you're talking about um, going home, we're using it as an adverb of place. But good observation. Okay. Okay, okay. Oh, there's many comments. Okay, Anna has a sentence. We got to go now. Can you come to our house quickly to keep an eye on my sons, please? Very good sentence. Very good sentence. We got to go now. Can you come to our house? Can you come to our house quickly to keep an eye on my sons? Very, very good. Excellent sentence. Yeah, if you have a sentence you want to see if it's correct, um, you can you can put it in the comments. Oh, very good question. Ma'am, can I say go to bed? I go to bed. Yes, yes. Bed is a place. Bed is a place. So I go to bed. I know English is very, very confusing, but for bed, for work, for school, we can say, I go to bed, I go to work, I go to school. Home is an exception. It becomes an adverb of location, okay? Uh, what if my parents are going to visit me instead of going to come visit me? What's the difference between these two structures? Ah, very, very good. So um, both are correct. Uh, my parents are going to visit me. My parents are going to visit me in Japan. Perfectly okay. So um, if I say my parents are going to come visit me, 
Um, it just means uh, we're switching out visit. Well, you're using visit here. My parents are going to come visit me. My parents are going to visit me. Maybe there is no difference in the meaning, um, just how you want to say it. There's a variety of ways we can make the sentence. So both of them are the same, the same meaning. Very, very good. So my parents are going to visit me. My parents are going to come visit me. Both are okay. Okay. Um, I think I can answer one or two more questions. Uh, let's see, let's see. Could you come to our party tonight? Very good. Could you come to our party? Yes. So it is our party, so you are moving towards me. Very, very good. Okay. Let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see. I am coming to market to buy some vegetables. Is it right? So um, usually uh, if you are, you want to buy some vegetables at the market, usually we would say, I am going to the market to buy some vegetables because you are moving away from where you are now, right? I'm moving away from, from where I am now and I'm going to the market. I'm going to the market, okay? Unless you are the owner of the market, you could say I'm coming to the market, but um, usually you're not the owner of the whole market, right? So you would say I'm going to market, I'm going to the market, okay? Oops, I saw a good one. Why don't you come join us for playing cricket? After playing cricket, we will go for a coffee. Oh, very, very good. So here I will say, why don't you come join us? Or why don't you come and join us? So we don't need to come to join. Come join us for for playing cricket, after playing cricket, we will go for a coffee. Go for a coffee, very, very good. Okay, uh, let's see, let's see. I think I saw, I saw one that I wanted to answer. Okay, I better going now, but see you soon. Is it correct? Almost correct, almost correct. So we would say, I better get going now but see you soon, okay? Get going. Get going means um, I have to leave. So I might be in a hurry or oh, look at the time. I better get going. I better get going, okay? Okay, so if you have some more questions, you can leave them in the comments and I will try and answer them. Um, remember, there will be a new video, a new lesson on the YouTube channel today. So if you could go and subscribe to the YouTube channel, you will know when that video will be up. Okay, so thank you so much. Tomorrow is going to be our full review day. So please go and review our other lessons and tomorrow we will have a review lesson together. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you so much for joining and for sharing this live stream. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you guys for tomorrow's lesson and on YouTube, okay. Take care, bye. Hello, hello, hello. I hope you guys can see me and hear me. Thank you for joining this live stream, yay. Oh my goodness, hello Yin, hello Deva, hello Nanda. Hello, um, Hitet, Hitet, hello. Thank you so much for joining. Um, let's see. So I just decided to pop on here and um, give you a quick vocabulary lesson. And I thought, um, so right now in America, there is the, the election going on between Donald Trump and uh, Vice, uh, former Vice President Joe Biden. Hello, hello, hello from Bangladesh. 
Hello, hello, Classy, hello. So um, I thought it was a good opportunity to share with you some vocabulary that um, they are using a lot in the news and reporting on the election. And um, some of these words are also going to be very useful for your everyday life, okay? So maybe some of these words are a little bit advanced, okay? Some words might be a little advanced, but I think it's going to be a good challenge, okay? So yes. Oh, uh, Sajad says, congratulations on winning of Joe Biden. Um, it looks that way. We are still don't know for sure. There's a lot of things happening. So a lot of things are up in the air. Do you guys know the term or the expression up in the air? I didn't uh, plan to explain this one, up in the air. So if something is up in the air, um, it means that we still don't know what's going to happen. Something is still not decided. It's up in the air. Okay, I think I might have taught this expression in a previous lesson somewhere, but up in the air means um, we don't know. It's nothing is for certain yet. Okay, up in the air. Hello, hello. Okay, so now that we've got some people in the chat, let's go to um, the vocabulary. So let's see, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so can you see this? It says election vocabulary, 2020 US election. Oh, Keen remembers up in the air, awesome. Okay, you guys are very smart. Okay, so we're going to look at some, uh, uh, some vocabulary that I've been seeing a lot that is being used in the election, okay? So first, let's, let's look at the vocabulary and then at the end, we're going to read a quick um, excerpt from an article, okay? So, ooh, the first word that we're going to learn, the first phrase is razor's edge, razor's edge. They are talking about this a lot in the media right now. So um, if you know what a razor is, if you know what a razor blade, sometimes people shave with razors. Um, and you'll notice that a razor is very, very thin and very, very sharp, okay? And the edge, if you are on the razor's edge, maybe you're balancing from one side to the other, and the razor is very sharp, so a little bit dangerous, right? Okay, so the meaning of razor's edge is, um, we use it to refer to a dangerous position or a position in which two different things are carefully balanced, carefully balanced. So right now, um, you'll see in a lot of articles and on the news, they are saying that this election is on the razor's edge. So it's kind of balancing back and forth, back and forth. Who is going to win, the Democrats or the Republicans, Biden or Trump? It's going back and forth. Okay, very, very good. Yeah, close margin, very good. Okay, so let's take a look at the next word. Let's take a look at the next word. <gasps> okay, we have the expression plow through plow through. Does anyone know what plow through means? Plow through. So um, the spelling is different depending on if you're in America or if you're in um, England. Um, in the US, we use this plow, P-L-O-W, plow through. Let's see. Oh, uh, Deva, Devaska, 
Deveshka, I, I'm, I'm always not sure how to pronounce your name, asked, who do you want to win? Um, this is an interesting question. Um, uh, I don't know if I should tell my political stance, but um, I, I did not vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> I did not vote for Donald Trump. Um, are the words too small? Can you see them? Uh, let's see, how can I make them bigger? Uh, can you see it like this? Is that helpful? <laughs> okay, um, so uh, yeah, if you guys wanna discuss who you think is going to win in the comments, go ahead. So plow through, plow through, we have plow through here. Plow through means, oops, let's see. Oh, now they don't fit on the screen. Okay, plow through to finish doing what something, ah, sorry, to finish doing something that takes a long time and is difficult, okay? To finish doing something that takes a long time and is difficult. So, um, for example, plow through um, your homework. I have to plow through my homework. That means um, maybe your homework is going to take a long time and it's difficult, but you have to get through it. So um, if you are living in a country with a lot of snow, um, Maybe your country uses a plow. A plow is a type of vehicle that pushes all of the snow. So it's kind of difficult to get through, but you push, 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 and then you can go through. So it's similar with um, things like um, homework or work. And for example, a lot of states in America are plowing through plowing through um, uh, lots of ballots. Okay, so uh, Ali asked, isn't it plow, P-L-O-U-G-H? So that's a good point. Um, in England and in many, uh, maybe other, other countries, it's going to be P-L-O-U-G-H. But in America, we're gonna use P-L-O-W, plow through, plow through, okay? So let's take a look at the next too close to call, too close to call. So does anyone know what too close to call means? Does anyone know too close to call? Okay, so too close to call means uh, that it is not possible to predict who will win because it seems likely to be won by only a very small margin, okay? So right now, the US election is too close to call. We are not sure who will win because the winner will only win by a very small margin, a small margin, okay? Very, very good. So Hitet, can you see the words all right? Should I disappear? <laughs> if I do if I do this, is it easier to see? Maybe I should do it this way if it's easier to see. So, so far we learned razor's edge, plow through, too close to call. So the next one, oops, oops, oops. The next one is electoral votes. Oops, electoral votes. So. Um, electoral votes means um, each state in America has a certain number of electoral votes. Maybe you don't know a lot about um, American politics and that is okay. So uh, you just need to know that each state has a certain number of electoral votes and an electoral vote is a vote cast by a member of the Electoral College. So you can think that each state has a certain number of points, right? And if you want to be president, you need 
270 electoral votes. You need 270 electoral votes to become president. So that's kind of like the point system that we have. Okay. And the next one is legitimate. Legitimate. So if you listen to the pronunciation, legit, this is a flap T, legit, mit, mit. We don't say mate, legitimate, mit, legitimate. So legitimate, if you've um, listened to my other lessons today, legitimate means by the book, by the book. So uh, conforming to the law or to rules. So doing things legitimately, doing things by the book, you follow the law or you follow the rules, okay? And I think we have one more word today, and that is tally, tally. And to tally something as a verb, to tally something, means um, to calculate the total number of something, okay? To calculate the total number of something. So um, I'm going to show my face again. I hope you guys can still see. Okay. So um, let's see. We have uh, a tally, tally. So um, for example, if you're counting one, two, three, four, five, um, you are tallying up a number. Okay. Legitimate. Is legitimate uh, an adjective? Yes, it is an adjective. Very good. Oh, Kina said, I want to, I want Joe Biden to win. I don't know why. <laughs> so you don't know why you want him to win? Maybe I think a lot of people just don't want Trump to win, right? <laughs> we'll see. Okay. So next we're going to do a little bit of reading. It's a very, very short, just a small um, section of an article that I found. So um, let's see. We're gonna use all of these vocabulary that we learned, okay? So hopefully you understand these words. If you have a question, please, please ask me. Ah, okay. So uh, Devaska asked, um, totally and tally, are they the same? No, they are totally different words, totally different. So totally means like, if you say totally, it means really. Total could mean um, everything combined together. Like the total of one plus one is two. But tally, tally is another word for like counting, counting, tally. Okay, so maybe if you go, um, if you're counting, you maybe make tally marks. One, two, three, four, five. That is tally, okay, good question. Yeah, tally versus count, they're very similar. So um, tally just means calculating the total number of something. Um, so counting is very, very similar, one, two, three, four, five. Tally, um, maybe you're marking. Usually you, we use tally with like marking something, marking something, okay? Oh, and a really quick, Muhammad uh, Ali has another question. What's the difference between I need to go and I need to get going? Um, they're basically the same. Um, I would say I need to go is more direct. So if you're talking with someone and sorry, I need to go, maybe it sounds uh, like very direct. But if you say, oh, sorry, I need to get going. It's kind of maybe a softer way of saying <laughs> Goodbye, I need to leave now. Good question. Okay, so um, let's look at the reading really quick. And then if you have questions, I can answer them. So I'm going to read this out for you. Um, please listen and follow along and see if it makes sense. Okay. The presidential race between President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden remains on a razor's edge as election workers in key states 
continue to plow through mail-in ballots. It's still too close to call a winner. As Joe Biden is nearing 270 electoral votes, President Trump claims some legitimate tallying efforts should stop. Okay, do you understand? Oh, Anna, no problem. <laughs> no problem. We, we just started reading, um, but we've already gone through uh, everything about the vocabulary. Let me go back once really quick. So we learned razor's edge, razor's edge. So you'll often hear in the media now, the election is on a razor's edge. And that means it's in a dangerous position or in a position in which two different things are carefully balanced. So Biden or Trump, Biden or Trump, okay? To plow through something means uh, to finish doing something that takes a long time and is difficult. So plow through your homework. It might take a long time and it might be difficult, but you need to get through, you need to do it. Too close to call means it is not possible to predict who will win because it seems likely to be won by only a very small margin. So right now the race, the election is too close to call because we don't know who will win. And when they win, it'll be by very small points. Electoral votes, um, these are votes cast by a member of the electoral college. So each state has a certain number of points, um, which are electoral votes. Then uh, we need uh, for the president, um, to become president, you need 270 electoral votes, okay? Legitimate means by the book. It means conforming to the law or to the rules. And tally means calculating or counting the total number of something. So let me just reread this and let me answer your questions, okay? The presidential race between President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden remains on a razor's edge. So this means the, the race for president is on a razor's edge. It's balancing back and forth. A razor is very thin and very sharp. We don't know which way it's gonna go. As election workers in key states, these are the important states that we need to count, uh, continue to plow through mail-in ballots. Ballots are the votes. So a lot of people had to mail in their votes, mail in their ballots. So election workers have to count them. So it takes a long time and it's quite difficult and tiring. So we can say they need to plow through mail-in ballots. It's going to take a long time, but they need to do all of them. Then it's still too close to call a winner. So we don't know who is going to win. As Joe Biden is nearing 270 electoral votes, these are the points that uh, the president needs, um, President Trump claims, so he's saying, uh, he's wanting some legitimate tallying efforts should stop. So he claims some legitimate tallying efforts should stop. So remember, tallying means counting. What are we counting? We're counting the mail-in ballots. And we're using the adjective legitimate because legitimate tallying efforts, right? So legitimate means by the book. So even though um, these counting of the ballots is legitimate, it is correct, it is following the rules, President Trump is claiming these efforts should stop, okay? So is this understandable? Do you have any questions? Okay. Uh, 
Right. Anna says, um, but the judges didn't allow to stop the counting. Yeah, as far as I know, I think the counting is still continuing. Um, Ali asked, mail-in ballots meaning? So mail-in ballots, the ballot is the vote, the vote. So um, for example, I live in Japan. So I requested a ballot. A ballot is just a paper and it says, Donald Trump or Joe Biden. And I had to vote on a ballot. And then I had to send my ballot by mail, through the mail. So mail in means you sent it in, in the mail, okay? Okay, let's see. So, uh, Legitimate telling should be stopped. Doesn't don, don, doesn't Trump want elections to proceed by the book? Mm, I think he doesn't want it to proceed by the book, actually. Um, I think what he's requesting is very out of the ordinary. It's not by the book. Okay. Anna said, for example, uh, PA now have 20 electoral votes. Yes. But Nevada only has six electoral votes. The electoral votes depend on the population of that state. Yes, very, very good. Um, I think Anna knows a lot about the U.S. election. Yeah, every state has a different number of electoral votes. For example, my hometown is in Wisconsin. Wisconsin has 10 electoral votes. So um, Wisconsin was called for Biden. Biden won Wisconsin, so he got 10 points, 10 electoral votes. Okay. Uh, so uh, Devaska said, too close to call and difficult. Are they the same? So difficult just means something is hard, right? Um, too close to call, um, especially specifically refers to winning something. So, um, ah, oh, sorry, here's your, uh, you, you restated your question. Um, difficult to announce. So difficult, yeah, it could be difficult to announce. Um, too close to call means that you still don't know who the winner is, who is going to win. So you can't predict who's going to win. I hope that was understandable. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Which one is correct to write? Sorry, which are you referring to? Yes, um, that is not legal when he tried to stop counting the votes. Yes, um, I... I don't really understand why he wants to stop the legitimate um, count tallying because if he stopped it now, he would lose because he's behind. Um, yes, very good. Difficult to determine. Excellent. Good job. Okay. So does everyone understand this article? Was it okay? Understandable. Do you have any questions on it? Um, if you do, you can ask me. Uh, okay, so I'm going to switch back to just me. Hello. <laughs> and then I'll answer some of your questions. Okay. Uh, so uh, Ali asked, which one is correct? She provided me some grammar lessons or she provided me with some grammar lessons. Number two is correct. She provided me with something. So provide someone with something. Um, she provided me with some information, for example. Okay, very, very good. Ah, what is the difference between read and read out? Um, so if you read something, uh, you can read in your head, right? Mm -hmm. So if I read something on my phone, it doesn't mean I speak it out, right? So if you read something out loud or read something aloud, you're using your voice to read, okay? Yes, yes, only when he has the proof, proof, um, proof is uncountable. When he has the proof of cheating, 
uh, on counting, then you can stop it. That is correct. I don't think I don't think he has any proof right now. We'll see. Oh my goodness. Okay, very good. So I hope these were understandable. I'll put them back on the screen one more time. So here. Okay, so um, remember, um, razor's edge is something is balancing between two things. It could be a little bit of a dangerous situation. Plow through to finish doing something that takes a long time and is difficult. This one we often use in our daily life, right? Um, so if you, uh, for example, if you plow through uh, some food, that means you, you eat it all up or you have to plow through some homework, you have to plow through your taxes, something that takes a long time and is difficult. And then too close to call, we also use this whenever we're talking about a race. It is very hard to predict who will win. Um, electoral votes, this is um, very much only for the election, <laughs> okay? And then legitimate, legitimate means by the book, conforming to the law or to rules. This one you'll often hear um, uh, in, uh, in different situations, maybe not in daily conversation, but it's a good one to know. And last one, tally, tally, or sometimes we say tally up means counting the total number of something. So let me tally up how many, uh, how many coffees we have left in the back room, for example. Okay, very, very good. Ah, okay, okay. Um, let's see, I'll answer some questions. Okay, so really quick, what does changes in demographic mean? So that is a very, very good question. Your, your demographic are the people who you are targeting targeting, right? So a uh, change in demographic could mean that people's interests have changed. Or if we're talking about the election, maybe um, uh, I think they were talking about uh, Joe Biden and a demographic change um, in that more suburban uh, women were going out and voting more white, uh, maybe middle class women were supporting uh, Joe Biden, which usually white middle class, uh, they might support Trump, right? They might be Republican. So change in a demographic means people's, uh, people's um, target is changing, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. What is the difference between hardly had or barely had? Um, so hardly, hardly. Uh, both mean a little, right? Both mean a little. So I hardly had anything to eat today. It means I ate only a little bit. And if you say I barely had anything to eat today, it, it means the same thing. I think there is um, a significant difference somewhere. Barely, hardly. I can't think of a good example off the top of my head. Um, they mean just or not very much, okay? So uh, for example, um, oops, I, I wouldn't say I barely, passed the exam though. I wouldn't say I barely passed, or sorry, sorry, I would say I barely passed the exam. I wouldn't say I hardly passed the exam. So there is somewhat of a difference, right? Okay, oops. Uh, what does there will be a swing away mean? So a, uh, maybe if you're talking about the election, um, there are some swing states. So sometimes they're uh, Republican, sometimes they're Democratic. Um, they swing back and forth. So uh, for example, uh, in the election this time in Ohio, Ohio at first looked like it was going to go to 
uh, Joe Biden. It was blue in the beginning. However, as more votes came in, as they tallied up more votes, it swung, it swung away to uh, the Republican Party. It went towards Trump. It went red. Okay. Ah, okay. What does only 700 votes down mean? So uh, if you mean uh, there are only 700 votes down, um, it means that you've only counted or completed 700 votes. Um, or if you're saying there's only, um, we're down to 700 votes, that means there's 700 votes left. Okay, so only 700 votes down means only 700 votes completed. Uh, down to 700 votes means there's only 700 left, okay? So it's a the opposite meaning, okay? Uh, let's see, let's see. Yes, yes, good job, Anna. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, so, oh, many, many, many questions. Oh, uh, what country are you in? Uh, your election is near? Are you voting? Do you get to vote in your election? Okay. Ah, Stana said she heard them or he or she <laughs> heard them on the news. Ah, I see. Yeah, so it's probably referring to the election. Very good. Ah, uh, sniffling a bit of blue wave or sniffing. Is it sniffing? I can't see. <laughs> My screen is too small. Sniffing a bit of the blue wave. So um, when they're talking about the blue wave or the red wave, um, they're talking about blue means um, Biden. It's the Democratic Party. Red is Trump, the Republican Party. So on the map, you can see there's blue states and there's red states. And if there is a blue wave, that means um, maybe blue is going to overtake some states, okay? Uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, so many comments. Okay. Uh, oh, Myanmar. Myanmar um, election voting is coming up on November 8th. Wow, it's very similar, very close. Yes, blue wave mean the win for the Democratic Party. Yeah, if it's a blue wave, it means that Democratic Party is going to take over a lot of states. Very, very good. Okay, so um, thank you guys so much. Oh my gosh, we've been on for 33 minutes. Oh, so long. Okay, so thank you guys for um, watching this live stream. Thank you so much for participating. Um, I hope that you can remember these words. And um, if, you, if you see any other um, words on the news or something re regarding the election, um, you can write them in the comments and I will try and uh, reply to you if you have a question, okay? So if you hear or see something in the news and you're like, what does that mean? Um, for example, uh, purple state, purple state means that it's going back and forth between red and blue, right? So if you mix red and blue together, you get purple. So you might hear things like that on the news, a purple state. What is a purple state? It's one that is undecided. It's on the razor's edge, okay? Very, very good. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for sharing it with your friends also. That's awesome that we are, are growing our community, okay? So thank you so much, and I will see you guys for our next lesson. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. I will see you, and maybe we can talk about who is the actual winner of the election next time. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. How are you today? Um, before we start the lesson, let me just say, uh, if you haven't already, uh, please go over and subscribe to the YouTube channel because um, I'm uploading new lessons every day over there. And uh, let's see, I'm gonna send you the link real quick. Um, so if you 
if you are over on Facebook and you haven't um, subscribed to the YouTube channel, go ahead and do that because new lessons are going up every day. And uh, if you could please like this video, share it with your friends who are also learning English. That is awesome too. Hello everyone. Hello from Mexico, Sudan, Pakistan. Wow, hello, hello. How is everybody doing today? Oh, I'm glad you guys are good. Okay, very nice. So uh, now that we have some people in the chat, um, that is awesome. We can start the lesson. Good morning from Morocco. I'm doing well. How are you? Hello, hello. Okay, so we're going to get the lesson started. So um, this is going to be a quick grammar lesson. So some of you may already know this. Uh, some of you might need some help. It might be a little bit difficult, but we're going to go through it together. Okay. Hello from Dubai. Hello, hello. Okay, if you want to see all of the lessons, um, uh, you can go over to the YouTube channel. All right. Hello from Sri Lanka. Oh, hello, Devashka. Hello, hello. Oh, okay. No problem if you're just coming in uh, right now. We haven't started yet, so we're going to start right now, okay? So um, we have these two, okay? So I know this is... Um, uh, a lot of students can get these confused, but don't worry. We're gonna we're gonna master them today. Okay, so we have used to, used to, versus be used to, be used to. All right. So um, first, let's go over the pronunciation. Right. So U S E D. So uh, if if you um, if you take off the D it's pronounced use, use, right? Like use a pen, use a marker, use something, use a computer. When we add the D um, for something that you have used already, we're gonna say used, it's gonna have a Z sound. So like I used my phone, I used my phone. However, here the pronunciation changes a little bit. Okay, used to, used to. So this D kind of disappears because it's followed by a T, used to. And it's not gonna be a Z sound, it's gonna be an S sound. Used to, I used to, okay? Then here, be used to, be used to. So it sounds like U-S-E, use, 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 or use. But uh, there is actually a D here, okay? Used to, used to. It's just uh, difficult to say used, used to. <laughs> it's very difficult. So we just cancel out the D sound, used to, used to. All right, so we have used to versus be used to. Oh, Tete Win, hello. Uh, hello from Myanmar, hello from France, Bangladesh, wow. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, used to versus be used to. Do you guys know the difference? Is it very clear? Do you understand the difference? Um, if not, we're gonna go over them, so don't worry. Let me block the sun here. Okay, so let's bring out the big whiteboard. All right, so um, we have the grammar structure here. So used to, used to. When we use used to, we're gonna have a subject plus used, used, plus the infinitive. So infinitive just means to plus the base form of the verb. So like to walk, to drink, to run, okay? And what this means is uh, we use it to talk about the past, something that's no longer true. For example, a routine in the past, okay? So if I make a very simple sentence, I would say, uh, I used to eat cereal every day. I used to eat cereal every day, okay? I used to eat cereal. It means now I don't eat cereal every day. This is no longer true. It is in the past. So something that happened in the past and now it's still in the past. It stays in the past, okay? When we use to be used to, 
we're going to use a subject plus to be. So it's going to change. So for example, I am, we are, he is. Okay. And then used to followed by a gerund or a noun, or you could put a pronoun here. So a gerund, remember, is the verb plus ing, walking, running, drinking, okay? Or a noun, which is a person, place, or thing. Or you could use a pronoun, him, her, they, them, or them, okay? All right. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I will get that. Aliawan, can you please remind me to answer that question a little bit later? Okay, so used to, to be used to. Let's try, let's try. So number one and number two, I think are a little bit easy because uh, we have the mm -hmm. verb here. Okay, so I mm, live in the US, but now I live in Japan. I used to, or be used to, which one should we use? I mm, live in the US, but now I live in Japan. Oh, very good. Excellent. Uh, Mohammed, very good. Sadia, excellent. Aliawan, very good. Oh, this is a good question. Are you in the USA? Uh, I am not in the USA right now. I used to live in the USA. I am in Japan right now. Oh, very good. Josh, Josh, Devashka, Ted, Ted, Win. Very good. Okay, so the correct answer is I used to. So this actually applies to me. <laughs> I, I used to live in the US but now I live in Japan. I used to, used to, pay attention to the pronunciation. I used to live in the US, but now I live in Japan. So this is something that is in the past, no longer true, okay? Let's uh, try number two. We, something, 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 living here. So if you see this, living. We have ing, so this is gonna be a gerund, okay? How about number two? We, so we something living here. Oh, Ted Tetwin, very good. Oh, very good, very good. Yes. Okay, I see a lot of good answers. I see a lot of almost correct answers okay so be careful we have the word to be used to so subject plus to be but it's going to change this to be is going to change uh depending on the subject right so the subject is we so the to be verb we're going to change to we are we are we are used to and then we have a gerund. We are used to living here. So we've become accustomed to something. I think I forgot to mention that. Uh, to be used to means accustomed to. It becomes normal. It becomes regular. Um, it's not new anymore. It's just part of your daily life. So for example, uh, uh, last year I used to I used to sleep in until 10 o'clock. Last year, I used to sleep in until 8 or 10 o'clock, right? It's in the past, a routine in the past. Now, I am used to waking up at 6 a.m. It's become normal for me to wake up at 6 a.m. I am accustomed to it, okay? Is it understandable so far? You guys are doing very well. Let's try numbers three and four, three and four. So I used to something. So you guys can fill in the blanks. So I used to, hmm, something in the past, something that's no longer true. And it could be like a routine in the past. Oh, very good. I used to 
Drink coffee in the morning. Very good. So drink, we are using the infinitive. So I used to drink coffee in the morning. Very good. I used to play football every day. Excellent, excellent, good. I used to travel alone, very good. Now you travel with somebody. I used to raise a dog, excellent, excellent. Uh, I used to take exercise when I was living in Karachi. Oh, interesting. So uh, do you mean you used to take an exercise class? So you could say, I used to take an exercise class would be correct. Very good. Otherwise, I used to exercise. You can use exercise in the infinitive to exercise. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I used to smoke. Very good. So now you don't smoke anymore. You quit. Did you quit cold turkey? If you don't know what cold turkey means, you can uh, find that on the YouTube channel. Ah, very good. I used to study English in London. Excellent. Okay, excellent, you guys. Very good. Oh, I used to wake up late. Very good. Now you wake up early. Okay. Oh, very good. So I used to, and you said drinking tea. So be careful. For I used to, something in the past, um, we're going to use the infinitive. Only for to be used to, we're going to use a gerund, okay? So I-N-G is a gerund. So for used to, I used to drink tea is correct. Very good. All right. Oh, I used to work out every day. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So um, I'm going to put for number three, I used to, I liked that one, um, I used to, I used to travel alone. That was an interesting one. I used to travel alone. Do you guys travel alone or do you travel with other people? Maybe nobody's traveling right now, <laughs> still. <laughs> okay, very good. How about number four? I am used to something. I am used to, so something ha you have become accustomed to, accustomed to something. I used to eat bananas, oh, very good. Okay, I am used to, oh, I saw a good one. Oh, yes, I am used to drinking green tea now. Excellent, very good, I'm used to drinking green tea. Okay. Uh, very good. I'm I'm used to Japanese food. Very good. I'm used to Japanese food. Ja Japanese food. Sorry, and he used a noun here. I'm used to Japanese food. Very good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh no, <laughs> my teacher used to ignore me. Oh no, I hope I didn't ignore you. Okay, that was for maybe the first one. Good. All right. Oh, it's okay if you're late. Don't worry. We're talking about used to versus to be used to. Okay. Very good. How about number four? I am used to. So something that you are um, accustomed to now. Oh, so if you say I am used to work. So work is a verb, right? So for I am used to, to be used to, accustomed, we need to use a gerund or a noun or a pronoun here. So I, you could say, I am used to working with ing. That would be correct. Very good. I am used to staying alone. Okay, very good. I, I, I hope you are, uh, you can invite some friends over sometime soon. It's been a hard year. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I saw a good one. I'm used to cooking. Very, very good. Uh, I'm used to driving a left-hand drive vehicle here in Canada. Earlier, I used to drive a right-hand drive car. Ah, okay. So usually when we describe um, the, the kind of cars, um, a shorter way to explain it might be like, 
I'm used to driving uh, whichever way on the left. I'm used to driving on the left here in Canada. Earlier, I used to drive on the right. Um, that's a simple way to put it. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure if that's correct. Drive left, drive right, uh, which country is which. I get confused all the time. So in, in Japan, uh, in America, I, I'm used to driving on the right. And in Japan, I am not used to driving on the left. Very confusing, right? Okay. I am used to staying home to prevent COVID-19. Yes, very good. I think we're all getting used to that one. Okay. Oh, I saw, let's see, let me scroll up one. Uh, okay, I saw, I saw some. Oh my goodness, there's so many comments. What is the difference between be used to and get used to? I'll, I'll answer that in just a second, okay? Very, very good. Oh, I saw um, Ted Ted Wynn also said one, but I lost her comment. Oh no. Ah, I am used to eat vegetables. So very good, but be careful again to be used to. I am, I am, I am used to gerund or noun. So I am used to eating vegetables would be correct. I'm used to eating vegetables. Very good. Okay, excellent. So I'm gonna write, uh, I am used to, uh, I'm used to, let's say, driving on the left. I'm used to driving on the left. Okay, there we go. I'm used to driving on the left. So that means that uh, on the street, you're driving on the left-hand side, left-hand side, okay? I am used to driving on the left means you are accustomed to driving on the left. It's not new or strange, it's very normal. You're accustomed to it, okay? Very, very good. So I saw some questions. Um, okay, kindly repeat again. Okay, so just remember used to, we use a subject plus use, used plus infinitive. So to something, to eat, to drink. Okay, and that is talking about the past, something that's no longer true, like a routine in the past. Uh, I used to wake up at 10 o'clock every morning, not anymore. Then to be used to, subject plus to be. So this is gonna change with the subject. I am, we are, he, she is. Then used to, then here we need a gerund, which is a verb plus ing walking, talking, jumping, eating, or a noun. For example, I am, I am used to Japanese food. Okay, very good. And that means you are accustomed to something. You are, something becomes very normal. Okay, so I saw a question, um, uh, to be used to versus get used to. So when you use to be used to, Already you are accustomed to something. I am used to speaking English. So already, no problem. I'm accustomed to it, all right? It's normal. But if something is still a little bit new, you are still in the process of becoming accustomed to something, you could say, I'm getting used to something. So uh, if you are speaking English uh, for just a few months, you could say, I'm getting used to speaking English. <clears throat> I'm getting used to speaking English. <laughs> Excuse me. Getting used to do something. Speaking English. I'm getting used to uh, Japanese food, okay? That means you are not accustomed yet, but you are still in the process. It's becoming normal. It's becoming usual. <coughs> okay. Ah, the meaning of used to. Oops, 
I'm getting used to I'm I'm used to getting up early in the morning. Yes, that's very good. <laughs> Excuse me, I have a cough all of a sudden. Uh, can we use simple past tense to convey the meaning of used to? So are you talking about this one or this one? So simple past, for example, um, I I used to I used to wake up at 6 a.m. If you said, I woke up at 6 a.m., uh, I woke up at 6 a.m. sounds like maybe you just did it once. If you say, I used to wake up at 6 a.m., it sounds like it was every day. It was a routine. So I used to wake up at 6 a.m. every day. Okay, you could say, I woke up at 6 a.m. every day, but we're not sure if that's just like a specific for like a specific time or uh, like for just a week or a day. So used to implies it was like a routine of yours in the past. Okay. Very good. All right. <laughs> Cough. Oh no. Yeah. I think it's just because I, I ate some lunch and it's still, still a little bit stuck in my throat. So I have a little bit of a cough, but I'm okay. All right. So um, that's going to be it for today's lesson. Uh, if you want to have another lesson later today, oh my gosh, the sun, I need to find a better place to sit. Uh, if you guys want a, another lesson today, there will be one on the YouTube channel, okay? Later today, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, capital versus capital. So stay tuned for that, okay? So go and subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the Facebook page, like this video, Share it with your friends and I will see you in a little bit on YouTube. All right. Thank you so much for watching. If you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Okay. Thank you so much and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi guys. Um, this is an impromptu live stream um, because I've been sick and um, I wanted to get a video out today but it looks like we're just gonna do a live stream. Um, I don't think anyone's prepared to come on and watch me right now since it's a really weird time. It's like the middle of the afternoon on a Tuesday. So I'm just gonna let this stay up for you guys. So no worries. Um, I'm just gonna do the lesson as if I am alone. So if anyone actually comes and joins, that's cool too. But since this is a random time, um, and I just actually got off of a Facebook live stream. So if you're not um, on Facebook, um, if you haven't liked the Facebook page yet, please do that. It's in the description box and I think it's linked like all over my channel. It's the same name as this channel, Breeze Practical English. So if you just search it, you can find it. Um, I do live streams almost daily over there. So, and we have a big community and it's really, really fun. Okay. So anyway, as I was saying, we're going to look at some business acronyms. Oh, Anna, hello. Thank you for joining. <laughs> Hi. I know you just um, watched the, the Facebook live stream, but thank you for watching. So it's going to be um, quick and short, so you don't have to waste a lot of time. But we're going to look at business acronyms today. And if you don't know what an acronym is, it is um, a way that we shorten words. Oh, hello, Claudia. Oh, my gosh. Thank you guys for joining over here. They were just in the Facebook live stream. And uh, yeah, they participate a lot. So they're like awesome students. So. We're going to look at business acronyms. Do you guys know what acronyms are? So acronyms are a way that we shorten um, like longer words or like a few words. We shorten them. So like, uh, for example, what's a good one? If you know, um, by the way, we can shorten it to B T W right? By the way, this is an acronym, an acronym. So in business, 
Oh my gosh, we use so many acronyms, right? So some of them you might know and some of them might be new. So we're just gonna take a look at some of them and explain um, what they mean and how to use them, okay? Oh, hello, Ma is your name pronounced Ma Mahmood? Is that, am I pronouncing that right, Mahmood? Hello, thank you guys. Oh my gosh, I have the best students. <laughs> okay. So we're looking at business acronyms, business acronyms. So it's going to be a short and sweet lesson. Um, how many of you are learning business English or learning English for business? Um, if you if you want to to let me know, that would be awesome. You can write it in the comments. OK, even either in the live stream or later. OK, so OK. So I have five business acronyms that we're gonna look at today. So here they are. I haven't written what they actually stand for yet. Oh, hello from Myanmar, hello. Is your name pronounced Win Ung? Win Ung? Thank you for joining at this random time. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna learn these five business acronyms. So the first one, maybe you guys know this one, CEO, CEO. Does anyone know what CEO stands for? So CEO means the highest ranking executive in an office. Can you see that? The highest ranking executive in an office. So it's kind of the top, the top guy or woman, right? So CEO. So if we, if we look at these letters, C-E-O, does anybody know what those letters actually mean? We, we often hear like C-E-O, C-E-O. Oh, hello, Gonzalo. Okay, so if you don't know what C-E-O means, I'm gonna open up my marker. It actually means, ooh, I'll write it down for you guys. Does anyone have a guess? CEO. Anybody know what the C stands for? Oh, very good. Chief of office. Very, very close. Yes. Oh, very good. Very, very close, Anna. Yes. So CEO is chief executive officer. Chief Executive Officer. So the C, the E, the O. So it's kind of like the top person, right? Very good. You guys are so smart. Okay. How about CFO? CFO. So this is another position title in a company. We have the CEO and we have the CFO. So maybe there's a hint down here. So if we look at what it means, uh, has primary responsibility for managing the company's finances. Here's a big hint, finances, right? Has primary responsibility for managing the company's finances. So what do you think CFO means? If you know what CEO means. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Not, not that C word. <laughs> Very good. But we would say chief is for the C. Chief, is it financial? Yes, I wrote it down earlier. Even I get tripped up sometimes. I wasn't sure if it was finance or financial. Chief financial officer. Oops. Okay, chief financial officer. So you can imagine in a company, CEO and a CFO are kind of at the top, right? The CEO is the top. The CFO is also very, very important. Um, I don't know if you guys uh, are interested in becoming CEOs or CFOs in the future, but it's quite important to know what they stand for if you'll be working in some kind of office. 
Okay, the next three I think, well the next two actually I think are pretty easy. We have ASAP or A-S-A-P. So we can say it two ways. We can say A-S-A-P or we can just say ASAP. And that means right away. Yes, Anna, very good. Oh, very good for both of them. Yes, ASAP. As soon as possible. So if you see this, oops, I wrote possible, possible. Very good, as soon as possible, as soon as possible. So if you get an email that says reply ASAP, it means immediately, as soon as possible. So remember you can say ASAP or ASAP, ASAP, okay? Very good. So we only have two more. Yeah, Anna is very smart. <laughs> okay, we have just two more. So down here we have A-T-T-N, A-T-T-N. Can you see that? There we go, A-T-T-N. And it kind of means notice this, notice this. Does anyone have any idea A-T-T-N? So this one is a little bit different than the other acronyms. This is actually just one word. This is just one word. It's not a word that starts with A, a word that starts with T, another word that starts with T, another word that ends with N. Um, this is one word. What do you think it is? Can you guys see me okay? It looks blurry on my, on my um, screen. Okay, if nobody knows, I'm gonna write it here, or you can write it in the comments if you're watching this later. Oh, Anna, very good, yes. It means attention, attention. So a lot of times, emails will have A-T-T-N written on them. Yes, Anna's a smart cookie, that's true. So if you see an email that says A-T-T-N in the um, subject line, that means you should look at it right away. You should look at it ASAP because they need your attention. It's kind of like a big warning thing, warning signal. Look at this email, look right now. Okay, A-T-T-N, attention. And the last one is a little bit difficult, but it's A-G-I. AGI, and if you're working, um, if you're working in the U.S., you might hear this a lot. AGI. Does anyone know what AGI means? Have you ever heard that acronym before? So we have down here income minus adjustments, right? M income minus adjustments. So this one is a little bit difficult, but it means uh, maybe I should just give it to you because it's a little bit difficult. Adjusted gross income. So adjusted gross income. Oh, Saya, hello. Are you in Japan? I'm also in Japan. Hello. Okay. So AGI means adjusted gross income. And what does that mean? So gross income means your total income, right? All of the money that you get is your gross income. Well, not the money that you get, but the money that you earn is your gross income, the total. So adjusted gross income is your income, your gross income, minus adjustments. So like in the US, maybe people have student loans. So your student loan interest, um, you might have to subtract your income minus the student loan interest and that will be your AGI, your adjusted gross income. Or uh, if you have to pay alimony, which is, uh, if you were married before, but you're divorced and you have to pay money to, to your ex-spouse, that is called alimony. So you might have your gross income minus uh, what you have to pay 
And that is going to be your AGI, your adjusted gross income. So this comes in handy when you're talking about finances. Okay, so very good. I'll say them one more time. We have a CEO, which is Chief Executive Officer, CFO, Chief Financial Officer. So these are uh, two top ranking um, positions, right? ASAP or ASAP, as soon as possible. ATTN, attention, notice this. And AGI, your adjusted gross income, okay? So your income that you earn, minus all the things that you have to pay like um you know student loan uh interest and alimony things like that okay i hope these were helpful um please let me know if you're learning business english and let me know what kind of english that you guys want to see uh next time thank you guys so much for watching i can't believe that um i had some viewers over here <laughs> I thought everybody was going to be tired, but thank you guys for watching. Okay, so please let me know what kind of English you guys want to study. And because uh, I do a lot of the Facebook lives and um, plus I want to do YouTube lives. So I, I want to make them a little bit different. So if you want more advanced English over here, that might be one thing. Oh, can I speak Japanese? Yes, I can. I have been living in Japan for mm, 13 years. It's a long, long time. <laughs> can you speak Japanese, Win? That'd be interesting if other people could speak Japanese here. I have um, a channel uh, for my for my Japanese um, my Japanese viewers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Mahmoud wants to work on speaking. So maybe you think more um, like speaking, speaking tests or like shadowing or something like that, maybe. Oh, Wynn can speak Japanese a little bit. Awesome. Yeah, I know uh, I studied I studied Japanese, so I know how hard it is to learn a foreign language. Oh, thank you so much, Anna. Okay. Oh, I'm out of breath now. <laughs> I've been sick, so I'm a little bit tired today. But thank you so much for watching. Okay. So um, if you have any suggestions for future lessons, you can leave them in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you guys tomorrow on Facebook for another live stream. Okay. I will try to think of some good lessons for you, Mahmoud. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Win. Thank you, Saya. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Mahmoud. Uh, who else is in here? Uh, thank you, Gonzalo. Thank you, Claudia. You guys are awesome. Okay. I hope that was everybody. I got everybody. Okay. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys tomorrow for tomorrow's lesson. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Arigato ne. Bye bye. Hello, students. Hello, hello. How is everybody? Oh, really quick. Um, let me just see. I'm going to put something in the chat. Oh, let's see if I can do it. Uh, da -da -da -da. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so I'm just going to share in the chat the YouTube channel in case anyone is not subscribed yet because um, I will be posting a lot, a lot of lessons over there um, coming up. So, oops, let me just... Uh, okay, I'm going to post. So... Oh, hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello from Philippines. Hello, hello. Hello, Gerardo. Hello, Hector. Hello, Wasim. Hello, Jidanang. Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, Ravi. Yes, Bert, it is very live. Bert said, is it really live? Yes, it is live. I'm live right now. Hello. So 
Um, I'm going to put in the uh, chat um, the YouTube channel. So if you guys are not subscribed to the YouTube channel, uh, please um, subscribe if you can, because I will be posting a lot more over on the YouTube channel coming up. And I'll be doing a lot of live um, videos also. So yeah, if you can, um, yeah, share it with your friends. Hello, Omer. I've been doing well. Hello, Christian. Hello, hello. How is everybody doing? I feel very <laughs> warm inside my house right now. I think the sun is like coming through and it's making me feel very, very warm. Okay. Okay, so, uh, oh, really quick, I'll answer a question from Devaska. So coming up and near, are they the same? Really quick, I'll answer this question. So um, they can be similar. So if something is coming up, it means like an event in the future is soon, soon. It is coming up. Um, Near, near could also mean about location and place. Like I put my bag near the door. That is a physically near, physically close. Okay. So coming up, you cannot use in that sense. Okay. Uh, you could say like um, the event is nearing. It is nearing the event. Um, as in coming up, but I think coming up is used a lot more frequently, at least in America, for um, about time, right? Or soon, coming up or coming up soon. Okay, so hello, everyone. Hello, hello. So we're going to jump into the lesson. So I asked you guys on the Facebook page, um, what kind of lessons you want to see from me? And I got a lot of, I got a lot of uh, very good uh, suggestions. And I got um, a lot of people asking for different things. So I'll try my best to do everything that you guys ask. So I saw some people were asking for conditionals. People want to know conditionals. So we're going to do conditionals this week. And we're going to start with the zero conditional today. We're learning the zero conditional. Does anyone know what the zero conditional is? Zero conditional. This is, I think all of the conditionals um, are very, very useful for speaking because we use these a lot. Um, so we're going to use the zero conditional today. Oh, Oh, that's great. And thank you. I, I think your name is TJ. Okay, very good. So we're going to learn the zero conditional. Um, so if you know already what the zero conditional is, don't worry, stay tuned because um, I think it's good to refresh always. So Bert said that they've never heard of the zero conditional before. Okay, that's good. So we're going to learn something new for some people. So what the zero conditional is, you might, you, you probably know it when I say it, but it's when we use it when you are stating a true fact, something that is always true. So like general information or a true fact. Um, usually we use the if, if plus present, uh, present tense, and then another present tense clause. Okay. So I'm going to show it to you and I have some examples and then um, I have three exercises that you can um, participate and you can answer those too. Okay. So if or when plus the present simple plus another present simple clause. Okay. And that the second present simple clause is usually the result of the if present simple clause. Does that make sense? I know it's really hard to understand if I just say it. So I, I wrote it down. So let me scooch over here. Okay. Yes. All right. So I'll make it so you guys can see. So we have the zero conditional, the zero conditional. 
So we have if or when, a lot of the times we use when, like when I talk, I often use when. If or when plus present simple and then another present simple clause. So we use it to talk about general truths or facts. So things that are always, always true, okay? So we have um, several conditionals, right? We have the first conditional, the second conditional, the third conditional. So we're going to just focus on the zero conditional today, okay? So remember the present simple, the present simple, okay? So let's try, let's look at number one. I gave some examples. So um, as you can see, the blue part is the if or when clause. So it can come at the beginning of your sentence or you can put it at the end, okay? So it doesn't matter where you put it, okay? Hello from Brazil. Okay, so let's try. Uh, uh, okay, so number one, let's look at this one. If I eat spicy food, if I eat spicy food, so I eat, eat is present simple, right? I get heartburn i get heartburn do you guys know what heartburn is do you guys know what heartburn is so um it, for different people different things trigger it right but it's when you eat something and then you kind of have the acid coming back from your stomach and then it kind of burns right here after you eat something so for some people if i eat spicy food i get heartburn oh right do you guys get heartburn? <laughs> if so, what, what do you eat that gives you heartburn? So if I eat spicy food, I get heartburn. I love spicy food though, I love it. Okay, hello, welcome, welcome. Okay, let's try number two. Um, I, I miss the bus, I miss the bus if I wake up late, okay? I miss the bus if I wake up late. So here, the if clause is coming at the end, that is totally fine, we could switch it. We could say, if I wake up late, I miss the bus. So this is always true. So this person, um, I miss the bus if I wake up late, okay? Oh, very good, very good. Oh, so some people are asking about heartburn. So heartburn means like if you, maybe if you eat something spicy or for some people, if you eat chocolate or for some people red wine, um, when you eat something and then maybe your stomach, I think it's your stomach acid that comes back up a little bit and it burns here. Not everyone gets heartburn. I don't get heartburn, but some people get heartburn when they eat spicy food. Hello, hello, hello from Philippines. Okay, so, so like here, you could say I get heartburn if I eat spicy food or if I get, if I eat spicy food, I get heartburn. I miss the bus if I wake up late. If I wake up late, I miss the bus. Both are okay. Oh, this is a good one. Plants die if you don't water them. Very, very good. Yes. I'll put it up on the screen. Plants die if you don't water them. Very, very good. Okay. The next one, number three. So we can also use when. We can also use when. So I often use when when I use the zero conditional. When I get hungry, or if I get hungry, my stomach hurts. Oh, when I get hungry, my stomach hurts, right? Or my stomach hurts when I get hungry. My stomach hurts if I get hungry, okay? Let's look at number four, and then we'll do the exercises. 
I feel dizzy when I stand up too fast. I feel dizzy when I stand up too fast. Or when I stand up too fast, I feel dizzy. Okay? So, you know, for example, if it's something that always happens to you. Oh, okay. Good question, Devaska. I'll answer it in just a second. Um, when something is always true, you can use this. If it is not always true, so for example, um, when you go to the park, uh, take your take your take your shoes. <laughs> I don't know. When you go to the park, take your shoes. Um, that is not always a true statement, right? You're saying in that case, when you go to the park, don't forget your shoes. Um, so be careful about that. So this is something that is a fact, general truth or fact. Okay. Um, let me answer Devaska's question. So the pronunciation of when and when are they the same? So, okay, let me put this down for a second while I answer. So I am from uh, Wisconsin in the US. I'm from Wisconsin. So my pronunciation of when and when are the same. However, if you go to other parts of the country or other parts of Canada, um, you'll hear people say when and when, when and when. However, my natural accent is to say when and when. <laughs> so it's quite difficult, right? Okay. Okay. So I th do you guys understand the zero uh, conditional so far? Do you guys understand it? Okay. Oh, very, very good. Yes. If she works hard, she succeeds. Very good. Okay. If she works hard, she succeeds. Okay. So uh, if she doesn't work hard, she doesn't succeed. If she works hard, she succeeds. Very, very good. So remember that it needs to be a true statement and we need present simple, present simple. Okay. Oh, don't worry if you're just coming in. I just went over some examples. We're learning the zero conditional, okay? So remember, we need if or when plus present simple and then another present simple clause. Oh, English teachers, don't worry. We're we're uh, we're about fourteen minutes in, but we haven't um, done any of the these exercises yet, okay? So. Okay, I'll go over these one more time and then let's get into the exercises. So if I eat spicy food, I get heartburn. I miss the bus if I wake up late. When I get hungry, my stomach hurts. I feel dizzy when I stand up too fast. Okay, so now that you kind of have an idea of the zero conditional, let's try it with these three exercises. Number five, if I have English class, hmm, so if I have English class, what, what is something that you always do? What is a general truth or general fact? Oh, um, welcome. Arman said it's the first time to join the live. Hello. Okay. Uh, what does dizzy mean? What does dizzy mean? Dizzy means like um, if you stand up too fast, you feel a little bit off balance. Like, oh, my head. That is dizzy. Dizzy. Okay. Oh, very good, Patel. Very good. So Patel's answer for number one is I get up early. So if I have English class, I get up early. That is a very, very good one. Okay. Oh, hello. Don't worry if you're late. So if I have English class, I get up early. So this is a general truth, a general truth. Uh, if I have English class, I get up early. 
Very, very good. Or if I have English class, uh, oh, I study hard. Very good. If I have English class, I study hard. If I have English class, I bring my pen, for example. Okay, very, very good. Okay, awesome. Let's try number six. Who can give us a good example for number six? Okay. Oh, English teachers, uh, if I have English class, I revise my lessons 10 minutes before the class. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Oh, Devaska, very good. If I am hungry, I get angry. <laughs> yeah, we call that hangry, actually. So, if I am hungry, I get angry. Very good. Does anyone else have a time when they get angry? Generally. For example, uh, oh, do you know what stub your toe means? So, if I stub my toe, I get angry. So if you stub your toe, it means like, um, have you ever been walking and then your toe on your foot, your toe hits like a door or a wall, very, very painful. So if I stub my toe, I get angry. Okay. Let's see. Ah, if somebody Ah, if somebody lies to me, I get angry. Good one. When my fry shout me, what is a fry? Is that somebody's name? Ah, yeah. If someone makes noises while I'm working, I get angry. Oh, very good. Yes, yes. Okay, I see a lot of lies. Very good, very good. So, um, for example, oh, or if I get up late, Mohammed said, if I get up late, I get angry. Very good. So, how about let's try um, if I don't eat, I get angry. <laughs> That's a good one, too. If I lose my English class, I get angry. So, maybe if you, if I miss, if I miss my English class, very good. Let's say, um, let's say, if, let's say if you lie to me, let's use this one. Okay. If you lie to me, I get angry. When you lie to me, I get angry. Okay. Very, very good. Ah, oh, friend. Okay. I see what you mean. It was an abbreviation. Okay. Very, very good. Who can give us a really good one for number seven? So, <laughs> when it rains, when it rains. So we have when here. So we just need a present simple clause here. So what generally happens or what is a true fact when it rains? <laughs> I go to the roof to get wet. Wow. <laughs> okay. Ah, yeah, very good, Patel. If someone tells a lie, I get angry. Okay. Oh, I get nervous. Do you get nervous when it rains? Is it for number seven? Ah, I get cold when it rains, when it rains. So remember that it needs to be a general fact, a general fact. So I see some people saying like, uh, you should take an umbrella when it rains. However, when it rains, for example, when it rains, the ground gets wet. What is a general truth when it rains? Or you could say, when it rains, I take my umbrella. I always take my umbrella when it rains. Okay. Oh, I see a lot of people. I get wet when it rains. Trees get wet when it rains. Yes, 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 yes. Very, very good. I take my umbrella when it rains. Yes. Okay. Very good. Let's use that one. Um, I take 
my umbrella. I take my umbrella. Yeah, I take my umbrella when it rains. I was going to write with me, but it doesn't fit. I take my umbrella when it rains. Very good. When it rains, I take my umbrella. I always take my umbrella. It is a general truth or fact about me, right? Okay. So does everyone understand um, the zero conditional? I know it can be confusing with the other conditionals, but we're going to look at the other conditionals this week. So I think it will become a little bit more clear. Oh, very good. When it rains, the road is full of muddy puddles. Very good. Or I stay home when it rains. Very, very good. I feel happy when it rains. Yes, very, very good. Okay, so if you guys have some good examples, um, I can put them on the screen, okay? So remember that um, we need an if clause. If plus, where is that? Where's my plus sign? If plus present simple. And then present. Remember the key is present simple. So I'll put this, I'll put up my um, thing on the screen. So if plus present simple clause, and then another present simple clause, okay? Oh, okay, so very good. I'll, I'll start putting up your uh, examples. Okay. Okay, Devaska. When I get confused my mind, I practice yoga. Okay, very good. I would just say when when I get confused or when my mind is confused, I practice yoga. Very, very good. Okay. So remember if plus present simple and then present simple again. Okay. I feel sad when it rains. Very, very good, Gerardo. Okay. Who else? Oh, okay, very good. If I feel sick, I take some medicine. Okay, very, very good. If I watch your videos, I learn English. Yeah, very good. Okay, let's see, let's see. Ah, okay, very good. If I see a snake, I run away. Yes, yes, very, very good. If I see a snake, I run away. Okay, we can do maybe one or two more. Uh, let's see, remember we need present simple, present simple. Ah, okay, okay. This is a, a good one. I use lip balm when my lips get tight. So we don't say um, usually that our lips get tight, but we say when my lips get tight chapped chapped so like in the cold cold time cold a season maybe your lips get chapped and sometimes they can bleed right that is a good time to use lip balm i use lip balm when my lips get chapped very very good okay let's see if we can do one or two more or if you have a question oh very this is a good one when I go to school, I feel happy. Yes, 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 yes. Very good, very good. Okay. Oh, okay, very, very good. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, if I, or I feel happy when I smell fresh air. Very good, I feel happy when I smell fresh air. If I go to somewhere, I take a phone. Okay, this is a good example. I'm going to just correct it a little bit. So we don't need to when we say somewhere, okay? So if I go somewhere, I take a phone. Or you could say, I take my phone. If you say, I take a phone, maybe it's any phone is okay. 
So if I go somewhere, I take my phone. Okay, very, very good. Uh, let's do one, one more, one more. <laughs> if I miss your class, I feel unhappy. I'm 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 happy that you that you feel that way. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Yes, very I think you guys got it. I see a lot of good, good comments. Very nice. Okay, okay, awesome. Good. So I'm glad you guys can understand the zero conditional. Um, if you have any other questions, you can always leave them in the comments. And um, tomorrow, we'll try the first conditional, okay? So today was the zero conditional. Tomorrow is going to be the first conditional, okay? So I think if we compare zero conditional and the first conditional, it'll make more sense. Okay, so I hope to see you guys tomorrow. And again, if you can, please subscribe to the YouTube channel because I'm going to be putting out a lot of exclusive content on the YouTube channel. And I'm going to be trying to upload as much as possible and going live on YouTube also. Okay, very, very good. Okay, so I will see you guys uh, for our lesson on the first conditional tomorrow. Okay, thank you guys so much for joining me today. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye. Hello, everyone. Hi. How are you doing today? Anything interesting with you? Anything exciting? Okay, we're gonna jump into the lesson. Let me move my microphone. Did that make a weird noise? <laughs> okay, so um, I hope you're ready for today's lesson. But of course, before we get into the lesson, if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel, if you could uh, like this video, share it with a friend who's learning English, um, and you can like me on Facebook, turn on notifications, and then that way you'll know when I go live, when I post new lessons and things like that. Hello, everyone. Very good. Okay. I'm doing very well today. I'm a little bit busy. Uh, usually today is my, my busiest day of the week, so um, I'm uh lucky that i can have this a uh, little bit of time to be on here with you guys hello hello i hope you're all happy and healthy so um we're going to jump into the lesson we are going to be looking at articles today articles so i have a little quiz for you um you can read the sentence and we're going to choose between a and the or no article. So uh, we had some lessons on these in the past before. So um, I hope that you can remember when we use a and the or no article. Okay, are you ready? Let's give it a try. I think there are seven questions today, seven questions. So I'm gonna bring it up really quick. Okay, article or no article, grammar quiz. Very good. So um, let's take a look at the first one, shall we? Okay, number one, question number one. Every day I wake up and go to hmm, school. Hmm, is this one tricky? So we have a, an, the, or no article. Which one do you think? You can write it in the comments. Let's see who can get number one correct. I think we're starting off on an easy one. Let's see if it's easy, okay. Oh, very good, I can't pronounce your name, but I think you, you got it, very good. 
Okay. Oh, we see a little bit. Uh, some some are saying no article. Some are saying the. Okay. Let's see who is correct for number one. The answer is no article. So every day I wake up and go to school. So for school, when we're talking about the the school that you go to, we are not going to say the or a uh, or of course not an, right? So I go to school. Where do you go to school? I go to school every morning at eight o'clock. Okay. So when we're talking about going to school, there is no article. Okay, I go to school. I go to school. So for for this one, it's a little bit special. When we're talking about a school that you don't attend, that you don't go to, you could say the school. The school on the corner is very big. Or um, is there a school in your neighborhood? When you're talking about just a general school, we can use an article, but when we're talking about going to school, you're attending school, we would not use an article. Very good, that's a tricky one. Okay, how about question number two? I bought new sofa last week. This one should be easy. I bought new sofa last week. Do we use a, an, the, or no article? Hmm, which one? Which one do you think? One, two, three, or four? Write your answer in the comments. Let's see if you can get it right. Okay, I see some people answering. Very good. Okay, excellent. So the correct answer for number two is a. Uh, I bought a new sofa last week. Very good. So we would not say the new sofa unless the other person already knows about the sofa, right? Generally speaking, if you suddenly told someone you bought a new sofa, we would use a. I bought a new sofa last week. Very good. That was a pretty easy one. Okay, let's try question number three. Question number three. Are you coming to party tonight? Are you coming to party tonight? A uh, and the or no article? Which one do you think is correct? Oh, I'm glad you're enjoying the class, Muzamil. I hope I pronounced your name okay. Very good. Okay, so I'm seeing a little bit of different answers here. So the correct answer for number three is the, the. Are you coming to the party tonight? So if there is a party tonight and someone is asking if you're coming, probably there is only one party. There is only one party. And that person knows what party you're talking about. So are you coming to the party tonight? If there were multiple parties, like four parties or five parties, uh, then we could say, are you coming to a party tonight? one of them, but that's quite unusual, right? So we would stick with the, very good. Yes, if party is used as a verb, we don't use an article, that's correct. Okay, but here it is a noun. So question number four, easy one, easy. Is that empty glass? Is that Empty glass, hmm, a, uh, an, the, or no article, hmm. Oh, Danielle, very good. I see your answer. 
Meme. Good job, Abdo English. Hello, hello, Mohammed. Very good. Okay. So number four, is that empty glass? Let's see. Ta-da! Of course it is Anne. This one should be the easiest one. Is that an empty glass? Is that an empty glass? Or is it a full glass? So empty starts with an E, which is a vowel. It has a vowel sound. So we're going to use an. Very good. Okay. Question number five. Let's check it out. Okay. Another tricky one. I think it's time to go to bed. Hmm. I think it's time to go to hmm, bed. A bed, an bed, the bed, no article. Hmm. Okay. Very good. So I think it's time to go to hmm, bed. All right. I see a variety of answers. A lot of people are saying three or four. Some people are saying one. Okay. So let's see. The answer to question number five is no article. No article. So just like school, just like school, uh, we don't use an article when we're saying we are going to bed. Go to bed means that you are going to sleep, okay? So the same with I'm going to school, I'm going to bed. What time do you go to school? What time do you go to bed? Okay, there is no article. If you are talking about just a physical bed, I saw a bed in the store, okay? You can use a bed. Or when you make the bed, make the bed, we use the, okay? But for this one, I think it's time to go to bed. No article, very good. Question number six. Some people think coffee is good for you. Some people think coffee is good for you. A coffee, an coffee, the coffee, no article. Hmm. Okay. This one is also a little bit tricky, I must say. Okay. Oh, very good. I see some answers. Okay. The answer to number six is no article. No article. So some people think coffee is good for you. Coffee here is an uncountable noun. So like water, coffee, liquids. Liquids are uncountable nouns. Um, however, when we say a cup of coffee, a bottle of water, we can use articles. The cup of coffee, the water bottle. Um, but here, this is generally speaking about coffee in general. So all coffee. So there is no article. Some people think coffee is good for you. Excellent. Okay, I think the next one is the last one. Question number seven. Have you ever visited Philippines? Hmm. Have you ever visited Philippines? Let's see if you guys can get this last one. If you get this last one correct, I will be so proud of you. So, do we say a uh, Philippines and Philippines, the Philippines, or no article Philippines? Okay, this is really tricky. Unless you're from <laughs> this area, maybe you know. Okay, very good, very good. So the correct answer here is the. Have you ever visited the 
Philippines, the Philippines, the number three. Um, so when we use the with countries, um, it has to do with, um, for example, if they have like, uh, for example, the United States of America, the United States. So it's a group of states. There are many states and they're united, the United States. Here, Philippines is a group of islands, a group of islands, and the full name is, I think, the Republic of the Philippines or something like that. So uh, we use the for the Philippines. We also use the for like the Netherlands, even though it doesn't follow the same rule, probably because there's an S at the end, we say the Netherlands, the Philippines. However, we would not say, for example, the Japan, right? The Japan, we wouldn't say. The France, we don't say, okay? So generally, countries have no article. So have you ever visited Japan? Have you ever visited Myanmar? Have you ever visited France? Usually the countries don't have an article. However, special, special cases, the United States, the United Kingdom, the Philippines, they have the, okay? That is a little bit tricky. If you look on the YouTube channel, there should be a whole lesson about um, using articles, a, uh, uh, an, or the. Let me see if I can find it and then I can put it in the description, okay? So I have a, a total grammar guide on YouTube. I'll share that link with you guys. Here, I'll put it in the comments and in the description, okay? So if you follow that, you should be able to know when to use a, an, or the, or no article, okay? Very good, everyone. Oh, how many did you get correct? Viola, very good, six out of seven, wonderful job, excellent. Okay, so if you need some help, you can always go and find that uh, and the article guide on YouTube. Oh, five out of seven, pretty good, well done. Okay, excellent. So, of course, if you guys have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. I will try and answer them as soon as I can. Um, also, if you have any um, lesson suggestions, please uh, put it in the comments as well. Oh, a three is pretty good, pretty good. You can watch this lesson one more time after you review and see if your score improves. Very good. Five out of seven, wonderful. Six out of seven, very good. Six out of seven, six. Everyone did very well. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, very good. So um, I think I'm going to call it a day because I am a little bit busy today, but I'll be back with another lesson, of course. So um, if you guys want to subscribe and turn on notifications, you will be able to know when I go live and post new lessons. There will be a new lesson again later on YouTube today. So stick around for that. And I will see you very, very soon. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. I'm so sorry that um, I've been a little bit sick recently and I haven't been able to um, uh, go live like this for um, a few days. So um, thank you to everyone who waited and thank you to everyone who is joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope that we can um, enjoy the lesson together. By the way, um, if you haven't already, if you're watching this on Facebook, if you haven't already, 
please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll put it in the chat. And um, we are gonna have lessons every single day. So that is very exciting. Hello, Arman. Hello, Ali. Hello, Yi. Hello, Jackson. Hello, dear. Hello, William. Mijan. Hello, hello. Um, I'm very sorry that I haven't um, been able to go live, but I'm, I'm feeling better now. I'm I'm good. So we're going to have um, regular lessons again. Hello. Oh, hello from Pakistan. Hello, Anna. I'm feeling much, much better. Thank you. Hello, it's nice to see all of you again, all the familiar um, names and faces. Hello, Michael, hello, Arman, hello, Sala. Okay, um, so again, uh, if you don't know, I'm posting every single day on YouTube. Um, so please check out the YouTube channel and subscribe. Um, we just had another new video um go live i'll share that also we'll share the newest video okay hello from bangladesh i hope everyone is doing well today okay so we're going to start the lesson and we have a very simple lesson today but i think um it's very useful and um it's going to make your english sound even more fluent hello from madagascar hello Okay, so today we have these two new phrasal verbs. Okay, so you might know what they mean. Um, you might not, that's okay. So the first one is head over, head over. Okay, the next one is come over, come over. Hello from Mexico. Okay, so head over and come over. They both include over. Oh, hello, Sergio. It's okay if you are a beginner. Um, uh, the lesson is for all levels, so don't worry. Okay, so we have head over and come over. So we have this over, over. Okay, um, I think we might have talked about come over before, but we're going to uh, refresh a little bit. Hello, Devashka. Okay, so um, let me grab another marker. So we have head over, head over. So uh, to head over means to go somewhere, to go somewhere. So instead of saying, I'm going to something, something. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, really quick, somebody asked me, what is the name of my YouTube channel? about Tokyo. Um, really, really quick. My YouTube channel is Tokyo Bree Bree. Um, that is for um, what? That is for Tokyo Bree Bree. Uh, that is for my Life in Japan channel. Okay, if anybody's interested. Oops, hello. Okay, so head over means to go somewhere, to go somewhere. So I'm going to head over to the bank. I'm going to uh, head over to the store. I'll head over to um, the park after work, okay? So if you say head over, this is a very natural way to mean go somewhere, go somewhere, okay? Head over. Now come over, come over is specifically um, to where someone is, okay? So I'll come over to your house. Why don't you come over? Why don't you come over to my house? Okay, please come over here to where I am. So if I am at my house and I say, hey, why don't you come over? That means I want you to come to my house. Uh, if I am at uh, if I'm at, I don't know, a party, if I'm at a party, it's not my house maybe, but I am there. I am there. So I would say, uh, why don't you come over to the party? Okay. Why don't you come over to the party? Okay. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Head over, come over. Okay. 
Is it easy enough to see for everyone? Okay, very, very good. So usually head over means go somewhere that is um, maybe not where you are, right? Going away, go. Then come over is coming to where someone is. Okay, I hope that's understandable. Watching from the Philippines, hello. Okay, thank you, Devashka. Very good. It's easy to see. Okay, so um, let's see. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, so we have some examples. It's pretty easy, right? Pretty easy, I think. So head over means go to. Come over means come to maybe in parentheses, me or um, whoever is talking, right? Come over to my house. Hello, hello. Okay, so I have two examples here with the answers already written, so I'll read it. Um, I'm going to head over to your house at 1 p.m. I'm going to head over to your house at 1 p.m. So that means I'm going to go to your house, okay? I'm going to go to your house at 1 p.m. is the same as I'm going to head over to your house at 1 p.m. Okay? Number two, do you want to come over to watch the game? So I am from America and we often watch football games together. Okay? We often watch football games together. So, we would say, do you want to come over to my house to watch the game? Do you want to come over to watch the game? Okay, very good. So, oh, let me just do one thing. Okay. Do you want to come over to watch the game? Okay. Is it understandable? Let's try um, number three. Number three. She's going to, mm, to the store after work. Ah, uh, okay. Devaska has a question. I'm going to, I'm going to go to your house or I'm going to your house. So um, they are both grammatically correct. However, they have different meanings. So if you say, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, uh, you would say, I'm going to go to your house or I'm going to go to my house. I'm going to go to someone's house is correct. That means in the future. I'm going to go in the future. Or I'm going to your house means I'm on the way. I'm going right now. Okay, good question. Okay, let's see. Okay, so, oh, very good, Anna. Very good, Abdo. Okay, number three. She's going to, mm -mm, to the store after work. Okay, very good. So she's going to head over, head over. She's going to head over to the store after work. She's going to head over to the store. So maybe nobody she knows is there, but she's going to go to the store, right? She's going to head over to the store. Okay, number four. Why don't you mm, to my place tomorrow? Why don't you mm, to my place tomorrow? Oh, very good. Number four, why don't you mm -hmm, to my place tomorrow? Oh, very good, Alpha, good job. Oh, Anna, good job. Le Pink, okay. Good morning, good morning for those who are just joining us. Okay, why don't you head over or come over to my place tomorrow? Oh, very good, Ali, very good. Okay, why don't you come over, come over. So why don't you come over to my place tomorrow? So uh, that means I want you to come to my house. 
why don't you come over to my place tomorrow? So we don't even need my place actually to my place. We could simply say, why don't you come over tomorrow? Why don't you come over tomorrow? That means come to my place, come to my house. Okay. Very good. Oh, very nice. Okay. Number five, this could be a little bit tricky. <clears throat> First, I'm going to mm, to the office and then I'll mm, for dinner. Okay. Oh, Anna, very good. First, I'm going to mm, to the office and then I'll mm, for dinner. Very good, Alpha June. Nice. Okay. So, first, I'm going to head over. head over to the office and then I'll come over for dinner. Very good. Then I'll come over for dinner. We could also say I'll head over for dinner. Maybe it depends on whose house you're going over to, but um, usually we can say I'll come over for dinner. I'll come over to your house, okay? Or I'll head over. So this one, it could actually be both, but um, I prefer come over. Okay, very nice. Okay, I'll read them one more time. I'm going to head over to your house at 1 p.m. I'm going to head over to your house at 1 p.m. Number two, do you want to come over to watch the game? Do you want to come over to watch the game? Number three, she's going to head over to the store after work. Number four, why don't you come over to my place tomorrow? And number five, first I'm going to head over to the office and then I'll come over for dinner. Okay, very good. So uh, I think some people uh, mix up when to use each one, um, but basically head over is going to somewhere um, that you know, far from yourself, right? Oops, not where your family is, not where your friends are. Oh, it could be, I guess. I'll head over, I'll head over somewhere, like away from your home to somewhere else, right? Then come over, um, usually is an invitation. Why don't you come over, come over, okay? Very, very good. So, okay, uh, can you try and make some sentences and I'll put them on the screen and then we can correct them together. How about that? Okay, head over, come over. Can you try and make your own sentences? Let's see. Okay. Uh, let's see, oh, hello from Malaysia. Hello, hello. Let's see, let's see. Oops, okay. Oh, very good, Ali. I'm going to head over to, we would say, I'm going to head over to the mall to buy clothes. Very good. I'm going to head over to the mall to buy clothes. Yes, very good. Okay, so it means I'm going to go to the mall to buy clothes. Excellent, excellent. I think I saw another um, question. Let's see. First, she had come over to my house and then she headed over to her work. Yes, very good. First, she came over to my house and then she headed over to work. Nice use of each one. Good job. I usually come over to my parents to visit them. Yeah, you could say come over or head over. So I guess it depends. Um, yeah, it's a tricky one. I usually, so if your parents live in a different house than you, um, you could say I usually head over to my parents, parents' to visit them. That would be good. Oh, 
Hello, Tetetwin. My friend invites me to head over to her house, but I don't want to go because I'm so cynical. Okay, very good. So maybe um, you could say, my friend invites me to come over. So she's inviting you or he's inviting you, your friend, right? So to their place. So you could say, my friend invites me to come over to her place but I, want, I don't want to go there because I'm so cynical. So maybe you think there is an ulterior motive to going to her house. Okay. Let's see. Oh, there's a lot of examples. Very, very good. Uh, let's see. Please come over, Breeze Practical English. Yeah, I'll come over. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I'm going to head over to my office. Yes. Very good. Excellent. Oh, this is a good one. I will. You don't need. So if you use will, you don't need going, going. So you could say I will head over with my girlfriend or I'm going to head over with my girlfriend. Okay. Good job. He going to come over next week. Okay, very good. I would correct this to he is going to come over next, N-E-X-T, next week. So next week, you don't need an S, next week. Very good, okay? Why don't you come over to visit Kyoto, my place? Oh, Michael, are you in Kyoto? Very nice. I wish I could um, do a little bit more traveling this year. I would love to go over to Kyoto. Ali said, I'm heading over to Bree's house, but she will take some time to come over to me because she's busy with FB lesson. Yes, Facebook lesson. Very good. Okay, maybe we'll do one or two more. One or two more. Let's see, I'm going to head over to the US next month and then come over to Bree's house to thank her. Oh, thank you very much, excellent. Very good sentence. Oh, thank you, Ali, I'm feeling much better now. I come over to attend my first English lecture. Yes, you can say, I came over, since you're, you're already here, I came over to attend my first English lecture. Yes, please come over to uh, my Facebook page and my YouTube channel. Um, we have lots of lessons there. Okay. I head over to the office in Tokyo. Yes, very, very good, excellent. Will you come over, to, will you come over to dinner tonight. Maybe I would say, will you come over for dinner tonight? Very good. Okay. Wow. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for all the good um, example sentences. I have to head over to get some flowers first. I'll be there in 20 minutes. After that, we'll both come over to the party though. Yes. Excellent. Excellent, Anna. Very good. Very good. You sound very Americanized. <laughs> Okay, good job. Is there any difference between head over and come over? Yes. So head over means uh, usually I'm going somewhere. Um, come over means um, it's basically the difference between go and come, go and come, right? So I'm going to go to work. I'm going to head over to work. So come over is where um, basically uh, if I if I'm inviting someone, um, why don't you come over to my place? Why don't you come over to my place? They can sometimes be used in interchangeably. Um, sometimes native speakers use them interchangeably. But the basic difference is um, head over means go. And come over means come to where I am, basically. Okay.
Okay, ma'am, I will come over to YouTube channel and like Facebook classes. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, um, I'll put again um, the newest lesson we have on the YouTube channel. Um, I'll put that in the comments. So if you can see that, if you're on Facebook um, watching, you can see uh, the, the newest uh, video. And if you want to subscribe, a new lessons are coming out every single day. So please go and subscribe to that. Michael says bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, so I'll be back tomorrow for another lesson. There will be a new lesson on Facebook and a new lesson on YouTube. So please, if you have the time, uh, watch both of them. Okay, and I will help you uh, with your English again later tomorrow. Okay, thank you everybody for watching and I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you, see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. Hello everyone, welcome to today's English lesson. In today's English lesson, we are going to look at fighting in English. Yes, that's right. So. Even though uh, you're learning English maybe for school or for work, um, you might have some disagreements or you might want to talk about disagreements that other people are having, right? So this is good for everyday life, everyday conversation. And I think it's really important to go over some of these words that might not be in your English textbooks, okay? But first, before we get into today's lesson, if you could, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. You can hit that red subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications. That way you'll know when I go live and when I post new lessons. You can also like me on Facebook. I'm also on TikTok now. So everything will be linked below. Okay, let's get into the lesson. All right, so I'm going to share my screen, okay? So here we have fighting in English, fighting in English. Okay, so we're not going to look at, um, you know, how to fight in English, but we're going to look at some vocabulary that has to do with fights. Okay, so let's take a look at the first one. Okay, here we have quite a long expression, but let's go over it. This says, go off the deep end, go off the deep end. Have you ever heard this expression before, go off the deep end? Um, I heard it a lot growing up from my mom <laughs> and my dad, okay? So if someone goes off the deep end, it means, that they get very angry, they lose control, okay? So um, for some reason, we, we use this expression, go off the deep end. Um, so I always imagined it as a kind of swimming pool. Um, so we have the shallow end where, where kids can play in the pool and we have the deep end where you have to dive off the diving board. You can go very deep. So. When someone goes off the deep end, it's like they lose control. They're very, very angry. Um, for some reason, we use this expression. Let's take a look at some examples, okay? I don't know what you said to him, but he's about to go off the deep end. So I don't know what you said to him, but he's about to lose control. He's about to get very, very angry, okay? He's about to go off the deep end. Let's take a look at the next one. My mom's going to go off the deep end if she finds out what I did. My mom's going to go off the deep end. I remember saying this a lot when I was younger. Um, you know, when your parents want you to come home at a certain time or they want you to finish your homework before you see your friends. <gasps> if my mom finds out I didn't do my homework, my mom's gonna go off the deep end, <laughs> okay? She's going to get very, very angry, okay? 
I hope you can remember, go off the deep end. We're going to come back to it, okay? We're going to have a little quiz at the end, so stick around. The next one, very, very short. This is easy, right? This is tiff, tiff. So a tiff is a petty quarrel between friends or lovers. So when something is petty, petty means not very serious. Um, it's not really a big fight. By the way, quarrel means fight, to quarrel with someone, but um, we don't often use this word, but you can use it. So a petty quarrel between friends or lovers. So a tiff is like um, maybe uh, your your friend said they didn't like your um, outfit. Your, they didn't like your outfit for the day. That would be a petty quarrel. It doesn't really mean anything. You can probably get over it pretty quickly. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's take a look. She just had a tiff with her new boyfriend. So she just had a fight, a, a small insignificant fight, okay, with her new boyfriend. All right, they'll make up soon. It was just a tiff. They'll make up soon. It was just a tiff. So just a tiff means it was so small, it wasn't even worth fighting about, okay? And if you know make up, to make up is um, to get your relationship back together after you've had a fight. Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, apologize. Get back to your relationship or friendship, okay? The next one is very similar to tiff. This is the word spat, spat. So you can see the definition, a petty quarrel between friends or lovers, tiff, a petty quarrel between friends or lovers, spat. But there is one difference that I'd like to point out, and that is in the example sentence. They just had a lover's spat. So oftentimes you'll hear spat with lovers, a lover's spat. That means that um, specifically for like boyfriends, girlfriends, or like husband, wives, um, when couples fight, right? When couples fight, um, we call it a lover's spat. So not a very serious fight, but they had a little bit of an argument, a little bit of a disagreement. We would say they had a lover's spat, okay? Uh, the next one, the kids had a silly spat over who could eat the fastest. So that's very silly, right? Who can eat the fastest? And their little kids are fighting over who can eat the fastest. That would be a silly spat. Or we could say a silly tiff. Okay? But remember, lovers spat. We usually use spat with lovers. Okay? Next one. Wits end. Wits end. Okay, so... The definition of uh, your wit's end is to be very worried, confused, or annoyed that you don't know what to do next. So you're very worried, you're very confused, or you're very annoyed, and you don't know what you should do, okay? You're at your wit's end, okay? So here are some examples. He never listens to a word I say. I'm at my wit's end. Okay, so notice we use at. We're always going to use at with wit's end. I'm at my wit's end. She's at her wit's end. They're at their wit's end. Okay, so it means, um, we have another expression that I didn't write down, but we can also say, um, you're at the end of your rope. So maybe you have patience, you have this much patience, okay? But when something happens that either worries you, confuses you, annoys you, your patience is getting smaller and smaller, and soon you are at the end of your patience. So we can think of it in the same way. You're at your wit's end. 
you're at your rope's end. Okay, you're at the end of your rope. Um, so that means you you are really uh, not knowing what to do next. You don't know what to do. You're very worried, confused. Okay, so let's take a look at these examples. Uh, the second example, I'm at my wits end with her. She's always lying to me. So I'm so worried or I'm so annoyed that she's lying to me. I don't know what to do next. I'm at my wits end with her. Okay, very good. Next, ooh, next one is uh, fairly new compared to the others. This is squash the beef, squash the beef. So this is a uh, kind of slang expression that's become popular in the last, I would say, 10 years or so. So if you squash the beef, that means uh, to end an argument or bad feelings by apologizing or by other means. So in some way you apologize and you end the fight, you end the argument. Um, to squash the beef also means to settle a matter. Okay, so maybe you have some disagreements, but you're able to apologize and move on from that. Okay, so let's take a look at the two examples. You two used to be so close. I think it's time for you to squash the beef. Okay, you guys used to be best friends. Stop fighting. It's time for you to squash the beef. It's time for you to end your argument, okay? The next one, I hope they'll be able to squash the beef someday. I hope they'll be able to squash the beef someday, okay? So I hope they'll be able to make up someday. They'll end their argument. Very good, squash the beef. Okay, so we have some questions here. We're going to use Go off the deep end, tiff, spat, wits end, and squash the beef, okay? So we're going to use each one only once, okay? And we're gonna fill in the blanks here. So I hope you remember the meanings and when to use each of these. All right, there are five questions. Let's try question number one together. Number one, I don't know what to do about her. I don't know what to do about her. I'm at my something. Okay, I'm at my something. Write your answers in the comments. Let's see who can get number one right. Hmm. Big hint is I'm at my something. At my something. Okay. The answer to number one is wit's end. I don't know what to do about her. I'm at my wit's end. I have no more patience. I don't know what to do next. I'm so worried. I'm so concerned. I'm so annoyed. Okay, number two. If my parents find out what I did, they'll... Hmm. If my parents find out what I did, they'll, hmm, what do you think? They'll squash the beef, they'll tiff, they'll spat, they'll go off the deep end. We already use wit's end, okay? So which one do you think is correct? Leave your answer in the comments. Okay, I hope you wrote it down. Let's see who could get it right. The correct answer is go off the deep end. How many of you got that one right? Was that easy? Very good. Okay, if my parents find out what I did, they'll go off the deep end. So they'll get so angry they will lose control, okay? Number three, I know I was wrong. Can we? So a hint for this one, it would be, can we stop arguing? Can we stop fighting? Write your answer down. The answer to number three is, can we squash the beef? Very good. Can we squash the beef? 
Can we stop fighting, please? All right, two more, two more. Number four, he's having a lover's with his wife. He's having a lover's with his wife. So big hint here is lovers, lovers. Okay, which word goes with lovers? Do you remember? Write your answer down. Okay, the answer to number four is spat. He's having a lover's spat with his wife. So they're having a small argument, probably not a serious fight. Maybe they fought over what's for dinner, okay? Very good. Last one, last one. Number five. The two sisters had a little hmm over who would wear the dress. Hmm. The two sisters had a little over who would wear the dress. Okay, there's only one left, so let's see the answer. The two sisters had a little tiff over who would wear the dress. So they had a small, small argument. Remember, tiff and spat are pretty much the same thing, but usually we say lover's spat, not lover's tiff, okay? Very good, all right. Okay, so how many did you get correct? Did you get five out of five correct? Let me know in the comments. And uh, do you think you will use these words in everyday conversation? Are these useful for you? Is there anything else you would like to know how to say about fighting or arguing with people? Let me know if there are any other lessons that you would like to see or you would like for me to make. I will try to make them as soon as I can. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching today's lesson. Don't forget to subscribe. You can follow me here on YouTube or Facebook, uh, TikTok, Twitter. I'm on everything so you can find me. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Hello students, welcome to today's lesson. Before we get into today's lesson, if you could and you haven't yet already, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. That way you'll know when I post new lessons and when I go live so you can participate. All right, so today's lesson is about the difference between every day and every day. Okay, so did you know that there's actually two ways to write every day? And they have different meanings, okay? So when we write every day with a space, every day, this means each day. So when we say every month, every hour, every week, every day, we need to include that space, okay? Every day, every day I meet my friend for lunch, okay? Next, we have every day, every day as a compound word. There is no space here. So when we write every day this way, it is an adjective and it means typical or ordinary, not so special or rare, like very usual, okay? So uh, for example, I go to the movies every day, means each day. And then we could say, uh, it was just an everyday occasion. It was an everyday occasion. So it was a typical occasion that I do each day. It was very typical, okay? Not special, okay? So maybe going to the movies for some people is an everyday occasion, not so special. For some people, it might be special, right? Okay, so let's look at the big whiteboard to see 
uh, if we can correctly answer each question. So, oh no, I made a mistake by erasing some of the, the word here, but that's okay. So, uh, we have every day with a space, that means each day. Then every day means ordinary, typical, and this is, it's a little bit erased, but it says adjective, adjective. Okay, so that should be a big hint for you. So when you are writing in English, please be aware of these differences, okay? So let's try and answer number one together, okay? So you can write your answers in the comments, all right? I take a shower every day. So which is it? Does it have a space or no space? Uh, write your answers in the comments and I will write the correct answer for you. Okay, did everyone write their answer? All right, I take a shower every space day. So each day. I take a shower every day, each day. Okay, very good. How about number two? I want to learn every day English expressions. I want to learn every day English expressions. Is there a space or no space? Write your answers in the comments, okay? All right, the correct answer is every, no space, day. Okay, so this is an adjective, an adjective, everyday English expression. So usual, typical, ordinary English expressions, okay? Let's try number three, number three. Uh, she took an everyday dress and added some lace to make it special for the occasion. She took an everyday dress and added some lace to make it special for the occasion. All right, does it have a space or no space? Write your comments, oh sorry, write your answers in the comments. All right, okay, so the correct answer here is every day with no space. This is an adjective. She took an everyday dress, so an ordinary, usual dress, and added some lace to make it special for the occasion. Okay, so maybe she's going somewhere special. Maybe it's her birthday or an anniversary. So she took her everyday dress and added something to make it a little bit special. Okay, how about the uh, number four, not the last one, number four. He orders takeout every day. He orders takeout every day. Hmm. What is your answer for this one, number four? Okay, hopefully you got it right. He orders takeout every space day, each day. So this is uh, maybe not the healthiest way, uh, but he orders takeout every day. Okay, do you order takeout every day? How often do you order takeout? So takeout is when you call up a restaurant or fa usually fast food restaurant and they will deliver food to your house. Order takeout, order takeout. So you get it and you eat it at home, okay? Uh, ooh, number five, I'm erasing it with my finger. So this one has two answers, okay? Every day, I'm reminded that celebrities face different everyday problems. Every day I'm remembered that celebrities face different everyday problems. All right, you have two answers. Please write them in the comments and let's see if you can get them right. 
Okay. So the answer to number five is every space day. So each day, every day I'm reminded that celebrities face, so encounter, face different Every day, the adjective with the one word, everyday problems. Every day, each day, I'm reminded that celebrities face or encounter different everyday problems. So their typical, ordinary, everyday problems might be that people are taking pictures of them. The paparazzi is waiting for them outside of their house. Uh, their face is all over magazines. Those are different everyday problems from regular people. So we don't face those kinds of everyday problems. Maybe our everyday problem is, oh, I missed the train, I missed the bus, I forgot my wallet. Those are our everyday problems. Okay, so I hope that it's very clear when to use every day and when to use every day. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. If you would like to see more lessons, I post every single day here on YouTube. So um, if you want, you can subscribe and then you'll know when I post new lessons. Okay. Thank you all very much for watching. I will see you again tomorrow with a brand new lesson. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well today. Welcome to my live lesson. We are going to be doing dictation and or shadowing. So I'm going to explain what those are. And um, today's lesson will include some advanced vocabulary. So um, I think uh, I will include those in a blog post. And then you guys can see um, the sentences that I used in today's lesson and also an explanation of all of the um, uh, vocabulary words. Okay, so we're gonna start. Hello, hello, welcome everyone who's coming in. So if you wanna ask me a question, oh, I see Karakram times, welcome. Thank you for joining, hello, hello. Okay, so I'm going to get the lesson up. I hope you guys can hear me. Um, I think my microphone is working. Okay, so let me get the lesson up. Okay, so we are doing dictation and shadowing. So English listening and speaking practice. So it's going to be um, a, a quick lesson, but I think a good one. Okay, feel free to ask questions in the chat. Like I said, I will be giving a free resource after this lesson, so watch out for that. I will put the link in the description and um, in the comments also, so you can check that out. Okay, so first, what is dictation? What is dictation? Oops, I'm moving my screen around. Sorry about that. Okay, so... Dictation is a language learning activity where students listen to spoken text and write down what they hear. So that's the key. You write down what you hear. Okay. Uh, it helps to improve listening comprehension, vocabulary retention, grammar understanding, spelling accuracy, and attention to detail. It is a valuable tool that promotes active listening, reinforces the language structures, and encourages self-correction and improvement. So um, if you've ever been in an English class before, you've probably done dictation maybe um, once or twice or many times. So you listen to what the teacher says and you write it down. It helps you understand, um, like I said, uh, spelling accuracy, 
listening comprehension, and it gives you some good vocabulary, okay? Uh, okay, so Krakram asked uh, to start a class of spoken practice. I will try to do that. That would be a very good lesson, I think. Okay, what is shadowing? So this may be helpful. So shadowing is a language learning technique where students listen to a native speaker or audio recording and immediately repeat or shadow the words and phrases they hear. So this is very good with speaking practice. Okay, so you can do either of these things with today's lesson. You can either do dictation or shadowing. So shadowing helps students improve their English fluency, pronunciation, and rhythm. Shadowing also enhances listening skills and word recognition as students focus on comprehending and replicating spoken language in real time. Okay, so you can choose what you would like to do, dictation or shadowing. Are you guys ready to jump into the lesson? Okay, I see somebody else uh, put a sticker. I can't, uh, I don't know what your name is, but thank you very much. Okay, so we're gonna go to our first one, okay? So listen, I'm going to say a sentence and you can either write down what you hear or repeat after me. So dictation or shadowing. Are you ready? Do you have a pen and a piece of paper? Or you can just practice speaking, okay? Ready. Okay, listen. The girl was craving a cup of hot chocolate. Okay, what did you hear? So you could either write it down or you could repeat after me. I'm gonna say it one more time. The girl was craving a cup of hot chocolate. One more time. The girl was craving a cup of hot chocolate. Okay, could you, could you hear? Oh, Hideaki said uh, his answer in the comment. Very good, so I'm gonna give the answer. The girl was craving a cup of hot chocolate. Did you get that one right? Yes, very good, very good. Okay, oh, very good. Okay, so um, after this lesson, I'm going to provide a link for my blog post and it's gonna explain the vocabulary in these, okay? So if you don't know what craving means, means when you really, really want something, especially food or drink, okay? Let's go to the second one. Okay, write down what you hear or you can repeat after me. Okay, this is number two, we're gonna do five. This one's gonna be a little bit more difficult, okay? The author's eloquent words captivated the audience. Hmm. Okay, so listen again. The author's eloquent words captivated the audience. What did you hear? Okay, I'm gonna say it one more time because I know this one is pretty tricky. The author's eloquent words captivated the audience. Hmm. Okay. All right, I'm gonna put the answer. If you want, you can type your answer in the chat or in the comments. So I'm gonna post the answer, okay? The answer is the author's eloquent words captivated the audience. Very good. Oh, Ang Angora, the author's eloquence was captivating. You're very close, very good, very good, okay. So this one I think is a little more difficult. I think the rest are gonna be a little difficult, okay? So we have the words eloquent and captivated. Um, so I'm going to explain those words in my blog post. Please go check it out, okay? Very good. Did you get the spelling right? Did you get the vocabulary right? 
Those are the things we are kind of checking. Okay, number three. Okay, write down what you hear or repeat after me, whichever you'd like. Okay, let's listen. The diligent student meticulously completed her assignment. The diligent student meticulously completed her assignment. Hmm. Okay, what did you hear? So I'm going to say it one more time and then I'm going to give you the answer. The diligent student meticulously completed her assignment. Okay, you can write your answer down or just repeat after me, whichever one you would like to try today. Oh, very good. I see, uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but ADR. Very good. You guys are doing very, very well so far. I picked some difficult, difficult ones. I'll say it one more time. The diligent student meticulously completed her assignment. Oh, very good, Hideaki and Angora. Well done. Okay. The answer is the diligent student meticulously completed her assignment. Again, if you are a little confused by these words, like diligent, meticulously, check out my newest blog post. They will explain all of the vocabulary. Okay, well done, Krakram, very good. Okay, number four, number four, okay? The entrepreneur established a successful startup company. Hmm, difficult. The entrepreneur established a successful startup company. Okay, let's listen one more time. The entrepreneur established a successful startup company. Okay, what did you hear? Ah, ADR is Adrian. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so the answer is the entrepreneur established a successful startup company. Very good. Oh, Angora, very done, very well done, very nice. Okay, so we are going to go to number five. Number five is gonna be our last one, okay? So um, remember, you want to try and um, listen carefully, get all of the vocabulary correct. And if you can, if you're doing dictation, try to get the spelling correct, okay? That is also a challenge. Oh, you guys are doing so well. Very good. Hideaki, uh, Krakram, Adrian, well done. Okay, this is the last one. Let's see, okay. The surgeon performed a delicate operation with precision. Listen one more time. The surgeon performed a delicate operation with precision. Hmm. Okay, what did you hear? <laughs> okay, I'll say it one more time. This is the last one. The surgeon performed a delicate operation with precision. Okay, you can write your answers down or just repeat. Hideaki, very good, very good. Okay, I'm going to put the answer. Ta-da! The surgeon performed a delicate operation with precision. Very good. You guys did very well, very nice. Okay, so um, I want to know um, how many you got correct. We did five listening uh, activities. If you came in late, you might have only done a few of them. Um, let me know how many you got correct. Did you do dictation or did you do shadowing? So if you did one, for example, if you did dictation, 
Um, this time you can always watch it again and do the next one. You can do shadowing next time. If you did shadowing this time, you can do dictation next time. Okay. Oh, crackdown. Very good. So, um, also remember that we're trying to get, um, all of the grammar correct and the vocabulary. So did you get the spelling? Did you understand the vocabulary that I said? Some of the vocabulary is a little bit advanced. Okay. Yes, Angor, very good. Nice. Okay. I'm so glad you guys participated. I love interacting with you guys. So it's very nice. I, it's hard to get time to do this, but it was very nice. Okay. So let's see, where am I here? I'll make myself big again. Okay. Very good. I'm so impressed with you guys. So I tried to pick a little bit of more advanced vocabulary to see if you guys could catch those words, if you could spell them correctly, and if you could understand them. So um, I've said it many times, but I'm going to post a blog about this lesson exactly. So it's going to explain each sentence with um, the vocabulary in each sentence. Okay. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I'll be back very soon with another live lesson. You guys are awesome. And if you have suggestions um, for a lesson, I know uh, Karakaram, sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name right, um, you suggested a uh, speaking lesson. So I'll try to think of how I can do that because that would be, I think, very beneficial for many students. Okay. Yes, I think it's very nice to be very interactive with you guys. That way it's like um, easier to study, right? You have some motivation. Okay, but please leave your lesson suggestions in the comments, in the chat, and I will see you guys very, very soon. It was a short lesson, but thank you guys so much for watching. Okay. I will see you and I will be back very soon. Thank you guys. Bye bye. Hello students. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining me today. Um, before we get into today's lesson, if you could, um, if you haven't yet already, please go over to the YouTube page and there will be a red subscribe button. If you click the red subscribe button on YouTube or if you click it on um, Facebook, you'll be able to know when I go live and when I post new lessons. So thank you very much to everyone who has subscribed already. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm trying to uh, come up with new lessons every single day. So I hope you subscribe. Okay. Um, don't forget to like this video, share it with a friend who's also learning English, and let's grow our English learning community. Okay, so today's lesson was requested by one of my amazing students, um, Ali Awan. Hello. Um, Ali suggested a lesson on lay versus lie. Lay versus lie. So, um, we're going to get into these. They're very, very confusing, aren't they? Um, don't worry if you get confused with lay and lie. Even native speakers often get confused and a lot of native speakers often use the wrong um, form of the verbs, okay? So don't worry, I'm here to help you. You'll be able to understand it hopefully at the end of this lesson, okay? So lay versus lie. Let's look at the big whiteboard I have, okay? So let's take a look. All right, so lay versus lie and versus another lie, right? There's two meanings for lie. So, okay, lay, what does lay mean? To lay means to set something down, to set something down. So um, usually a physical object, um, you can lay it down. So uh, I have this whiteboard. I'm going to lay the whiteboard on the table. So I'm going to lay down. I'm going to uh, lay the whiteboard on the table, okay? 
usually for physical objects that you are setting in a certain place. And this is a good way to remember which is which. So lay is spelled L-A-Y. So if you remember, L-A is in place. So when you put something down in a place, we're going to use lay, this L-A, L-A. You can remember it that way. It's a, it's a little trick, okay? Then um, when we look at how we change the verb, to lay, and then laid is the past tense, and also laid is the past participle, okay? So pretty easy, lay, laid, laid, okay? I will lay the whiteboard on the table. Yesterday, I laid it on the table. I had laid it on the table, okay? Very good. Now let's get into lie, okay? Let's get into lie. This is where it gets a little bit tricky, okay? So lie has two meanings. The first one, uh, to not tell the truth. Can you see that? To not tell the truth. So um, to tell a lie, um, a lie is a, a noun and to lie is the verb, okay? Then we have another meaning, which is uh, to recline or rest, okay? So um, if you're very tired and you need to lie on the sofa or lie in bed, okay? So let's take a look at how we can remember lie. Um, L-I, lie. We can remember this with the word recline. I have recline here. So recli, L-I, L-I, okay? Lay is for place, lie is for recline, rest. Okay, so let's look at how we change the verb, okay? So when we are uh, lying, when we lie, not tell the truth, um, we lie, past tense is lied, and the past participle is lied, okay? so. Fairly simple, right? Now, when we talk about reclining, this is where a lot of people get confused, okay? So, lie, I lie on the bed, all right? The past tense of lie is lay. Oh my gosh. So, lay is the past of lie, but it's also up here, right? Lay. So don't get confused, okay? So that's why a lot of people get confused, even English speakers, because this doesn't sound like the past tense sometimes, right? It sounds like the present tense of this one to set something down, okay? So just make sure that lie, the past tense is lay, the past participle is lane, lane. Now I have to admit, I rarely hear people using lane, okay, for um, re resting or reclining, okay? He had lain in bed for 10 days or something. Um, probably not so often heard in conversation, but I guess if you're going to write more formally, you should know uh, lane, okay? Very good. All right, so now that we understand the difference between lay and lie, we're gonna answer some questions, okay? I hope you're following me so far. Um, you can always write questions in the comments. I'll try and answer them as uh, best I can. Okay, so number one, let's try it together. You can, mm, your bag down over there. You can, your bag down over there. What are we gonna use? Hmm. Lay, lie, laid, lied, lane. Which verb and which form of the verb are we going to use? Okay, <clears throat> write your answer in the comments. Very good, excellent. Okay, so the correct answer is you can da, 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 lay, oops, 
lay. You can lay your bag down over there. So remember, lay is for place, to set an object down in a place. Very good. So we're talking about a bag. You can put your bag down over there. You can lay your bag down over there. Very good. Okay, number two. I can't believe you to me yesterday. Wow, you didn't tell the truth. I can't believe you to me yesterday. Yesterday, big hint here, yesterday. Okay, write your answer in the comments. Let's see who can get it right. Oh, very good, I'll give you a few more seconds. I can't believe you to me yesterday. All right, be careful of spelling also. So this one, because we're talking about yesterday, we're gonna put it in the past tense. So I can't believe you lied to me yesterday. I can't believe you lied to me yesterday. Excellent, excellent, lied. So this is here, we're using this form, past tense. Okay, number three. She down for a nap a few hours ago. A few hours ago. She down for a nap a few hours ago. Hmm. Which word, which verb, and which form of the verb are we going to use? Okay, big hint here. A few hours ago. A few hours ago. All right, I see some answers, very good. Okay, so the correct answer here is she, oops, here we are. She lay down for a nap a few hours ago. Okay, so I know that one sounds a little bit strange because isn't lay the present tense? You can lay your bag down over there. Well, she lay down. Lay is the past of lie. So don't forget, this one means to recline and rest. She lay down, not she laid down, okay? Very good. Number four, I thought I, my phone down on the desk. I thought I, my phone down on the desk. So first of all, which verb, lay or lie, and then which form of the verb are we going to use? Okay, this is the last one. I think you can get it. Try your best. Give it a try. Write your answer in the comments. Okay, so did you write your answer? Good job. I thought I laid my phone down on the desk. I thought I laid my phone down on the desk. So laid here, this is the past of lay, to set something down in a place somewhere. Very good. I thought I laid my phone down on the desk. Very good. Did you get 100%? I hope so. Um, if you'd like, um, I think we didn't use any of the past participles of any of these. So if you have uh, a minute, you can write um, a sentence using the past participle of either one of these verbs or all three. Um, that's some good practice and I'll try and check all of your sentences. Okay, so um, if you have any other uh, lesson suggestions, uh, please leave them in the comments as well. I'm always looking for new lessons. So thank you very much. Um, and thank you for watching today's lesson. All right. I will see you guys again very, very soon. Okay. Bye, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're ready for today's English lesson. Today we're gonna go over um, an expression, but first, if you guys haven't yet and you would like to know 
when I go live, when I post new videos and quizzes, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, and if you want, you can like the Facebook page and you can turn on notifications on both of those. And then you'll know when new lessons are being posted. Okay, hello everyone. Hello, Muhammad. Hello, hello, Tetwin. Hello, May. Welcome everyone. Okay, so uh, we have a very international group here. So if you want to leave your country in the comments, we can see uh, how many different countries are watching this lesson. So hello, everyone. Okay, so uh, we're going to get into it. We have one expression that we're going to learn today, and that is jump the gun, jump the gun. Does anyone know what jump the gun means? To jump the gun, to jump the gun. So uh, this expression uh, comes from, uh, do you know, track and field, track and field. So track and field is a sport where people run uh, on a track, right? So, uh, I don't know about nowadays, but in the past, they used to have um, a, a little gun. It's, I don't think it's a real gun, but uh, everyone would be lined up, ready to start the race or ready to start their sprint. And uh, the person uh, who says, ready, set, they would have a gun. Ready, set, and shoot the gun. And the gun shot signals the start of the race or the sprint, whatever they're doing. Um, so if you jump the gun, that means you start before the gun is shot. So it's kind of like a false start. You started something too soon, okay? So if you jump the gun, that means you started running before it was time to actually start, okay? So this expression came from track and field. So if you jump the gun, that means um, that you start doing something before you actually should do that, okay? So you're acting too soon. You did something too early, too soon. Okay, so usually we don't want to jump the gun. Okay, very good. So um, I'll show you our big whiteboard that we have. Okay, so here we are. Okay, jump the gun. So I have the definition up here with some similar words. Okay, jump the gun. And remember that this is informal, informal. We can use this in conversation. I would not recommend using it uh, in an email or <laughs> um, business, business email or for a test. This is informal. So just remember that. You might hear this a lot in conversation. Okay. So jump the gun. Act before the proper or appropriate time. Act before the proper or appropriate time. So similar words would be act too soon, act too soon, or over hasty, over hasty. Okay, so uh, this is informal for acting too soon. Yes, it's kind of uh, more in spoken language. You can see it written down sometimes, but maybe not in um, official or academic things, right? More in speaking, everyday conversation. Okay, jump the gun. So I have three examples. So we can look at these examples. You can get a better idea of how to use jump the gun. All right, so number one. You met her just two weeks ago, and you are already talking about marriage? Wow, that's really fast. Don't you think you're jumping the gun? 
Don't you think you're jumping the gun? Don't you think you're acting too quickly, acting too soon? So if you just meet someone two weeks ago and already talking about marriage, wow, that's really fast. Are you sure? Don't you think you're jumping the gun, jumping the gun? Okay. Number two, I don't want to jump the gun by quitting my job before I have something else lined up. So this one might be new for some of you. Um, when you have something lined up, lined up, um, it means you have the next thing ready. So if you quit your job, you probably should have another job lined up already. Okay, another job ready for you to go to after you quit your current job. So I don't want to jump the gun by quitting my job before I have something else lined up. So if you don't have another job lined up, quitting your current job maybe is jumping the gun. You're acting too quickly, okay? So be careful with that. All right, and the last one. He jumped the gun and paid for my plane ticket before I could check my schedule, okay? So this one might be easy to understand. Somebody invites you somewhere and they already book a reservation or they pay for something. In this case, he jumped the gun and paid for my plane ticket before I could check my schedule. So before I could confirm if I'm available or not, he jumped the gun and paid for my plane ticket. He acted too quickly. Okay, <clears throat> very good. So um, we have these three examples. I hope they were understandable. Jump the gun, acting before the proper or appropriate time. So acting too soon. So. Um, if the people who are watching this now want to make an example and put it in the comments, I can put it up on the screen and we can look at your examples together, okay? So please write a sentence or think of an experience you had when you jumped the gun or when somebody else jumped the gun and please write it in the comments, okay? Jump the gun. Let's see what kind of examples you guys can think of. It's a very interesting uh, um, uh, expression, I think, because it comes, we have a lot of expressions in English that come from sports. Um, so uh, like jump the gun is from track and field. And we have a lot like with baseball, things like that. So maybe I'll do a lesson on those, okay, sometime. But if you guys can think of an example of jumping the gun, jumping the gun, please write it in the comments, okay? And if you have some questions, um, I can try and answer them as much as I can. Okay, very good. Yes, so uh, Devashka asked, informal means spoken language? Yes, so uh, informal or casual, English is mostly used in spoken language or, you know, between friends or family members. So not on official documents or on the news, things like that. Okay. Very good. Oh, happy Women's Day. Is it Women's Day today? I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, let's see. Ah. Uh, I'm jumping the gun when I solve the exam before the teacher gave us the order to start. Yes. So if you start writing on your exam before uh, your teacher says, okay, you can start, you would be jumping the gun. Very good example. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Ah, I want to jump the gun in your online training IR education. So jump the gun usually is not something that we want to do. So maybe if you want to do something very quickly, 
Um, sometimes that can be a good thing, but jump the gun is acting before you should. Okay, so usually we don't want to jump the gun. Very good. Ah, okay, I jumped the gun when I paid money before I received my product. Yes, so um, maybe in your sentence, I would, I would just correct it because of um, the first part, I jumped the gun is in the past tense. So I jumped the gun when I paid money before I received my product. Very good. So yes, if you pay money in advance, and maybe you're not sure if it's a trustable source, and you pay money, but you didn't receive your product yet, you might have jumped the gun. Very good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Ah, mom didn't know the cost, but she paid too much to the waiter and the waiter didn't repay the extra. Ah, mom was jumping the gun. Yeah, so if you pay too much and they keep the money, uh, you might have jumped, your mom may have jumped the gun by paying before she knew the cost. Yes, that's kind of acting too soon. Oh, it's probably $20 but it was actually only $10. Uh, you kind of jumped the gun. Very good. Um, before COVID-19, maybe before COVID-19 hit Myanmar, I wore masks wherever I went. My friend said, I jumped the gun. You can say, it. my friend said, I jumped the gun but I thought protection is better than cure. Oh, very good, very good. So uh, yeah, some people might say um, uh, when COVID-19 hadn't reached some countries yet and people were being extra careful, some people could say those people were jumping the gun. Hey, you're acting too quickly. But in this case, it was probably a good idea. Very good. Okay, we'll do one last quick one because I have to go teach another lesson. Uh, let's see. Uh, very good. You just, you just met her. You just met her, M-E-T. You just met her and you start criticizing her behavior. Uh, you don't think jump the gun for Maybe you mean attitude. Uh, yes, so if you just meet someone and you start criticizing them right away, you might be jumping the gun. Hey, just wait a second, slow down. You don't know her that well. You should get to know her before you criticize. Very good, you're jumping the gun. You're acting too soon. Excellent, okay, so. Uh, I have to end the lesson here today now. Um, if you want, there will be another lesson on YouTube later. So if you can subscribe, that will uh, let you know when the lesson is available, okay? So I hope you are looking forward to that lesson later. And um, there will be another live lesson on Facebook tomorrow, okay? So thank you so much for watching today. I, I hope you guys keep leaving some uh, examples in the comments, okay? Very good. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you again in a few hours. Take care, everyone. Bye. Hello, students. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Okay, so um, before we get into today's lesson, uh, of course, I have to remind you, if you could please subscribe to the YouTube channel, um, that really helps me out a lot. Um, and if you want to follow me on Facebook, um, TikTok, I'm everywhere, so it should be linked somewhere. So please follow me. Hello, Tatetwin. Hello, Umar. Hi, how are you guys? Um, yes. And if you could like this video and share it with um, your friends who are learning English, 
that also really helps me out. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys for coming. Oh, it's raining today in your hometown. Oh, no. Uh, it's not raining here today, but um, it's really hot. <laughs> it's really hot today. OK. Oh, I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Okay, so um, we did a lesson the other day on reported speech. I think it was yesterday. We did a lesson on reported speech and we talked about the grammar of um, changing uh, somebody's direct statement into reported speech, okay? So um, we're going to have a little bit of a quiz on that today. I have five questions for you. So it's not, um, it's not a ton of questions, but I think it's going to be um, uh, an interesting quiz for you guys. Hello, hello. Um, oh, hello from Peru, from Cambodia. Yeah, shout out your countries. Hello from Iraq. Welcome, welcome. Okay, yeah, on hot days, we have to drink a lot of water. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll get into it. All right, hello from the Philippines. Okay, so um, we have reported speech quiz. Okay, um, so uh, here, we're going to get into the questions, all right? So remember, there are five questions. And hopefully, if you watched yesterday's lesson on reported speech, you'll be able to get 100% today. So let's try, OK? Reported speech. Question number one. OK, question number one. I'm going to visit my cousin. This is the direct conversation, okay? I'm going to visit my cousin. She said that she, mm -hmm, visit her cousin, okay? So we have, she said that she will go to visit her cousin, is going to visit her cousin, was going to visit her cousin. Now remember, this is reported speech, so we need to change some things around, okay? Wow, everybody, good job. Wow, I see that you are paying attention in the class. Excellent, excellent. Hello from Sri Lanka, very good. So the answer to question number one is, of course, C. I think everybody in the chat got it right. Very good, very good. She said that she was going to visit her cousin. Very good, very good. Okay, so let's try question number two. You guys did such a good job. Um, if you got it wrong, that's okay. You can go back and you can check our last lesson. Um, but here we have going to, going to visit. So this is in the future. So to simply change this to, um, reported speech, we're going to say was or were going to, okay? The other ones are incorrect. Okay, question number two. I see you. I see you, okay? We're going to change this to reported speech. So, he said that he, me. So, he said that he is seeing me. He said that he saw me. He said that he sees me. Hmm. Okay. So we have A, B, or C. Is seeing, saw, or sees? Oh, very good. I see some correct answers. Nice job, everyone. Wow, you were really paying attention. Great. So the answer to question number two is, of course, saw. Very good. So when we have something in the present simple, I see you. The correct answer would be the, the past simple, the simple past. He said that he saw me. Okay, so is seeing me, sees me, those are not correct. Very good. Okay, question number three. 
I am talking. I am talking. Okay, we're gonna change it to reported speech. She said that she was talking. She said that she would talk. She said that she talks. Hmm. So in the reported speech, I am talking. How do we change this one? How do we change the present continuous? Hmm. Very good. Oh, excellent, excellent. Okay. You guys are very good. Excellent. Okay, so the answer to question number three, I think everybody is getting it right. Excellent. She said that she was talking. Very good. We have present continuous. So we're going to change it to was talking or they were talking. I was talking. She was talking. Very good. Oh, hello from Myanmar and Cambodia. Hello. Excellent. You guys are on a roll. Very good. Okay. Question number four. There are only two questions left. Question number four. Oh my gosh, I gave away the answer. <laughs> I didn't mean to tap there. Uh-oh. Okay, question number four. I have seen it. I have seen it. Okay, the answer, he said that he something. So, he said that he had saw it, he said that he has seen it, or he said that he had seen it. Okay. <laughs> so I think I gave away the answer. Ugh, silly me. I gave away the answer. Um, but if you're just joining us, maybe you didn't see it. Okay. Uh, I'm very klutzy. This is maybe a new word for you. I am a klutz. That means I um, I often make uh, silly mistakes like that or I drop things. I'm a klutz. <laughs> so sometimes I reveal the answer before I meant to. Okay, so uh, he had, uh, sorry, he said that he, C is correct. Very good, everybody. So he said that he had, seen it. Very good. So have seen, we're going to change to had seen it. Okay. He said that he had seen it. If this was a tricky one, go back and review the last lesson on reported speech. Um, I explain everything there in detail. Okay. And we're going to the last question, question number five. Okay. If you get this one right, you guys are great. Okay, so the direct speech is, I will meet you there. I will meet you there. Okay, reported speech, she said that she, me there. She said that she would meet me there. She said that she would have met me there. She said that she will have met me there. Hmm. Is this an easy one or is this a little bit difficult? Hmm. If you are paying attention uh, to the last class, I think it should be okay. Very good, everybody. Okay. I see so far everyone that I see in the chat has the correct answer. Awesome. I will meet you there. So the correct answer would be would meet. Very good. She said that she would meet me there. Very good. So remember, um, when we use will in direct speech, I will do something. We're going to change it to would, okay? Can will become could, right? Will, would, okay? Excellent. Who got five answers right? Who got all five right? Um, let me know what kind of score you got. And um, if you want to practice making some uh, reported speech in the comments, 
please go ahead and do so. Oh, nice. Five out of five, correct. Very good, very good. That's impressive. Oh, yay, five out of five. I'm so happy to see that. You are always in the lessons. Thank you for watching every time. Five out of five, excellent. I got five out of five, thanks to teacher. Oh, I'm so glad, okay. Very good, everybody. Wow. Oh, very good. I see four out of five, five out of five, three out of five. Very good. If you have, um, if you need any more help, um, you can go back and watch the last lesson on reported speech. There, everything is in detail. Okay. Oh, I got three because I'm late. Yeah, if you joined late, maybe you didn't see all of the questions. That's okay. You can rewatch this lesson also. Ah, I made a mistake in the last one. No problem. Mistakes are easy. I made a mistake because I showed the answer, I think, for number three or four. <laughs> okay. Okay, wow. Uh, my friend says that, reported speech, my friend says that teacher Bree's lessons are so interesting and it can help us for improving English listening and writing skills. Very good. So my friend says that. Excellent. Says that. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yes, we would use would for will. That is correct, William. Uh, oh, we have another example. My sister said that she was moody during a period time. Ah, yes, yes. Very good. She was moody. So if you don't know what moody means, um, moody is like your um, emotions are a little bit unstable. So kind of you could be happy one minute, angry the next. That is moody. Moody. Very good. Oh, I got one out of five because I came late. No problem. You can watch the lesson again anytime. Try and get all five right. Um, if you made any mistakes, I would suggest going and reviewing the previous lesson and then come back and try to take it again and see if you get a better score. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, by the way, if you have any lesson suggestions, um, if you want to learn something in particular, um, please comment it below this lesson. I'll be looking for um, new uh, lesson suggestions. Uh, and I'll try and make um, those lessons for you as soon as I can. Sometimes it takes me a bit because I have quite a long list already. Uh, oh, everyone said that learning a, a new language, very good. Everyone said that I made a, um, TikTok. If you don't follow me on TikTok, you can find me TikTok B R I S underscore English. That's my TikTok. Um, so we learned other ways to say easy, right? So it's not rocket science. That means it's not that difficult. It's kind of easy, right? Very good. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Um, oh, please deliver a lesson on pronunciation. So um, I just posted a pronunciation lesson over on YouTube, um, uh, on YouTube just the other day, I think. So if you can find that, um, I think that will help you too. Okay, so um, I will uh, think of uh, a new lesson for tomorrow's live stream. But if you have a suggestion, I'll try and do that one too. Ah, I have started to notice reported speech grammar in articles since yesterday. Oh, very good. Um, are you talking about news articles? Because um, yes, in news articles, when they report about something that somebody said, they will use um, that grammar. Great job. Okay. Oh, could we learn the difference between adverbs and adjectives? 
That's a good one. I will write that down right now, actually. Um, I'll try to make that lesson as soon as possible. Okay, adverbs or adjectives. Good thinking, good idea. Adjectives or adverbs. Okay, very good. Okay, so I'm going to end the lesson here. Um, please uh, watch and like and review if you can and share it with your friends. I really, really appreciate it. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I will see you again uh, a little bit later on YouTube and again tomorrow on Facebook and also on TikTok. <laughs> okay, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you later. Bye everyone. Hello everyone. How is everybody doing today? How are you? Okay, so um, we're gonna get into the lesson today and today we're going to go over um, some adjectives that end in A-B-L-E, that end in able, okay? So we're gonna look at some of those today. Hello, 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 Joelle. Hello, Hazel, is that how you say it? Devaska, hello, always good to see you. Uza, um, Fatihi, Jalil, hello, Sharin. Joshua, hello, Gerardo. Siobhan Patrick, hello, Syed. Hello, Ahmed. Afrat. Nice to see all of you guys today. How are you guys doing? I hope you are all having a wonderful day. I'm good. Um, it's a little bit hot actually today, so I'm kind of feeling the heat today. <laughs> hello. Hello, English teachers. Hello, David. Hello. From India. From Myanmar. Hello. So. Um, today, um, as I was saying, we're going to go over some adjectives that end in um, able, that end in A-B-L-E, okay? So when adjectives end in able, um, basically it means um, capable of something or tend to do something. So um, that's, that's why we put able at the end, okay? Hello, Pradeep. Hello, hello. Okay. Oh, how's the weather in my country? Um, so right now I'm in Japan and it's a little bit warm today. Hello from Myanmar. Hello from Iraq. Hello, Annie. Okay, so let's get into our lesson, right? Okay, whoa, I just hit my computer. Uh <laughs> That's that's how you know it's live, right? <laughs> okay, so can you guys see me okay? All right, so today we're gonna go over um, sociable, laughable, and noticeable, okay? Sociable, laughable, noticeable. So maybe you know the word notice, maybe you know the word laugh, and maybe you know that uh, social, social um, or society, we have that S-O-C-I. So social society, um, that all means like you like to hang out with people, right? Oh, hello from Thailand. Oh, it's cold at Lake Geneva now. Oh, it must be cold. <laughs> okay, so Let's go over the meanings really quick. So if we have something that ends with able, usually it means um, capable of something or tending to be something, right? So if we have sociable, sociable, sociable. So um, I know this word looks a little bit funny. So sometimes my students say sociable, but it's sociable, sociable, sociable. Okay, so sociable means, um, uh, usually we use this as a personality trait. So if someone is sociable, 
That means that they uh, are very friendly. They like to meet and hang out with other people. They are sociable, okay? So maybe you know the word social or society. So groups of people gathering. So sociable is a personality trait. I am sociable, I'm not sociable, okay? So sociable is usually a positive thing, a positive thing. You, um, If someone is sociable, that is good. They, they are very friendly, okay? Oh, hello, Frederick from Switzerland. Hello, hello. Okay. Next, we have laughable, laughable. So you probably know the word laugh. Ha, 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 ha. So if something or someone is laughable, that means that that thing or that person is um, so ridiculous that it's funny. Okay. So um, for, for example, um, the president's speech was laughable. It was so ridiculous. All you can do is laugh, right? Ah, okay. Um, sociable and friendly, are they the same? Yeah, so sociable and friendly are synonyms. Yes. Okay, very good. So um, the next one is noticeable. Noticeable. So you know the word notice. Oh, you see something, right? So being able to be noticed is noticeable, okay? So if something is very obvious, if something is obvious, if something is very clear or, um, you know, you can't miss it, then it is noticeable, okay? Um, there has been a noticeable change in um, American politics, for example. Okay. Ah, this is a good question from Anna. Is laughable positive? Okay. So laughable is usually not positive. I would say laughable is more on the negative side. So um, somebody tries to do something or somebody does something and other people think it's laughable. So it's kind of the same as ridiculous. Ridiculous. Okay. Very, very good. Okay, so um, sociable, laughable, noticeable. Sociable is positive, laughable is usually negative, and noticeable is, well, it's not really positive or negative, it just uh, means something is able to be noticed. So it depends if that is a good thing or a bad thing, right? Okay, very good. Okay, awesome. Okay, very good. I see everybody's doing well. Okay, so let's go on to this one. Okay, so we have, scooching over again. Okay, we have, let's see, sociable, willing to talk with people, friendly. Okay, so somebody who is willing to talk with people, somebody who is friendly, is a sociable person. Okay, um, let's see. Sociable and flexible, are they the same? Uh, they are not the same. So sociable means you like to gather with people, you like to talk with people. Flexible means that um, you are able to adjust like your schedule, or um, your ideas, so a little bit different, okay? So, very good. Laughable, laughable. So ridiculous as to be amusing. So something is so crazy or so ridiculous that all you can do is laugh, right? Okay, so um, for, for example, um, uh, let's see. I haven't I haven't studied French since high school. I haven't studied French since high school. Um, so if I went to France and I tried to talk with the local people in French, maybe my French would be laughable. You wouldn't be able to take me seriously because I'm so bad at French, right? So it's so ridiculous if I speak French. It's so ridiculous that it's kind of amusing, okay? 
Uh, yes, sociable has the same meaning um, with outgoing. Very good, yes. So I think sociable and outgoing are also synonyms, okay? Then we have noticeable, noticeable, able to be noticed. So easily seen or noticed, clear and apparent, okay? Very, very good. So if you have no questions, ah, uh, yes, these are all adjectives. All three of them are adjectives, okay? Let's see, okay, so, ooh, okay, number one. There is a rip in her dress. There is a rip in her dress. Okay. Oh, Frederick, very good. Nis, very good. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, very good. Ashin, Saya. Excellent. Okay, Anna, good job. So the first one is there is a noticeable. So notice, just spell it regular, notice, and then add able. Okay. Can you see? Oh, that looks like an R almost. Okay, let me erase it. It's hard to write. <laughs> there is a noticeable rip in her dress. That means uh, it is easy to see, it is obvious. Maybe anyone who looks at her will notice that she has a rip in her dress. <gasps> so, uh-oh, we should help her, right? <laughs> okay, number two. Although I look like a person, this is I'm very shy. I'm very shy. Although I look like a person, I'm very shy. Okay. Oh, Aliawan, very good. Sociable, uh, very good. Anna, Valentina, Mauricio, Frederick, awesome. Sue. Okay, very, very nice. Gerardo, okay. Although I look like a Sociable, sociable, oops. Although I look like a sociable person, I'm very shy. So please tell me in the comments if you are a sociable person or if you are shy. So I might look like I am a sociable person, but actually I am very shy. <laughs> okay, how about number three? His attempt, so he tried, his attempt at dancing was ooh, maybe not so good, right? His attempt at dancing was, so when he tried to dance, it was something. Number three. Oh, very good. I think uh, Frederick, very good. Let's see. Oh, I'm getting some different answers. Okay, so we're kind of split. Noticeable and laughable. Okay, so um, his uh, you could say, I guess, his attempt at dancing was noticeable. Okay, yeah, I can see where you would think that one. So if you say his attempt at dancing was noticeable, that means that everybody noticed he was trying to dance. But maybe the best answer of these his attempt at dancing was oh, ooh, laughable, laughable. So he, he wasn't very good. He looked ridiculous. Uh, all we can do is kind of laugh, <laughs> the poor guy. His attempt at dancing was laughable. So maybe um, either he was really, really bad or he didn't put in a lot of effort. So it was what he was doing. His dancing was so ridiculous that it was kind of amusing, okay? <laughs> so Frederick said, that could be me. My partner needs to wear security shoes. <laughs> okay, number four. She is a hmm, girl who enjoys hosting parties. I think this one is pretty easy, right? She is a girl who enjoys 
hosting parties. Oh, very good, Anna. Very good. Uh, how do you say your name? Andre? Andre? Uh, Tiut? Jadong? Valentina? Very good. Nocta? Okay. So she is a sociable, sociable girl. She is a sociable girl. So she enjoys um, talking with people. She is very friendly. She is outgoing. She is a sociable person. She's a sociable girl who enjoys hosting parties. Okay. How about number five? Do you think this this is stain. I couldn't even read it myself. Do you think this stain is? Hmm. So do you guys know what a stain is? Do you think this stain is? Hmm. Oh, very good, Anna. Yes, yes, yes. Very good, uh, Josette, Janang, Asma. Sumyat, Devaska, very good. Jose, Mauricio, Hain, Lorena. Okay, so do you think this stain is noticeable? So do you think people will be able to notice this stain? So um, this is, you know, if we say, do you think this stain is noticeable? You could also say, do you think people will notice this stain? Do you think people will be able to notice this stain? So instead of making that long sentence, um, we could just change it to noticeable. Do you think this stain is noticeable? Okay, so stain, if you don't know what a stain is, um, if you uh, spill something like, for example, uh, I'm wearing a kind of white blouse today, so if I was drinking coffee and I spilled coffee on me, oh no, maybe I, I would ask, is this stain noticeable? Can you see it? Okay. Number six, they thought his idea was <laughs> ridiculous. Okay. They thought his idea was ridiculous, foolish. <laughs> Okay, I see uh, a lot of people asking what stain is. Um, I'll answer that again in a second. Mauricio, good job. Anna, Hisumyat, Rashid, very good. Devaska, Mauricio. Okay, so, oops, 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 oops. They thought his idea, oh, I'm erasing it with my hand again, was laughable. It was not a good, uh, not a good idea. So maybe they thought um, his idea, his idea was ridiculous. His idea was too crazy. Okay, it's laughable. I could, I could, I could laugh at your idea. I could laugh. I am capable of laughing at it. Right. So um, you can think of able at the end as being capable of something. So sociable, capable of being social, laughable, capable of laughing at something, noticeable, capable of being noticed. Okay, I hope that helps. So um, really quick, um, I saw a lot of people in the chat that were asking um, uh, what a stain was. Yes, so Anna actually just answered it. So um, some marks that are very clear and difficult to wash. Yes, very good. So um, if you, for example, uh, my example was like, uh, if, if I'm drinking coffee and I spill coffee on my white blouse. So coffee is a dark color, right? So it's easy to notice and it might leave a big splotch, like brown spot here. So if, it, if we can't wash it out, we would call it a stain. It is, it is staying there forever. It's a stain, okay? Oh, what does rip mean? What does a rip mean? So um, I can show you. So this, I have a tissue, right? So rip means um, 
there you can have a verb and a noun for rip. So I can rip this tissue means I ripped the tissue. Now I could say the tissue has a rip. The tissue has a rip. Can you see that? Okay, so I ripped the tissue and now the tissue as a noun has a rip, okay? Very good. Hello from Pakistan. Okay. Hey, Tet. Very good. Rose is not only a sociable, maybe sociable, but also considerate girl because she always bends over backwards for other people. <gasps> very, very good. So, Hitet always uses our um, vocabulary that we've been learning. So we learned sociable, we learned considerate, and we learned to bend over backwards. Awesome. Good sentence. Okay. Ah, okay. What is the difference between thank and appreciate? Okay, so um, I'll, I'll answer this really quick. So to thank someone, um, is a verb, right? We we say thank you or to to thank someone. Um, appreciate is the same meaning. Um, what we would say instead of when we use thank thank, um, we would say thank you, thank you for something. Um, appreciate would be like I appreciate what you did. I appreciate um, your help. Mm -hmm. I hope that makes sense. I appreciate your help. Thanks for your help. Okay, but they're um, they're synonyms. They both mean that you are um, thanking somebody for something, or you you have the feeling of thanks, right? Okay, so um, I have to go very soon. Um, I saw some questions uh, still in the chat, so I'll try and answer them. Um, I have a few more lessons today, but I will try and answer your questions. Um, okay, so uh, can you please make a video about verb plus out, off, up? Yes, I will, I will do that as soon as I can, okay? So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, again, today we learned sociable, laughable, and noticeable, okay? So please try and use these uh, the next time you are speaking English, okay? Uh, let's see. Oh, hello from Peru. Okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Donald Trump was a laughable president. That is a good example. <laughs> okay. Uh, are a spot and stain similar? Yes. So if you say I have a spot on my dress or a stain on my dress, yeah, they're similar. Okay. So thank you everybody um, for watching and I'll try and answer your questions as soon as I can. Okay. Um, thank you for taking the time to watch. Please share with your friends. And um, if you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, um, I will be posting videos quite frequently over there. Okay. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys uh, next time. Bye. Hello students. Long time no see, how are you? How is it going? Let's see. So um, uh, while I let some people come in to uh, the chat, um, I'd just like to ask you if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, you can also uh, like me on Facebook and follow me there. You can turn on notifications on YouTube and Facebook, and that way you know when I go live. And um, you can also follow me on TikTok. Everything should be linked somewhere, so <laughs> I hope you guys can find me. Hello, Alex, Moya, hello, hello. Ahmed, welcome. So thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Hello from Mexico, hello from Myanmar. Hello, Alex. Thank you. I'm so glad to be back. I took some uh, a few days off because I've been 
quite sick recently, so I'm just still, I'm still recovering, but yeah. Oh, hello from Haiti. Wow. Hi, everyone. Hello from Vietnam. So, so nice to see you guys. Hello from Peru, Cambodia. Welcome, everyone. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at the top 10 English phrasal verbs. So I chose these because I think they are um, easy to use in daily life. And if you travel to the US, for example, you most definitely will hear these words. Okay, I'm just checking if my light is on because it looks pretty dark over here. Um, okay, so we're going to jump in to the lesson. So the top 10 English phrasal verbs. Uh, phrasal verbs are pretty tricky to learn, I know, um, but no problem. We can master them together. Hello from Malaysia, welcome. Okay, so let's see, top 10 phrasal verbs in English. Okay, let's look at the first one. So um, I know 10 is a lot, right? 10 is kind of a lot, um, but we're gonna go through each one and we'll look at the meaning and some example sentences. And at the end, we're going to have a quiz, okay? So stick around for the quiz at the end. Okay, wow, hello from Yemen, wow. Okay, so the first one, ooh, do you guys know this one? This is blurt out, blurt out. Um, if we say it really quickly, blurt out, blurt out. So this T is going to kind of change to a English D sound, blurred out, blurred out, blurred out, okay? Blurt out. So blurt out means to say something suddenly without thinking of the results, okay? To say something suddenly without thinking of the results. Okay, so if you're talking to someone and then you accidentally say something that uh, maybe isn't the nicest or maybe uh, you are supposed to keep a secret but you couldn't help yourself, you just said it. We would say you blurted it out, you blurted it out. Oh, hello Raju, genki desu. Okay, so examples. She blurted out, I hate this restaurant. Okay, so if you can imagine, maybe you go with your family or with a friend or with your coworker, your boss, you go to a restaurant, but you don't like this restaurant. And without thinking, you say, I hate this restaurant. <gasps> Why did I say that? So maybe you make the other person feel bad. So you blurted it out. <laughs> okay. So you said it without thinking of how it's going to impact other people, okay? He blurted it out, okay? So blurt out can be separable. It's a separable phrasal verb. So he blurted it out. He blurted out the secret, for example. Okay, very good. Let's go to the next one. Top off, top off. So uh, have you heard this one before? This one um, I think is uh, more commonly used in like the US and probably Canada. Um, I think uh, in the UK, maybe they say top, top up, maybe top up in the UK is more common than top off, okay? Oh, I like this one. <laughs> I blurted out, I really hate him. Oh no, poor guy. <laughs> Very good. Ah, she blurts out the abusive language. Yeah, maybe without thinking suddenly, she said something really negative. Okay, so top off. The meaning is to fill something completely with a liquid, okay? to fill something completely with a liquid. So for example, if you are at a cafe, uh, someone could say, excuse me, could you top up 
Oh, Ty wrote top up. It should be top off, top up off <laughs> my coffee. This up is not supposed to be here. This is the UK version. Uh, excuse me, could you top off my coffee? Could you top off my coffee? So it means filling it to the top, filling it all the way to the top. I topped off my tank at the gas station. So it means you had some, some gas in your gasoline tank, right, of your car. And then you filled it up to the top. You topped off your tank at the gas station. Very good. Oh, hello from Mexico. The next one. Uh, this one, I thought we do use this quite a bit. Um, rack up rack up so rack up means accumulate something over time so you're getting more and more of something over time okay oh yes so april said same as fill up yes so top off fill up very good so fill up um you could use if you're um glass or cup or gas tank is completely empty you can fill it up to the top top off means maybe it has some some liquid already inside of it and you just top it off uh to the top very good okay ah i topped off the glass of water after i spilt it very good okay yes can you top off my glass? Wonderful example. Okay, so here, rack up, rack up. So you're accumulating something over time. Okay, so um, I have two examples. I racked up a ton of debt in college. Okay, so I accumulated very much or a lot of debt in college. So in America, college and university is like the same thing. So uh, if you know, in the US, college is very, very expensive. Lots of students go into major debt when they go to college or university. So this is a phrase that you will hear a lot of students say, I racked up a ton of debt in college. Okay. Uh, the next one, maybe for sports, it's often used. Our team racked up 14 points in the first half. So this is in the first half of the game. Our team got accumulated 14 points. Okay. Ah, I racked up a few coins in a go. Oh, very good. In a go. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Okay. Oh, I like this. Would you mind topping off my cup of coffee? Perfect. Very good with top off. Uh, let's see. Very good. So rack up means you're accumulating. You're getting something over time. Very good. Okay, let's go to the next one. The next one is end up. End up. So this one is a little tricky because um, it means to reach a place. So a physical place or a condition or a situation. So remember, it's three different things. That was not planned or expected. Okay, so usually end up means um, you weren't planning this, but in the end, you were in a place or you were in a condition or in a situation. Okay, so... Let's try these two examples. She ended up dropping out of school. She ended up dropping out of school. So to drop out of school means that you quit school. So you enrolled and then you dropped out. So without graduating, uh, without getting a diploma, you dropped out of school. Okay, so it means you didn't finish. So probably that was not her plan, okay? She ended up dropping out of school, okay? Ah, 
So Ali has a question. What's the difference between somehow and somewhat? I have a whole lesson on YouTube on this, I think. Uh, but let me find the link. Yes. Um, so I can share the link for you. Um, but basically, uh, here. Here's the link. I posted it in uh, the chat. So somehow means in a way that uh, is not clear. So some method or some way, okay? Somehow, okay? Somewhat means a little. I'm somewhat tired. I'm a little tired. I'm somewhat sick. I'm a little sick. Okay, very good. Okay, so the next one was somehow, somehow. So I'm not sure exactly how, but somehow the ball ended up on the roof. Okay, so maybe somebody kicked the ball really hard or they hit the ball really hard and it ended up on the roof. So that uh, situation was not planned, it was not expected. So I don't know how, but somehow the ball ended up on the roof. Okay, very good. So end up, end up. This is um, one we use quite a lot, quite a lot. Uh, let's see. Can we always use gerund from after the phrase end up? So um, you can use a gerund or um, a noun, for example, ended up on the roof, ended up on the roof, ended up getting sick would be a gerund. Okay, very good. But we wouldn't put like ended up to plus a verb. We would never say that, okay? All right, let's take a look at the next one. Ooh, get away with, get away with. So in American English, when we pronounce this really, really quickly, this T is going to become a D sound, an English D sound. Get a, get a, get away with, get away with, okay? The meaning is to escape punishment or other repercussions. So a repercussion is similar to a punishment. It's like a consequence, something that happens because of your actions. So um, usually we use get away with when you do something wrong and you are able to escape without anyone um, doing anything to you. Okay, let's take a look at the examples. Some people think he got away with murder. Ooh, some people think he got away with murder. So for example, um, uh, I was watching the, the People versus O.J. Simpson on Netflix, I think it's called. Um, so if you don't know, in America in the 90s, um, there was a famous American football player named O.J. Simpson, and uh, he went to court because um, he was suspected of murder, but he ended up not being found guilty. He was found innocent, but the people's opinion, general public, thought he got away with murder, okay? He escaped punishment, okay? I won't let you get away with that. So this is something that maybe teachers might say to you or parents might say to children. So I know, for example, when I was a child, sometimes I didn't want to go to school to take a test. So I would say, oh, mom, I'm sick. <laughs> but my mother would say, I won't let you get away with that. So she wouldn't let me escape. <laughs> okay, very good. Ah, excellent, excellent. Good morning from Egypt. Okay, so usually get away, get away with means that you did something and then you, uh, if you did get away with it, that means you escaped any punishment. So um, maybe you did something not good, 
<laughs> and then you were able to do that successfully. Okay. So um, I got away with not doing my homework because uh, my teacher was absent. My teacher was absent. So my teacher was sick and didn't come to school. So whew, I got away with not doing my homework today. Okay. Ah, I see. Okay. If someone wants kidnapping, you can say him, get away with from me. Ah, so I think you might mean get away from me. So if somebody is coming close to you and you want to say, no, 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 get away from me, stay away, get away from me, you would say get away from me. But here, get away with something, get away with something, okay? Yes, similar to like avoid, that's right, avoiding punishment, yes, okay? So let's take a look at the next one. Ooh, pull off, pull off. So the meaning is to succeed in doing something difficult. Oop, this should say or unexpected. To succeed in doing something difficult or unexpected. Okay, so it's a little different than get away with. Get away with means you escape punishment. Pull off means you succeeded doing something difficult, okay? So, I can't believe we pulled this off. So here you can see that pull off is a separable phrasal verb, so we can put something between it. I can't believe we pulled this off. I can't believe we succeeded, okay? And then the next one, the robbers pulled off the heist. The robbers pulled off the heist. So a heist is like a robbery. For example, a bank robbery or if they stole diamonds or artwork, that would be a heist. A heist. Okay? So the robbers pulled off the heist. So the robbers successfully stole things. <laughs> so that would be a difficult task, right? At like a museum or a bank or a jewelry store. Okay. Pull off. So pull off means you succeeded. You did something and it worked. Okay. Very good. Ah. Oh, good one. I pulled this off last night. Yes. So you succeeded at something last night. Wonderful. Okay. So the next one, let's look at the next one. Ooh, this is a tricky one. Wait on. It's not tricky if you understand it, but if you just hear it, wait on, wait on. Um, again, this T becomes a D sound. Wait on, wait on, wait on. Okay. So wait on does not mean wait, okay? It doesn't mean wait. Wait on um, means to serve food or drink. And another meaning is to tend to, okay? So um, this is where the word waiter and waitress comes from. So a waiter or a waitress their job is to wait on customers, okay? So serving customers, wait on customers, okay? Uh, we can look at the first example. I always wait on them when they come to the cafe. So maybe this person is a waiter or a waitress and they have regular customers. I always wait on them, so I always serve them when they come to the cafe, okay? Ah, good question. What does tend to mean? So when you tend to someone, it means that you are taking care of them. 
Um, maybe you're doing something for them. Um, we can say like tend to a garden. That means you're taking care of a garden. Okay. So we can see this in the second example. This, um, this is kind of an expression. So this hotel is so luxurious. So very fancy, maybe very expensive. They wait on you hand and foot. So here, this is an idiom to wait on someone hand and foot. This means that someone takes care of everything for you. So if you go to a really, really nice hotel, Maybe it's a little expensive, but um, they will take your luggage for you. They will give you um, breakfast in your hotel room. They will serve you dinner. Maybe they will give you uh, anything you want, free coffee. So whatever you want, they will take care of for you. So this is a good situation when we would use this idiom wait on someone hand and foot, okay? So for example, um, when I'm sick, my husband waits on me hand and foot. So it takes care of all of my needs, right? Okay, do you wait on anyone hand and foot? Do you take care of someone uh, all the time? Or do you know of a place that waits on you hand and foot? Okay. Oh, very good. He pulled off. Uh, so here, we wouldn't use from. He pulled off the eyelets exam. Very good. It means he successfully did it. Okay. Oh, hello. I'm a new student. Welcome. Oh, what can I wait you on? Ah, so um, maybe instead of saying, what can I wait you on? I would say, excuse me, uh, may I wait on you? May I wait on you? Maybe that could be a good way to ask. Okay, very good. All right, let's look at the next one. This one, I think you hear a lot. This one is think over, think over. So usually when we use the preposition over, um, it means to do something again and again and again, over and over. <laughs> so to think over means consider something carefully before making a decision. So you think and think and think and think, and then you can make a decision. You think something over. Okay, so examples. I have to think the offer over before I accept it. I have to think the offer over before I accept it. So if somebody gives you an offer, uh, I need to think it over. I need some time to think and to see if it's a good idea. Okay? Ah, yes. Think about, ooh, my gosh. So is think about similar to think over. Yes. So if somebody says, I have an offer for you, you could say, I need to think about it. Or you could say, I need to think it over. Both are okay. Okay, good question. Um, let's see. The next one, think it over and get back to me. Okay, so think about it, carefully think about it, think it over and get back to me. Do you know what get back to me means? So let me know, get back to me. Maybe contact me again after you thought about it. Get back to me. Think it over and get back to me. Okay. Ah. We think over before deciding to protest maybe would be a good sentence. We, or we thought it over before deciding to protest. Okay. Uh, 
It's a good idea to think over before to take the vaccine. Ah, maybe it's a good idea to think it over. Think it over. Okay. Yes, get back, get back to someone means reply, reply to someone or contact them again. Okay, good job. Ah, yes, uh, it's very similar to sleep on it. Maybe if you say, um, I need to sleep on it. Maybe it takes one day to decide something. Um, think it over, maybe a few days, who knows? <laughs> very good. Okay, next one, put up with, put up with. So again, this T is going to become a D sound in American English, put up with, put up with, put up with, okay? This means to tolerate or condone or to accept something, put up with. We usually say like put up with behavior, behavior or attitude, okay? So uh, the first example, you shouldn't put up with that behavior. You shouldn't put up with that behavior, okay? So you shouldn't tolerate that behavior. You shouldn't condone that behavior. You shouldn't accept that behavior. That behavior is not good. You shouldn't put up with it, okay? The next one, she has put up with his bad attitude for a long time. She's put up with his bad attitude for a long time. So she's tolerated it for a long time, okay? So you usually put up with something that you don't really like that much, okay? Oh, that's a good one. I can't put up with your laziness. Excellent example. I can't put up with your laziness anymore. Very good. Okay. Can we say I have to think over the offer before accepting it? Yes, that is perfect. Very good. I have to think over the offer before accepting it. Perfect. Okay. Are we ready? Ooh, this one, chicken out, chicken out. So to chicken out, you might think is a little bit strange. Have you heard this uh, phrasal verb before? Because chicken becomes the verb, even though a chicken is a bird, right? Um, so chicken out. So this means to decide not to do something because you are too scared. So I'm not sure why we say this in English, but um, to chicken out means that you are too afraid to do something. And if we call someone a chicken, it means that they are scared, okay? So a lot of times when we are children, we'll say, oh, why don't you, why don't you do this? Are you a chicken? So a uh, chicken means somebody who's scared, okay? So this means to decide not to do something because you are too scared, okay? So we have two examples here. He was going to go skydiving, but he chickened out at the last minute. Ooh, I think I might chicken out if I go skydiving. <laughs> so skydiving, if you don't know, is when you have the parachute on your back and you jump out of the plane and you release the parachute and you glide back to earth, okay? Uh, I think you have to be very, very brave to go skydiving. Um, but if you are thinking, yeah, let's go skydiving, I'm going to go. But then you get on the airplane and you look down. <gasps> oh my gosh, it's really high up. I don't want to do this anymore. So you could chicken out, chicken out. Oh, I can't do this. What are you chicken chickening out? Okay. So here's the next, we can also just say it as like an exclamation. Don't chicken out. 
don't chicken out, okay? Yes. So can I use as past chickened out? Yes. So here, chicken is a verb. It's a phrasal verb. So um, normally chicken is a noun, right? It's a bird. But here, as a phrasal verb, only as a phrasal verb, we can use chicken in the past tense as chickened, okay? He chickened out, he chickened out, okay? I chickened out on typing an example. I did it though, yes, very good. Yes, so maybe if you're joining one of my live lessons and you, you think you want to make an example sentence, but then you see lots of people typing and you get a little nervous, you get afraid, maybe you are shy and you chicken out. Oh, I chickened out on typing an example. Very good. Ah, I want to, maybe I wanted to buy the car, but I chickened out. Yeah, so maybe if uh, you want to buy a car, but at the last minute you're like, oh no, I'm a little bit afraid. I'm gonna, I'm gonna waste my money. Oh, what should I do? You chickened out, okay? Ah, I usually chicken out when I come across a dog. Very good sentence. Excellent. I usually chicken out. So uh, maybe you're walking and you want to go this way, but then you see a dog. So you chicken out and you decide to go a different way. Yes. Good example. Okay. Ah. So chicken out is the same meaning as, I think you mean freak out, F-R-E-A-K, freak out. So freak out is like, ah, like this, but chicken out means you are scared and then you decide not to do something, okay? So freak out is kind of just your reaction, ah, and then chicken out is like, oh, no, I'm not gonna do it. I decided I'm not going to do it. Okay, very good. Ah, I chicken out to watch this movie because it's terrible. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I am chicken out on speaking English in public. Very good. So here, because chicken out is a phrasal verb, we don't need am. Okay, so you can say I chicken out. I chicken out in speaking English uh, in public. Very good, okay. I chicken out to ride roller coasters, yes. I've chickened out of riding some roller coasters too. I chicken out when I swim in deep, maybe in the deep end, for example, the, the deep end of the pool or I chicken out when I swim in the deep ocean or the deep sea. Very good. Okay. Very good. So we have some questions. I have five questions for you. Okay. So um, let's see, there are two possible answers here for number one. Okay, so let's see if you can remember the 10 English phrasal verbs we just learned. So question number one, I, mm -hmm, plenty of frequent flyer miles. So if you don't know, frequent flyer miles is like a reward you get if you fly um, many times. So like on an airplane, if you fly many times, you can get uh, frequent flyer miles, and then you can use those to pay for uh, a flight. So we have, I top off plenty of frequent flyer miles, or I rack up plenty of frequent flyer miles. Oh, very good. I see some different answers. So Ali said it racked up. Um, Ahmed said topped off, rack up, A, B, B. Okay. So if you remember, the correct answer is, oops, 
racked up. Yes, I think I changed the tense here. Okay, racked up. I racked up plenty of frequent flyer miles. So rack up means that you accumulate, you get. So you ride one airplane, you get some frequent flyer miles. You ride another airplane, you get some more. You're making a pile of them. Okay, top off, remember, is for liquid, liquid. So I, I topped off my coffee. So I poured some more coffee until it reached the top. Top off is for liquid, okay? Next one, question number two. We, something, something, going home instead of the party. Oh, very good. You got it, good, good job. Okay, we ended up going home instead of the party or we put up going home instead of the party. Hmm. Okay, Chit said A, Annabelle said A. Oh, very good. I see a lot of people getting the right answer. Ended up, yes. We ended up going home instead of the party. So ended up means maybe it was not planned. It was unexpected. You were supposed to go to the party, but somehow, for some reason, you ended up going home. Okay, put up. So remember, if we're going to use this phrasal verb, we need put up with. So put up with something. So if I wrote with here, we put up with going home instead of the party. That could be grammatically correct. Um, that could make sense. It's a different meaning than ended up. Put up with maybe means um, you didn't want to go home. You wanted to go to the party, but you put up with, you tolerated going home. But there is no with here, so it's incorrect. Okay, question number three. He, <laughs> that he was bored. He blurted out that he was bored or he waited on that he was bored. Hmm. So question number three. What do you think the answer is? A or B? Blurted out, waited on. Oh, very good. Wadi, Mandi, Maria, Chit. Good job, everyone. Whoa, all the answers just came all of a sudden. Ali, very good. Annabelle, read. Okay, the correct answer is blurted out. He blurted out that he was bored. So blurt out means that you say something without thinking. Maybe you suddenly say it. Oh my gosh, why, why did I say that? Oh, did it win? Yes, today is so early. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm sorry if you're just coming in late. Okay, so blurt out means that you say it um, without thinking. You didn't think of the repercussions. You didn't think of how people would feel. You just said it. <gasps> he blurted out that he was bored. Remember that wait on, to wait on someone means to serve someone, like a waiter or a waitress. Okay, question number four. His parents let him with everything. So we have pull off or get away with. So I think there are, this with should not be here actually. Okay. Ah, do Americans, this is an interesting question. Do Americans use top up for crediting their mobile number. So I think you mean about a prepaid phone. Um, possibly, possibly. So uh, I don't use a prepaid phone, but maybe they top up their minutes. Could be. Okay, excellent. I think I gave this one away. So this correct one is get away with, get away with. So I shouldn't have written this with here, okay? His parents let him get away with everything. So they let him do things with no punishments, no punishments. 
Okay, so pull off, we wouldn't use with, first of all, um, and pull off means succeed. So it's not, it doesn't really make sense if you say his parents let him succeed, right? So his parents let him get away with, very good. Last question, we were going to go bungee jumping but everyone chickened out or everyone thought over. Hmm. Bungee jumping, if you don't know, is um, when you have um, kind of like a harness and there's like a kind of rubber band almost and you jump off like a bridge and there's like a rubber band and you boing, 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 kind of like that. <laughs> okay. We were going to go bungee jumping, but everyone, oh, very good, everyone. The correct answer is A, chickened out, chickened out. We were going to go bungee jumping, but everyone was too scared, so they decided not to do it. So that would be chickened out. Very good. So that was the last question. You guys did so well. Very good. Uh, just really quick, uh, remember that think over, to think over means to consider something carefully, okay? But here we would need thought over something or thought something over. We can't really end the sentence, okay, without um, an object. Okay, very good. How well did you do? Did you get five out of five correct? Uh um, there were 10 phrasal verbs today, 10 phrasal verbs. I know that's a lot, but I think they are pretty com um, you know, commonly used and very useful. Okay. Ah, uh, wet weekend is the same cranky. Wet weekend. Ah, uh, do you mean like, um... So cranky means you are in a bad mood. I've never heard the expression wet weekend, but I know um, sometimes we say a wet blanket. If someone is a wet blanket, it means they're not fun, um, maybe a little cranky, maybe not good to bring to a party if they're a wet blanket. Okay. Ah, chickened out is similar to get goosebumps. So goosebumps are the bumps on your skin when you're cold or when you're afraid. Maybe you get goosebumps, but goosebumps are physically um, on your skin. So the little bumps that you get when you're cold, those are goosebumps. I got goosebumps. But chicken out means I'm scared and I don't want to do something. So, um, uh, for example, my friend asked me to go scuba diving, but I am scared of going under the water, right? I'm scared of water. So I chickened out. Okay. Very good. Okay. So um, I think I'm going to call it a day here today. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching today's lesson. I, I hope that um, if you came in late, you can rewatch the lesson and get all of the phrasal verbs um, that you can. Ah. Listening and studying Teacher Bree's live lessons improves my English level from elementary to upper intermediate. I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you, but I'm poor vocabulary. No, your vocabulary is getting really good. So uh, Tete Win is a very good example. She joins almost all of the live lessons and participates. Um, I know a lot of students do that, but she also tries to use the previous vocabulary a lot. That is really, really helpful. Um, so good job, you're getting better. Okay, so thank you guys so much. Um, I will be back for the next live lesson on Friday. So 
Tomorrow I'm pretty busy, so I don't think I can do a live lesson. The next live lesson will be on Friday. Um, let me let me tell you a time because I know you guys want a time. Um, probably around noon, 12 o'clock Japan standard time. Okay. All right. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you on Friday. Um, you can also catch some English lessons on YouTube. All right. Thank you, everyone. See you next time. Bye. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today's lesson. So um, hold on one second, and then we'll just jump into it. I'm just making my screen a little bit bigger. Okay. So, okay. Uh, thank you guys for joining today's lesson. Uh, if you haven't already, please remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the Facebook page if you want to see um, when I go live. So um, I go live every day on YouTube and Monday through Friday on Facebook. So if you want to see those lessons, make sure you uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell. So that way you know when new lessons are coming. And uh, yeah, if you can share this video with someone you know who is also learning English, that would be great. Okay. So uh, today's lesson, um, we're going to look at uh, some simple vocabulary, but ones that are often confused, okay? So I do get a lot of questions about this. Uh, let me see. Okay. Oh, here's my marker. All right. So we're going to look at the difference between, between and among. Okay, so a lot of students have asked me, when do we use between and when do we use among? So they can be a little bit tricky, but I'm going to hopefully clear up any confusion you might have about these words. Okay, so um, uh, let's see, maybe I can get into my bigger board first. Let's do this. So I'm going to explain the difference between between and among. Okay. So I have it written down here. So maybe it's easier to understand, easier to see. Okay. So first of all, between is used when talking about more than one specific specific um, or individual things. Okay, so um, it needs to be more than one thing. And a lot of people um, have the wrong idea that it needs to be two things, only two things. But that's not true. You can use between for um, two things, three things, four things, as long as you're talking about specific individual things. Okay, so like when I talk about the difference between, between and among. So I'm talking about two specific words. So between and among. So these are two specific words. So we would use between. Okay, um, and just, just so you know, um, I, I use a lot of two in here just to make it easier, but it could be two or three or four things. So um, uh, for example, uh, I need to choose between the black dress, the red dress, and the white dress. Okay, I need to choose between these three things. All right, but they are specific dresses. Okay, let's look at among, okay? Among is used for things that are part of a group, a group, and it needs to be three or more things. So we wouldn't use among when we're talking about just two things. It needs to be three or more, and uh, it needs to be um, things that are part of a group. So 
uh, like I gave the example, I need to choose between the red dress, the white dress, and the black dress. Then if I want to use a mung, so I have three or more dresses, right? But I wouldn't say, uh, you know, specifically what they are. You need to put them in part of a group if you're going to use among. So I need to choose among these dresses. So you have three dresses, four dresses, five dresses, but dresses is a group, okay? Are you understanding me so far? Is it okay? I hope so. Hello for people who are just joining. Okay, so let's look at these examples, okay? Let's look at these examples. Um, number one, number one, there was tension between the two friends, okay? There was tension between the two friends. So I use between here because there are only two friends, two friends. And if there are only two, we need to use between. So remember, between can be two or more. Among needs to be three or more things. So let's look here. There was tension among the friends. These are very similar sentences, but if you'll notice, in number one, there are only two friends. There was tension between the two friends. In number two, there was tension among the friends. So among the friends implies that there are more than two friends. So maybe there are three friends, four friends, five friends, but more than two. Okay, very good, very good. All right, let's look at number three. Okay, number three. Stand between those two trees. So uh, this between here, we can use between for spatial distance, right? So you will be in the middle of something. So I, I'm standing between my friends. So maybe you have a friend here, you are in the middle, and you have another friend. You are between them, okay? You are in the middle. Let's look at number four. The cat was hidden among the crowd among the crowd. So a crowd is a group of many people, right? So a group, so this is good for using among. And also, um, the cat was hidden among the crowd. So this among is like you are kind of surrounded by people, right? Among the crowd. So there's a cat and then surrounded by many, many people, okay? So uh, there's a difference. So if I say stand between the trees, you're standing in the middle of the trees, right? If I say uh, walk among the trees, that means walk and you will be surrounded by trees, okay? So it's a little bit tricky. I can see where people get confused, but I hope it's understandable now, all right? Um, let's look at the final sentence. So this one uses both. All right. I sat between my parents. So I sat between, I'm in the middle. So maybe mom is here, I'm here, dad is over here. I sat between my parents uh, while the other passengers maybe you are on a plane or you are on a bus or a train somewhere where there are passengers. You are sitting in between your parents and uh, while the other passengers talked among themselves. So passengers, passengers themselves. This is a group of people, right? We're not talking about specific individual people, right? Um, they talked among themselves. We often say this, like, uh, talk among, among yourselves. We talked among ourselves. So talk among themselves. Maybe in a group of people, they are talking with each other, okay? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? 
let's just quickly review. So remember, between is used when talking about more than one specific or individual things. Okay, it needs to be more than one. It can be two or three or four or five or 10. Okay, among, used for things that are a part of a group, not specific individual things. And they need to be three or more things. Okay, you cannot use, you shouldn't use among for two things. All right, uh, number one. There was tension between the two friends. Two friends. Number two, there was tension among the friends. So maybe three or four friends. Uh, stand between those two trees. So stand in the middle of the trees. Okay, number four. The cat was hidden among the crowd. The cat was hidden among the crowd. So the cat was surrounded by people, a group of people. Number five, I sat between my parents while the other passengers talked among themselves. Okay, so a group of people, talking with each other. Okay, very good. We would say talk among themselves. All right, very good. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, comment your questions and uh, please try and make a sentence. This is your homework, so please do it. Go to the comments, make a sentence with between and make a sentence with among, okay? please make a sentence with both of these words, okay? Um, and I'll see if I can correct them. I will make sure to look at them. All right, very, very good. I'll leave it up here one more second for you. Okay, very good. So, all right, so that's it for today's lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Um, remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, like the Facebook page, like this video and share it with your friends, all right? Let's grow our community, okay? So thank you again and um, I'll be back tomorrow with a new lesson on uh, Facebook and YouTube, okay? See you guys tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this very impromptu English lesson. Hello, um, Muhammad Atas from Turkey. Hello, 7.45 here, wow. Is that the morning, I guess? Is it 7.45 in the morning? Um, it's about 1.45 in the afternoon here. I'm in Japan, so it's in the afternoon. Um, let's see. Okay, so um, I decided uh, to do this lesson. You guys seem to be liking um, the, the live lessons with um, like current event uh, topics. So what we're going to do today is, um, uh, Oh, hello, Mustafa. Hi. Um, we're going to do, um, we're going to look at uh, Twitter's statement and we're going to look at the vocabulary. Um, so you might have heard that uh, <laughs> Donald Trump's uh, Twitter was suspended. So Twitter actually uh, kind of deleted Donald Trump from uh, Twitter. So we're going to look at Twitter's statement and we are going to. Um, break down the vocabulary, maybe some grammar, and just use it as um, kind of a learning tool, okay? Oh, hello, uh, Isayas Garcia, hello, Nanda, nice to have you here. Devashka, hello. Bizarre, Asad, hello. How is everyone doing today? Thank you for joining me on a Sunday. Okay, so we're gonna jump into the lesson. We're going to look at just um, uh, just uh, uh, what Twitter's statement was, and we're going to uh, look at the vocabulary, okay?
so you can see <laughs> you can see uh, this um, this was Donald Trump's Twitter, right? So you can see there's no more profile picture, no more banner, and it says account suspended. Twitter suspends accounts that violate the Twitter rules. So can everyone see this all right? Um, let me check. Are you able to see? Uh, please, could you talk with native speed ratio? Yeah, um, I will, uh, sure, I will talk at a regular pace for you guys. This is kind of an advanced lesson. So um, yeah, let's take a look. We're gonna only, we're gonna only read until here, okay? Only until here. So very, very short, but we can look at some new words possibly and some, uh, maybe if you guys have some questions, I can answer them. Uh, is it better? Can you see it if I, should I do this? Maybe this way is better, okay? Um, so uh, this is a CNN article, but we're gonna read uh, Twitter's statement. So the first sentence says, Twitter has suspended President Trump from its platform. The company said Friday evening. So this first sentence, um, it's pretty easy. So Twitter has suspended President Trump. So suspend, suspended has um, several meanings. Um, for example, suspend mean, uh, could mean uh, temporarily um, stop something. So for example, uh, the construction of the bridge was suspended until further notice. So temporarily stopped. Um, it could also mean um, officially prohibit, officially prohibit. So um, for example, if, um, uh, if a police officer, if a police officer does something wrong, maybe they, they can't be a police officer anymore. So the police officer has been suspended. So officially prohibited from going back to their job, suspended. Um, I don't know about in your country, but in the US, if you uh, are a very bad student, maybe you skip school all the time, you could be suspended. They will say, please do not come back to school until further notice. Okay, so Twitter has suspended President Trump from its platform. So we call um, places like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, these are all platforms, okay? Social media platforms, all right? The company, so the company is Twitter, said Friday evening. Is it understandable so far? Okay, very good. So let's look at the next paragraph. After close review of recent tweets from the real Donald Trump account and the context around them, we have permanently suspended the account due to the risk of further incitement of violence, Twitter said. Okay, so this is a quote from Twitter. Let's, let's break it down a little bit. So after close review, so they looked very carefully um, at recent tweets from the real Donald Trump account. So Donald Trump's Twitter account and the context around them. So the context around them means um, like what happened uh, around the tweets. So what his tweets actually caused, right? Um, so uh, the context around them, we have permanently suspended. Permanently means forever, forever, permanent. So for example, if you get a tattoo on your arm, it is permanent. So permanently suspended. Uh, he can never have a Twitter account again, right? It's permanent, never again, forever. Permanently suspended the account due to, so we use due to when we talk about a reason or a cause, uh, due to traffic delays, uh, I will be late for work, for example, because, because of traffic delays. So, they suspended his account because of, due to, the risk of further, this might be a new word, incitement, oops, incitement of violence. So 
Uh, last time, let me put my face back on the screen a little bit. Oh, hello from Guatemala. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. So uh, let's see. Um, so last time in the, the last uh, lesson that we looked at the news, um, I taught you the word urge, urge. So uh, they, uh, the news article said um, President Trump urged the protesters to um, maybe be violent, right? So urge means like to put pressure or to like kind of put pressure on someone to do something. Um, it could be good or bad. I urge you to study. I urge you to um, break the law. It could be good or bad. Uh, however, the word uh, incitement, uh, incitement, let me spell it correctly. <laughs> uh, okay, incitement. Incitement means, um, incitement means uh, that um, you urge someone to break the law. So incitement is always uh, something negative. So we say like incite violence, incite hate speech, for example. So those are always bad things. So urge just means put pressure to do something. Incitement is pressure um, or urging to break the law, do something bad. So in uh, in Twitter's eyes, in Twitter's eyes, let's bring this back up. In Twitter's eyes, um, they thought uh, Donald Trump's account was uh, uh, putting risk of further incitement of violence. So um, more, more um, pushing of violence. Okay, is it understandable? Let me take a look at the chat again. Um, Ah, okay, so we have some questions. So context around them means what tweet actually caused or what are the consequences of the tweets? So um, I think both of what you're saying is the same. So um, what they cause and the consequence of them. So the context of the tweets, um, maybe he's, uh, for example, if, if he said, if Trump said, um, for example, let's all go to the Capitol, um, the context is not, hey, let's go have a picnic at the Capitol. Um, they're saying the context is, let's go to the Capitol actually means um, doing something against the law or um, uh, inciting violence, making it a violent thing, okay? I'm too kind to troll. <laughs> so funny. Okay. Um, yeah. Incitement equals encouragement. Incitement equals encouragement. Yes. So encouragement could be um, good or bad, good or bad. Um, like encouraging someone to commit a crime would be bad, but encouraging someone to do well uh, on their test is a good thing. Incitement is always going to be uh, something bad. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. So we're going to go back. Let me bring it back. Oops. Okay. So uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, okay. So everyone understand this, this part. Um, we're going to go down to the last one. Okay. Last paragraph we're going to read. In the context of horrific events this week, in the context of horrific events this week, we made it clear on Wednesday that additional violations of the Twitter rules would potentially result in this very course of action. Okay, so very small paragraph, but let's break it down. In the context of horrific events this week, so looking at what actually happened this week, Okay, we made it clear on Wednesday that additional violations 
of the Twitter rules. So uh, you can see it up here, this uh, up here, Twitter sus suspends accounts that violate, violate the Twitter rules. So when you violate a rule, that means you are breaking the rules, okay? So um, we can use uh, violations for uh, any time you break the law, right? So uh, I he violated uh, the the speed limit. So he broke the speed limit, right? He he probably was speeding. Um, so violations of the Twitter rules. Violation is a noun. To violate is the verb. Okay. Uh, violations of the Twitter rules would potentially, potentially. So potentially means possibly, possibly, possibly or potentially result in this very course of action. So this might be uh, new for some of you, very, this very course of action. So in this sentence, very means exact exact in this exact course of action so it's kind of just emphasizing this course of action so um we could say let me bring up my my face again <laughs> okay uh, 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 uh so uh we could say uh he is the very man i was looking for he is the exact man i'm looking for of course we could say uh, he is the man I'm looking for. Uh, but if you want to emphasize, oh, he is the very, exactly, that's the guy. He's the very man. So uh, this very course of action. And course of action means um, the action that they took. So suspending a Twitter account, right? Okay. So, uh, okay, let's see. Uh, let's read this one more time and then I'll answer some questions. Okay. Um, hold on one second. Let's see. Okay. Twitter has suspended President Trump from its platform, the company said Friday evening. After close review of recent tweets from the real Donald Trump account and the context around them, we have permanently suspended the account due to the risk of further incitement of violence, Twitter said. In the context of horrific events this week, we made it clear on Wednesday that additional violations of the Twitter rules would potentially result in this very course of action. Okay, so I hope that is understandable. Um, let's see. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, let me see some, uh, can you guys see me? <laughs> I'm wondering if you guys can, see, yeah, you guys can see me, right? Okay, so um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oops, there's a lot of in the chat. Okay, Ah, should we place the before very? Um, so we don't always need the, so it depends what you're talking about. So in this case, uh, it says in this very course of action, right? In this very course of action. So it is not the, but it's this. Um, if you're talking about multiple things, um, these are the very, uh, these are the very people I was looking for. So it just depends uh, what you are uh, placing after very, right? Okay, good question. Uh, can you please write the words one by one later? Sure. Uh, could you let me know which words you are interested in seeing? Uh, what does context mean? So context means um, the what is actually happening. Uh, so we have some, let's see. Uh, after close review of recent tweets from the real Donald Trump account and the context around them. So context is kind of a difficult word to explain, but context means um, in this case, what actually happened? What are the events or um, you know political climate surrounding these tweets? Okay, so what is the actual situation, right? 
I hope that ex explains it a little bit. All right. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, that means very equals this. So in this case, um, very means um, like exact. Very equals exact. So it's just placing emphasis on what you're talking about. So uh, they could have simply said um, uh, violations of the Twitter rules would potentially result in this course of action. However, they put very to mean exact and it's emphasizing this course of action, okay? Uh, let's see. Um, uh, oh, oh, oh. What is the opposite of suspend? That's a good question. Uh, sus so suspend means um, like you are uh, prohibiting something or you are, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Temporarily stopping something. So the opposite of suspend, I guess, um, what would the opposite of suspend be? Um, like, allowing something or like, uh, so for example, if I did something bad uh, on on YouTube, if I made a very terrible video on YouTube, I could get my account suspended. So the opposite, uh, if, if you get your account suspended, maybe you uh, contact YouTube or you contact Twitter, and then you want to get your account back, in that case, we would say reinstate, reinstate. But that means uh, once you got it taken away and then you get it back, reinstate. But it's not really the opposite of suspended, just what ha it's what happens after you've, you've been suspended once, okay? Uh, oh, resume, that is a good one, Nanda, very good. Yeah, if you resume, so uh, in my first example, the bridge uh, suspended construction, temporarily stopped construction. Then you could use resume once it starts again. But if you're talking about like a Twitter account or a, a YouTube account or something being suspended, maybe uh, you could get your account reinstated. But resume is a good one. Okay. Nice job. Okay, very good. So um, if you guys have more questions, please leave them in the comments. So uh, let's see. I'll put my face up on the screen again. Oh my gosh, so big. Okay, so if you guys have any more questions, you can leave them in the comments. Um, I have to get going, but I hope this was a little bit useful. Um, just looking at current events and uh like taking the news and using it as an English lesson, no matter um, your political belief or anything, it, it doesn't matter. Just we're going to use these uh, current events um, for uh, a learning, a learning, uh, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> a learning situation, right? Um, let me know if you want me to look at um, different kinds of topics. So, uh, so far I've just done uh, what's happening recently in the US. But if you want to see like other topics of other countries or like light topics, like uh, lighthearted topics, let me know. If you have any suggestions, uh, please, please tell me. I'm open to anything. Okay. So um, let's see. Oh, very good. Okay. Twitter permanently suspended uh, Trump's account on this very first time, or they warned him earlier not to repeat this incitement of violence again? Okay, good question, good question. So first, uh, first they warned him. Uh, first they warned him. Um, they deleted some of his tweets and they said, hey, if you do this again, um, let me pull up the article one more time really quick. Um, actually, let me make it bigger. Okay. So they said, um, uh, uh, in the context of horrific events this week, we made it clear on Wednesday, Wednesday, so this happened on Wednesday, that additional violations of the Twitter rules would potentially result in this 
very course of action. So this very course of action was permanently suspending the account. So on Wednesday, um, they saw he was tweeting some things that they didn't like that broke Twitter's rules. So they warned him. And then uh, apparently he, he tweeted some more things that Twitter did not like that they said broke their rules. So it resulted in permanently suspending his account. So uh, Donald Trump no longer has a Twitter account. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so learning political topics and words can be used in that situation. Okay. I will, um, I will, I will include those in the lessons. Oh, Tete Win, I'm late. Oh no. <laughs> Sorry. I, I just, uh, decided, I just decided to come online, but we just talked about, um, Donald Trump's, uh, uh, being suspended from Twitter. So we looked at that article, but um, I do have to get going now. So I have to end the lesson. Um, I will take into consideration all of your suggestions and we can continue from there. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments. All right. Thank you everyone so much. And I will see you guys tomorrow for a brand new lesson. Bye everyone. Hello students, how is everybody doing today? I hope you are having a good week. Welcome to another lesson. Um, I don't have too much time again today, I'm so sorry. Um, and if you don't know, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I am posting every single day on the YouTube channel. Um, I'll put that link for you guys in the chat. Hello, Jordan. Hello, hello. So um, I am, <clears throat> excuse me again, <laughs> I'm posting every single day on um, YouTube. So please, please, please subscribe and turn on notifications so that you know when um, the lessons will be, okay? So I'll post every single day, so including Saturday and Sunday. Okay, so please subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And there is a new lesson out right now. Um, I'll put that one in the, in the chat also. So here's the newest video. Okay, hello from Peru, hello, hello. Hello from Myanmar. How is everybody? Everybody's having a good day? Okay, that's wonderful. Okay, so um, today we are going to review um, one vocabulary word that we learned before, and we're going to learn a new phrasal verb, okay? A phrasal verb that is related. So, okay. Hello, hello. Oh, hello from Canada. Yes, hello, I hope everyone is in good health and you're staying healthy and you are, um, yes, everybody is doing well. Stay healthy, stay fit, very good. Hello from Iraq, hello from Mexico. Okay, so uh, we have these two words that we're going to look at today. And the first one, we learned a very long time ago. I think when I first um, started uh, the Facebook page, I think was like one of my first videos there. Okay, and then we have a new phrasal verb that we'll look at. Very good. Yes, very good. Hello from Nigeria, hello from Kuwait, hello, hello. Okay, so let's look at the first one. Cranky, cranky. So do you remember what cranky means? We learned it a long, long time ago together. Hello from El Salvador, Cambodia, uh, Sudan, Azerbaij Azerbaijan, is that how you say it? Oh my goodness, Azerbaij Azerbaijan. I hope I said that correctly. <laughs> okay, so if you don't know, Cranky, cranky. So cranky means uh, 
You are in a bad mood. You are in a bad mood. Okay. So um, it is a synonym for grumpy. It is a synonym for grumpy. Okay. So for example, if, um, if I don't get a lot of sleep, I might wake up and be cranky. I might be cranky or I might be grumpy. Okay. Uh, please let me know a time when you felt cranky. Oh, hello from South Korea. Wow. I've been to Korea. Very nice. Hello from Afghanistan. Okay. So cranky, cranky, cranky. Um, please let me know a time that you have felt cranky. Do you feel cranky every day? Um, are you just cranky um, when certain situations happen? Okay. So cranky is an adjective. And we've learned this word before, okay? If you followed all of my lessons, you would have seen this word before, okay? The next one that we have down here, this is a new one. This is a new one. This is a phrasal verb, okay? And this is crank out. So you can see the theme here, cranky and crank out, crank out. So what does crank out mean? Well, if you know what a crank is, a crank is kind of like a lever that does this. This is a crank. <laughs> I'm cranking something, right? Um, so we usually, there is a crank on like machines, machines, okay? So um, we use this phrasal verb to mean um, to produce something, or make something, produce something uh, very quickly and maybe um, many of something. So similar to a machine. So if a machine, um, if a machine makes 50 pairs of shoes, we could say the machine cranks out 50 pairs of shoes. So it makes them very quickly, um, and uh, makes a large quantity, okay? So we can also use this for people, even though we are not machines. Um, uh, for example, if it's your job, if it's your job to um, write down memos, okay? It's your job to write down memos. You are a secretary. That means you have to crank out many, many memos, okay? Maybe in, uh, in your eight hour workday, you crank out 50 memos. That is a lot. So maybe you have to work very quickly. Maybe the quality is not so good <laughs> and um, you produce many of them, okay? Ah, very good, okay. If I don't take my lunch at time, so maybe if uh, you can say, if I don't have my lunch on time, I am cranky all afternoon. Yeah, I can understand it. Very good. If I am not able to finish my work, I'm cranky. Yeah, that means you're in a bad mood, maybe for the rest of the day. Very, very good. Okay. Um, what is something that you can crank out? Crank out. So something that you can produce very quickly. If you can give me an example of that, that would be really good. Oh, good morning. Okay. Oh, this is a good example of uh, cranky. I don't care if people think I'm cranky. Very good. So you don't need a here because it is not a noun. It is an adjective. Adjective. So I don't care if people think I'm cranky. Or you could say I don't think if I don't care if people think I am a cranky person would be okay. Very good. Okay, very good. Oh, hello, Tut Tut Win, hello. Okay, so let's just quickly review. So cranky means um, you are grumpy, you are in a bad mood. And crank out means produce something um, very quickly and in large quantities like a machine, like a machine, okay. 
Very good. So let's look at my other board really quick. So, ta -da! I can scooch over here. Okay. Very good. Okay. So let's look at these one more time. So cranky up here. Can you see me? Cranky means grumpy or irritable in a bad mood, in a bad mood. And this is an adjective. I am cranky. She is cranky. We are cranky. He is a cranky guy. Okay. Very, very good. Then crank out, crank out. So remember crank, a crank is like, um, maybe machines used to have a crank, right? So you used to have to do this. This is a crank. Um, so probably machines don't really have a crank anymore, but to crank out something means to produce something quickly in large amounts like a machine. And this is a phrasal verb. So I crank out, he cranks out, they cranked out, okay? Very good. Uh, let's see. Okay, um, what does it mean crank out in Indonesian? Oh, I don't know. I think you might be asking someone for a translation. So crank out, crank out just means to produce many, many things very, very quickly. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so I have two examples and then I have one that you can um, kind of figure out, okay? You can answer. So let's read my examples first. So number one, he was cranky after a long day of hard work. So he was grumpy. He was in a bad mood. He was cranky after a long day of hard work. Very good. Okay. So he was, we could say he was grumpy or he was in a bad mood. He was irritable. Okay. So a long day of hard work, maybe you're very tired, you want to relax, you're not gonna be in the best mood, you're not gonna be super happy, right? Okay, very good. So number two, the author, so maybe an, an author is a person who writes a book, so this author cranks out five new books a year. Oh my gosh, so usually, if you write a good quality book, it probably takes some time, right? It takes some time. But this author um, is producing very, very quickly. They are writing books very, very quickly and producing a lot of them, okay? So maybe the quality is not the best, but the author cranks out five new books a year. So write a book, publish, write a book, publish, write a book, publish, write a book, publish, write a book, publish. Okay, I think I did that five times. All right, is it understandable? Okay, awesome. What is the meaning of the first sentence? He was cranky after a long day of hard work. So he worked it was a long day, so maybe eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours of hard work. So because of that, he was cranky. He was in a bad mood. He wasn't happy, right? He was irritable. Okay. Yes, yes, very good. <clears throat> My brother and I crank out lots of bread this morning. Ah, okay. So if you say my brother and I crank out a lot of bread, maybe every morning, every morning, um, this means that you are making the bread. You're making, 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 making the bread. And I don't know, maybe selling it or keeping it in your um, house. If you crank out something, it means you produce something, okay? So if you were talking about eating, um, we wouldn't use crank out for consuming, just producing, okay? Awesome. Okay, 
So let's look at these two examples and you can figure out which one goes where, all right? Pretty simple, I think. They're very different words, okay? So number three, number three. I didn't start working on my homework until now. So I waited and I waited and I waited and I, I knew I had to do homework, but I waited until now to do it. And now I have to, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, these uh, three essays. So I didn't start working on my homework until now. And now I have to, three essays. So, oh, very good. Ashin, very good. Um, Twa Hirwa. <laughs> Jean Bosco, I think. Okay, Arthur, Patrick, good job. Okay, yes, so the correct answer is crank out. So I have to write um, three essays in a short amount of time, which is a lot, and I have to do it very, very quickly. I don't, uh, oops, sorry. I didn't start working on my homework until now. And now I have to crank out three essays. Yes. So I have to work very quickly. Okay. Oh, everybody, good job. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, number four. She's, mm hmm, when things don't go her way. She's, mm hmm, when things don't go her way. So um, things don't go her way. That means that um, um, maybe the way she wants things doesn't actually go the way she wants them to, right? So maybe she is kind of a, uh, it could be a, a young girl. We often say this about um, young, young children. They want things to go their way. So they get, oh, very good. They get, yes, everybody got it right. They, she's cranky so all the time she's cranky when things don't go her way so for example uh if if a young if a young child let's say a little girl i want to go to the park i want to go to the park i want to go to the park but mom or dad says Sorry, Sally, we can't go to the park today. I have to go to work or you have to go see your grandma. Maybe the little girl would be cranky because uh, things didn't go her way. It didn't go as she wanted it, right? She wanted to go to the park, but she couldn't. So now she's cranky, okay? Very good, excellent, excellent. Okay, so we have cranky and crank out. Remember cranky? is grumpy, irritable, bad mood. To crank out something means to produce something quickly in a large amounts like a machine, okay? Oh, very good example. For my portfolio, I should crank out three web projects. Wow. So yes, so uh, maybe usually you might take more time or um, you might work a little harder or a little slowly, but you need to get it done for your po portfolio, so you'll crank them out. Or if they're easy, okay? Oh, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna put this down so I can see your examples a little bit better. Okay. My boss will attend the meeting. I crank out his two reports. Ah, okay. So does that mean that you have to do the reports for your boss? So you could say, um, my boss will attend the meeting. So I have to crank out his two reports. Okay. My boss will attend the meeting. So I have to, or so uh, I will crank out his two reports. Okay, good job. 
Let's see. In this pandemic, I hope they crank out the vaccine. Yes, very good. I hope they produce it very quickly and um, uh, in large quantities, right? Hopefully with good quality too. Okay, awesome. Oh, this is a good example. I am cranky if someone wakes me up too early. Yes, remember too early is T-O-O, -O, too early, okay? Oh, what's next? <laughs> what's next? Um, well, there will be uh, another Facebook lesson tomorrow and a YouTube lesson. So that's right. Let me get, um, let's see. Um, I'm going to post the link uh, in the chat. So um, I'm, I'm posting it on the Facebook chat, by the way. Um, so uh, if you can, subscribe to the YouTube channel because I will be posting videos there every single day, okay? I had to crank out my projects because I was lazy the whole week. Very, very good, good example. I had to crank out my projects one after the next. Okay. He can crank out many translation novel a year, but his translation skill is really lackluster. Oh, this is very good. So um, I would correct it just a little bit grammatically. He can crank out many um, maybe translated novels, translated novels a year, but his translation skills are really lackluster. Excellent, very good. So lackluster, we've learned before, it means kind of um, lacking that oomph. You can go check out that lesson on YouTube. Okay, um, I'll think, uh, I just have five more minutes, oh my gosh. So, uh, let me quickly see if there's uh, one or two more I can look at. You need to crank out more lessons every day. Yes, very good, very good. I should crank out more lessons. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully um, uh, I can do them with good quality though. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, Jalil, thank you so much. Uh, let's support the channel of Teacher Brie, guys. Subscribe, like, and share. Thank you so much. Yeah, if you can um, subscribe, like, and share, that really helps. Um, and it gives me motivation to keep cranking out lessons. Okay. All right. So, okay, that's all for today's lesson. Um, sorry, it was a little bit short, only 20, 20 minutes. Um, but I will be back tomorrow with a Facebook lesson and a YouTube lesson. <gasps> I'm cranking them out. <laughs> okay, so please like this video and share it with your friends who are learning English. I appreciate it and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye. Hello everyone. How are you guys today? I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today, we are going to learn three new 